Dang. Why does my hair look trade cool? Huh? Does my hair look cool? <laughs> Gay boys are live. If I was a single chick, I would. <laughs> City boy shit, huh? City boy. Uh, uh-oh. Wow. Wow, wow. Feels good to be back. Not quite as seductive sounding as a beer can open, but... Good job. Anyways. Anyway, glad to have you guys back. Thank you, Kyle, for running the cameras. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Ding, ding. Cheers, dickhead over let's there. See, uh, let's see if Trey... Uh, you think he's going to get fucked up tonight? He's still here drinking whiskey. Do a little celebration. That's the plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just had a... Uh, What'd you do? Just graduate uh, of paramedic school? Not graduate. Put the I mic in front of your mouth. <laughs> God, I'm getting yelled at already. Uh, I finished uh, the class portion of my paramedic school, so that was pretty much the hardest part of doing the school. Doing that, yeah, yeah. Now I'm. Just you kinda, said that like that going through the uh, the paramedic school like gives you more like you can make more <coughs> money as a fireman or how does that work? Yeah, so we get like a little bit of bump uh, in our in our pay. And we get a little bit, like, more kind of freedom of what station we get to go to and where we're going to go. So I'm going to be, like, more of a permanent status somewhere. So okay. just kind of being, hey, you're not fully in, even though I've been on for four years. So you, like, prospect with different yeah, firehouses? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Hey, prospect. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you were telling me that one of your favorite things about it was giving homeless guys the wrong, like, the wrong stuff they needed and <laughs> seeing them seeing them in pain. Do you have to quit that now that you're this done? Is that? Not true. <laughs> Staying inside at all. I'm joking. I'm joking. You, you still do you, do you still like steal panties out of people's drawers while you're oh, the totally, house. you know, fires <laughs> taking poops in their house and you know and just leaving. <laughs> oh man. Uh could you imagine, like, what if they had, like, a TV show where it was, like, firefighters just did fucked up shit? Just, like, you know how, like, crooked cops are with their oh, crooked fire? fire? So Holy the guys shit. from Broken Lizard, that comedy troupe that did Super Troopers and Beer Fest. Yeah. I swear two or three of them yeah. are doing a t- fire. I don't know if it's serious it's, uh, or, uh, uh, or Tacoma P- whatever. Tacoma, Tacoma FD. Tacoma it, yeah, FD. Yeah, yeah. Funny? Yeah. I watched it's it. It's actually... It's good. Pretty uh, kind of like that. They it's really sitcom-y. Just yeah. It's kind of like stuff. Scrubs or something like that as oh, far as how it's filmed and whatnot. But, but I don't, that would be it's funny. good. It's kind of good. Just a bunch of degenerate firefighters. <laughs> I will say there's a dude um, that he has to go redo paramedic school because he has Crohn's disease. So every time like, he's in the back of the ambulance, he has to carry a shit bucket with him. Ooh. Could you imagine like kind of riding the back of the ambulance as a patient and the dude's like, hey, man, don't turn around. And you're like, what are you doing? Taking a shit in the wow. back of the ambulance with wow. you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's enough people where he could just not get hired for the job. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this isn't for you, bub. Yeah, like maybe you should go somewhere where there's you... There's got to be another role, a desk yeah. role for him with the bathroom close by. I would think. Anyway, yeah. guys, I'm glad to have you all back. It's It feels good to be back in studio. Um, got to get in the hang of this, man. I feel like we've only been in here one time since our big trip, and that was a drunk fest, so let's yeah, uh, try to keep it together tonight. A little bit of a- uh, man, <laughs> I don't even know, man. <laughs> so, I guess not chronological order. I'm excited about Born Free. Part of it's just coming off the uh, the real Born Free, but Born Free Texas, I'm stoked about it, man. I don't know about yeah. you guys. Maybe it's just because I'm hoping for that's the next event I'm thinking of that it's going to have nice weather, at least a local thing. Oh, so yeah, dude, it's gonna be Maybe so I'm nice. just dreaming of that. Yeah, it, it's been a fucking literal hell here in Texas. For the last week, at least. I, I know it's probably been like this for the last two months, but we haven't been here, so I don't know, really know how it's been. But, yeah, Born Free Texas is uh, shaping up to be a pretty rad event. And uh, just before it, it gets too far out there, like, I know myself uh, and probably some other people I'm going to bring on board, but we're planning on having a pre-party here in Dallas somewhere, which will be on October 20th, um, the Thursday. We're going to try to set something up because we got a lot of people coming in from out of town, a lot of West Coast homies coming through. And so they're going to have to come through Dallas to get there. So might as well set something up here in Dallas, show all the out-of-towners, like, what kind of hospitality we have down here in Texas and uh, have a good little time. So more information on that as it unfolds, but just so people know, in in case someone tries to do it and doesn't let us be a part of it, kind of like Born Free, then, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Don't don't make us make people pick. (laughs) We're all better together than we are apart. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. it I mean, Jaden, you and I just finished doing a three-hour podcast where we kind of wrapped up our back half of the trip. So 
um, we talked about how much of a good time we had at Born Free and uh, how excited we are for it to come here. So I'm excited. A lot of uh, a lot of people out there. I know it's a long way, so it, maybe you can't take everything for 100 <clears throat> percent seriousness right now. But there was a buzz about it. There were a lot of people that from California, from that part of the world, that were seemingly really excited about it and excited about it. I think the breath of fresh air that a new venue and uh, a little scene change because it's not taken away. The original born free will still be there. It's it's nothing's yeah. wrong with that, but just, I think people are looking forward to, what do you think that is like that? They're so excited or cause I, I'm with you. Cause I was with you. Cause when everybody these fucking loves Texas. Cause well, everybody loves Texas. Well, let me ask you this. Like uh, we had so many people asking about born free Texas in a way that like, is it because the, you have the Born Free name on Texas that, like, they enjoy Born Free itself, that they feel like that's reason enough to travel across two of the biggest states in America to get there? Um, or what is it? Because, I mean, we've always had rad events, but I think, I mean, we've had Giddy Up for years. I know a lot of California people would come to that. The camp has been going on for five years. They'll struggle to get people in California to go to that event, but, yeah, you know. But, well, Born Free just has that, that instant credibility, that legitimacy, you know. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's you know you hear born free if if you know if you're in the know or whatever that's that's a s- sacred word almost like Sturgis you know uh, mm-hmm. uh, Daytona it just it carries certain weight with it that and I don't know the inner workings of how connected this one is to that I don't know I don't know those details yeah but I know just the fact that born free California is leaning into it supporting it uh, yeah man and they're they're letting their name be associated with it at some point. That's I think yeah. that's instant cred. Yeah, because I know more, Texas is sorry to cut you off. There's Texas is a lot f- closer, obviously, than a, than California to a lot of places. So if they can get that born free taste, even if it's a little great value born free at first, yeah. I, there's people that'll do it that pro- that just probably can't fucking get there. Yeah, otherwise it makes sense. I mean, hell, the East Coast has Laconia usually every year, right at the same time that born free is going on. So. And that's, I mean, I mean, essentially, that's kind of the situation, right? Go to this thing right down the street, or go all the way across the country to this other event that we essentially, you know, see every detail about it online anyway. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of dudes that are probably done Laconi enough where they they'd be fine passing on it if it means they get to all of a sudden there's a 1,200 mile trip, like something that's doable, like a fun. You pick a good buddy, let's fucking do this, like yeah. some Brennan and Taylor, you know, shit. Let's ride. A, 1500 miles or whatever halfway across a good yeah. part of the way to the country just do it that's awesome that's mm-hmm. a non-drunk shout out for you folks <laughs> you mass holes <laughs> mass holes um, I, I think it'll be just a breast a fresh restart of like just new people coming in yeah and new bikes and people that be like man I live in Florida but am I really gonna drive across the whole country yeah I, I feel like it's or gonna pull a lot of people I'm gonna go to Texas and mm-hmm. show off this new bike Things like that. Because I feel like if I went to the same event and it was just all my buddies over and over and over, I'm like, can we do something new? You know what I mean? Oh, that sounds like bike night. Yeah, well, that's different. <laughs> that's a bike but night like, as, as in a show oh, and, yeah, and, yeah, and awards, yeah. and it's like, hey, man, this, oh, man, I know he always brings heat. What, what is so-and-so going to do? You know what I mean? I'm very interested in it. I, I, I'm, I've had my quarrels with, like, some of the things, but at the same time, like, ultimately – all I want to do is uh, be the best ambassador for Texas as right. possible. That's yeah. To make sure that too. that a uh, Texas shows up in force and 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 you know people that come to California like man like we had such a good time in Texas like yeah. that's the, that's the vibe I want it to. It's put like out. getting the Super well maybe not the Super Bowl it's like getting the All Star game in your city like you get a chance to shine yeah. and that's my thing is I want to I can't affect the show there's nothing I can do except show up and try to be as fun as possible at the yeah. show. But especially if we get something going as a group ahead of time and there is a two-day window where people have a welcome party in Dallas, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll take the fuck off work. I mean, it's yeah. it's clear my schedule shit. What can I do? Yeah. Who needs a spot to stay? Well, we got a few options, uh, places to do and things to look at. But, you know, I'm just telling everybody just plan for October 20th, the Thursday. We're going to set something up. It's going to be somewhere. It's going to be bike-friendly. Um, and I just I hope that you know whatever venue we choose to host us at will be as accommodating as I hope. I hope they have the same energy. Like, hey, we got a lot of out of towners coming to our state. Let's show them how we fucking get down and have a good yeah. time. You know what I'm saying that's the hope. Yeah. Uh, it's not something I'm I'm not trying to call it the fast life 
thing. So I'm going to try to get other brands out of Texas involved. That way it feels like we're all putting something together to kind of welcome all the out-of-towners that are coming to our state yeah. to to do this. And I, like I said, I, I think, you know, we talked about it so much about on the last live podcast we did with the boys. And, you know, we talked about it on this on this Patreon we did earlier. Um, California has the best riding in the country, uh, collectively. Maybe not individually the best roads ever, but you can go to California and experience every type of riding as possible. Yeah. So it's a big ask for anybody that lives there to – travel through no man's land essentially to get to a place like texas which isn't necessarily going to offer that same riding experience um but at the same time the one thing it does offer is the traveling on bikes is riding experience yeah. Yeah. whether it's a solo trip you want to take you need to take your overdue on a personal level for that whether you want to ride with one buddy six buddies however the fuck you want to do it you're not going to so overall, you're not going to regret taking a motorcycle trip with your fucking friends, especially if it's to go do something cool with other people that are doing the same thing. A prime example is like Joe Kid and Woodgrain FXR and those cats up there in the Twin Falls. While we were doing our big trip, they had just wrapped up a 7,200 mile trip and triple crown, it, triple crown, like working on the triple crown, going to East Coast Jam. Like they went so far out of their way to do all this stuff. I mean. That's the vibe that uh, they get it. They understand yeah. what the draw is to getting out on the open road and traveling places on bikes. So hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, people check it out. So yeah, it's not it's not everybody's cup of tea. Some people like staying local. They like wrenching on their own shit and just not. I don't know. It, that's fine. Oh, I mean like real bikers. <laughs> <laughs> and it, if, <laughs> if that's if that's the case, I don't know, man. I wish you well. I hope you're like. I hope you're getting everything out of this that you can, and you're getting enough to really satisfy you. Because I, my personal advice to you would be there is so much more if you're willing to mm-hmm. get out of your own zip code, no matter how badass your own zip code is. There's other cool shit out there. There is. And, and there, there's other cool people out there, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just – it's not just, like, I always – I hope I can iterate this in a good way that it's, like, it's not so much about how badass the road was. It's just about being out with homies or meeting people or going to see new shit. Like, you like to say it, I just want something new. And a new road is fun to go down, just like a new chick or a new whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, that's I don't what, know. That's what a lot of women don't understand about cheating. It's not, <laughs> it's not always about better. It's about new. And, yeah, it doesn't always have to be better. It just needs to be new. <laughs> Interesting take. So I've heard. So I've heard. <laughs> I'm not affiliated with that response whatsoever. Uh I never want anything new out of my relationship. It's all good. (laughs) That is a new city boy right here. (laughs) Take it easy. Take it easy. (laughs) Um, But no, I mean, I I don't know. I don't want to take it in a deep, dark place. But on multiple accounts, I've I've, uh, accounts as meaning like different times. Like I've seen people throwing up the debate on what is a real biker. You know what I'm saying? Like, or this isn't cool, but this is cool. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily like biker, but it's like just everybody putting out their opinion about what they deem as real biker, real cool, real anything. And it, it, it blows my mind how many people are, uh, she calls you as soon as, soon as you say that. Oh, different, no, different person. Oh, that would be, that would be funny. Though. Um, but I just, I find it, I find it interesting how many people like, I think I said this on the the LFG podcast, like how many people wrap up their identity and what they're doing and they need the affirmation of everybody else to do it too, to make them feel good about what they're doing. And if someone's doing it differently and getting attention, then that kind of fucks up their identity. So they throw shade on people like that's not a real biker. That's not a real builder. That's not a real, this real, that real, whatever. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. It makes sense. So fuck those guys. I think, yeah, I think most of the people that throw out the, not what that kind of criticism those guys are kind of turds anyways. What are you doing? I don't, I don't know. Save it. Yeah. <clears throat> anyways. Are Trey, you? what's up? What's your definition of a real biker? <laughs> I couldn't even finish it. Man, a real biker to me is someone who, who throws down some miles and it's just a solid dude or chick. Either one. No. It is. Jack Teller? 22. This but. sounds like a guy that didn't wrench on his own bike. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I can do some I'm stuff. I can't do everything. But balls. do you... I'll show up to events and, and ride with you and hang yeah. out, man. And if you can't be cool or anything like that, then 
don't be part yeah. of it. You know what I mean? If you if you have this jealousy and hate about you and, and you're going to be calling other people bikers, you need to take a real good look at I the think mirror. the whole idea of calling, like, biker, it's almost like when you are you do art, you don't necessarily – it's always weird when you call yourself an artist. Like, I'm an artist. Yeah. Artist seems like a, a title someone else gives you. You know what I mean? I'm, you know what I mean? I feel like biker – might be a title that someone else gives you too because to call yourself a biker might be kind of a little pretentious or something like that towards somebody else or, or just in general that, that kind of is off-putting because I think when you label yourself, there's always a label usually has some kind of definition behind it. Yeah, You know what I mean? And and I, I feel like everything that we – yes, we ride motorcycles, and that's the goal is just to ride motorcycles. But like I said, there's so many other – there's so many other adjectives and so many other things that people are attaching on the back end of riding motorcycles to deem you worthy of that title or not. That gets kind of the waters get so muddied. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. why why is it more than just a person that rides a bike? Oh. Even if they just ride a bike to a bike night, yeah. or they just ride to the local bar, they're still riding a bike. You know, someone someone that doesn't ride bikes is going to call that person a biker. Yeah. So, the, now I get how like maybe the way we ride bikes and how long we spend on bikes and how much our life is involved in bikes, it's different than that guy that just rides on the weekend. But yeah, we still don't go around beating our chest like we're the fucking yeah. gatekeepers. It's what are we? Is this fucking field day in elementary school? You get a fucking blue ribbon because you ride the most motorcycles, but you get a green ribbon because you worked on your bike. The, I mean, get the fuck out of here, dude. That yeah. shit's dumb. This first Corona's going down. I'm, I'm, you ready? <laughs> dude, I'm just, I'm just glad that you, you fucking ride. You got a Harley. Yeah. We still have an economy for this. We still got shops and shit and parts going. Yeah. That period, man. Well, I think that the evolution of somebody being in the motorcycles, they're going to go through a lot of different iterations of yeah. how they enjoy their bike. And sometimes the easiest way to get involved is just like, I just want a bike to go meet some friends and ride to the local bike night or bar or, or biker bar or whatever, you know? That's Perfectly or I want to go on weekend cruises, or I'm doing it because I, I want to commute to work and, and save money on parking and gas. Like, there's yep. a lot of way, different ways that you can partake in this motorcycle shit. Right. And I think that what I started doing on a bike versus what I do now almost 20 years later, it's not even in the same ballpark, but, right. you know. I'd say Millhouse put it best. Labels are dumb, which is why we no longer call him Humpty Hump the Bagger Daddy. <laughs> fun anyways i uh kenny hicks we're not reading the post up i'm I'm in it for anybody (laughs) as little or as much as they want to do it yeah uh if you feel like you need to call somebody out for stuff like that this isn't the military bro there's no stolen valor in this shit it's ultimately a hobby you can call it a passion a lifestyle whatever it's ultimately a fucking hobby that don't make me start making fun of your sports teams next because i'll tell you how dumb you are for really caring about those two yeah it's just I don't know. Like I said, there's no stolen valor. There's no, oh, you said you rode this mini. I don't know, man. Just everybody that rides a bike, I'm cool with it. Let me check your odometer. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look at it. Speak for yourself. I smelt my own steel. Yeah. (laughs) I own this built bike. I smelt my own steel. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, yeah, that's one of those things that's just getting kind of old. That Like, I see it. I see it in passing on, on people's posts or people making stories. And it's not just about being a biker. It's like. What you choose to do with your bike, what you choose to buy for your bike, uh, yeah. the path you choose, no matter what, and it seems like in life, like why does everybody have such a heavy opinion about what other people are doing? Like when you get on your social media, why do you? Why does anybody feel like it's a good idea to talk about what somebody else is or isn't doing instead of just putting out what the fuck you are or are not doing on there? Exactly, it's your social media. Like if you ain't. Showing me cool shit you're doing, you're not a good follow. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're sitting there talking shit about everybody else that's doing more, like, you're a hater. Yeah. Straight up. Finish your bike. Yeah. Yeah. How about that one? Ride it. Do better. If you're actually riding your bike, you have less time to post and do stupid shit yeah. online. Ugh. So, grow the fuck up. All right. I'm sorry. Where you at on this abortion thing, Trey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I really take don't it care. easy. That's a that's yeah. just a <laughs> joke. Throw it on. Fuck them kids. Yes. Uh, good lord. Hell yeah. What else do we have uh, on the docket? Yeah, we were gonna talk about uh, you know, we got Sturgis coming up. Uh, who's going? You going? What's going on? Boy, I, 
anybody knows Roy Williams, Roy Williams the M- I still fucked that up. Roy Williams, the um, basketball college basketball coach. There's a gif where he walks into the into the uh, locker room. Oh, and all, yeah. his, all his players start cheering. And he's doing this. Yeah, and uh, I feel like that's kind of what just happened. Like I'm back in the game, baby, for Sturgis. Yeah, I uh, got a call from uh, our good friend Chance, and all of a sudden I think I'm going. Nice. I, uh, <clears throat> to save on time, it sounds like we are all just dumping the bikes in the truck and, and jamming up there. But I think we're only going for three days to catch the shows, which is perfect. That's all yeah. I need. It won't be a big one, but there's a place lined up to stay. It's um, As much as I was ready to be an adult and say, no, you know, sit this one out, I'm so fucking excited now to see, you know, Winton, to see the the people that I'll see up there. Uh, Evan, is it's his first time. I'm so happy to be able to go up there and uh, – Experience a little, hopefully a little bit of that with him and just everybody that's going to be up there. I know Tony yeah. will be up there. And I can't is he setting up? Is Tony setting up like he was playing so. on? Yeah. It's dope. Yeah, I'm, uh, for everybody, I'm just, you know, I've had a lot of people asking if we're staying at the uh, Days Inn still. And we're actually not. Uh, most, a lot of the homies are going, but everybody's kind of doing their own thing this year for Sturgis. Uh, I, me and my wife are actually driving up there. Uh, won't be on the bike at all. And I'm just doing, a couple like a Michael Lichter deal, and then I'm gonna go see some some of the homies and vendors at Black Hills, and probably won't see me at any shows or events or anything like that. So, yeah. but you know, uh, the homies will be there. There's still plenty of shit to do. Um, I think everybody will still have a good time. You know, I'm excited. I think uh, I wasn't really stoked on going to surges this year. I feel like the last four years straight, I've been you know, and. I was ready to sit this one out as well, but this opportunity to uh, be a part of the Michael Lichter show came up, and I'm painting a bell helmet for that, by the way. Oh, shit. It's the only, and it's probably the only bell helmet you can get your hands on if it's going to be an auction. Uh, but anyway, doing that and uh, pretty much. Like a traitor. Yeah, dude, this is like walking in and catching your dad getting a blowjob from the neighbor or something. Like, you're cheating on mom? What the fuck, dude? Yeah. This is bullshit. <laughs> Scott's going to be so mad. Or actually, I should say it's like walking in and catching your mom sucking the neighbor's dick. You're cheating on dad since Scott is my dad. You what the suck. fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. The Simpson, you know, like they're... I won't tell him. Don't worry about it. That's fine. They no, The thing is that, like, the Lichter show, it, like, Bell, I guess, sponsors it. For this giveaway situation, so it was really the only option. So, yeah, it's business. Do it. <clears throat> yeah. Unfortunately, I will not be going to Sturgis this year. Mm. Got to do some adult stuff, and then uh, I'll be. Just in be real. You, you, she said you couldn't. <laughs> 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 no, I just I just have such a small window. I wouldn't be able and and enjoy Sturgis the way I want it. Yeah. I don't want to rush anything. So, listen, I saw you in Daytona with those cigarettes in your mouth. Hey. Don't think you're going to Sturgis. <laughs> Trey, let's load your truck up with our bikes and let's go. Okay. Dude. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we'll, go, we'll do the turn and burn too. Sturgis, doing a turn and burn in Sturgis is kind of like, it's okay. Like you said, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I get it. Like, you know, you want to be able to do all the things. But honestly, when you get there for the most part, if you've been to Sturgis before, yeah, like really what you miss about Sturgis is – the homie hookup stuff, like going to one eye jacks, going to this, going to that. Like those are the things that people going to truly, uh, yeah, going to black out. Hills, seeing all the people like yeah. that's what you're missing. You know, like yeah. you're not missing the traffic through the mountains and you know, all the cops everywhere. I would not do that. So again. to me, I'm just like, I just want to go see Thunder yeah, Max. I just see, see everyone again. See the homies at uh, Covington's over there. Like black Hills is the, is the meetup spot for all the homies. Just go check them all out, shake hands. See the homies, yeah, and then uh, mosey on Spend over to money. the the Michael Lichter shit, and then I'm excited. Uh, I'm I, I'm excited. To, I'm still going, even though I'm not riding or even taking a bike. Yeah, still just being there. Like I said, that's the part that I miss the most. I bet that's kind of freeing and like a little bit of weight off your shoulders. My, hey, you know what? I don't got to worry about getting stops stops on the way. You know, what I mean, just kind of relax for one year and then hit it hard next year. Yeah. Uh, when I was on the big trip, I had told my wife, I was like, let's, instead of going to surgery, let's do a, uh, let's just do like a, like a, va- like a legit vacation together. And then we started, I was open to like going somewhere tropical, doing something like that. But then at the time when we were talking about this, all the flights were getting canceled everywhere. All, everybody was, I just, I don't want to be dealing Tired, with that. Yeah. yeah. 
And then I was like, well, fuck, I don't know if I want a road trip because gas prices are in fucking sane right now. And this was back in June. Yeah. Um, but now it seems like it's starting it's to kind of normalize. Down. Yeah. So last night I booked a I booked us a couple nights stay in like Estes Park in like Colorado. So I've never been to that area of Colorado. So Sturgis, then rip down the boulder, stay with some family, then go to that park for a couple days, and then maybe scroll down to like Colorado Springs, see some homies down there. She wants to go check out Red Rocks just okay. to see it, but yeah. we're not yeah. going anything. You can go in and walk around though. Yeah, That's we'll cool. probably do that. And then uh, I don't know. I'm excited about that. Just you know. Yeah, hanging out with her for a week or so. That'd be dope. And then, yeah, the thing is, like, I got when I get back from that, I got to paint the last bagger that I'm painting for uh, House of Harley there. So, last bagger. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking in any more baggers or paint jobs. <laughs> what about my bagger? I mean, I'm just kidding. If you got the money, I mean, we'll talk about that. So you were now. saying something earlier, but I tuned out immediately at the sound of your voice. Were you saying you're taking a year off from doing big events? Uh, solely for the purpose of paramedic school. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I. So you're not going to. Uh, oh, I'm done hometown? in October. No, once I'm done in October. So, but you're not going to hometown rally in September. Oh, uh, I could probably make that. What about like weekend. down south and all that shit? Yeah, I'll be. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I did do most of the events at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm out on big events till October. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm going to that. I'm going to that one, too. Yeah. Going to that one. <laughs> Just Sturgis. Missing Sturgis. Yeah, that's the only really big one that's... Yeah. Well, even that, though, I mean... It's What's the difference between Southern Throwdown and Born Free? Southern Throwdown is, uh, is essentially Oliver's show, and I think they're still doing that. They are still doing that, but yeah. Born Free is still owned by Born Free. They're just doing it Oliver's Yellow Rose Canyon uh, is it? And so the Throwdown is traditionally a chopper, September. A chopper only show, yeah, right? Chopper, uh, chopper yeah, they do bands. chopper only usually. Um, chopper Bros. It's and in bands. September. Um, yeah, and it's it, yeah, like, like it was. Yellow Rose was going to be the new sp- the, the his new spot for most shows, and the main one being Southern Throwdown. But now Born Free is yeah. asking them to come over and yeah. To, uh, but to his question, the difference is I think Southern well. Throwdown is traditionally a, a different band show. Whereas I understand, right, Vans Born Jersey, Free yeah. is going to be at the at the same venue, but Born Free will still be um, like Born Free California with so, like a performance. San Diego show. Customs yeah. and, uh, yeah. and Speed yeah. Kings will be down there. Hopefully, har- hopefully Harley gets behind it and does something. And but yeah, it'll be a, it it'll it won't be just a chopper and van show. It'll be a little bit of everything, like the traditional Born Free is. Hometown rally. Yeah, we're talking about. I think we're getting towards that. Uh, yeah, so after Sturgis, man, like, I don't, you know, I got to try to get that bike done because I want to go up for Hometown Rally to to drop it off and be done with it. Technically, that bagger I'm painting is going to be for sale, so if anybody wants it, I could, this bagger can be yours. Uh, it's just, you put your it has, name on it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, all they're doing is they're taking this paint job and selling it, but if I, if somebody wants a paint job, then I can do that. And I have all the tins here, so if somebody wants to do that, then I don't have to take it up there. It's just that there's a there's a price tag, and that price tag has to be met. So, um, but yeah, uh, other than that, like you know, with trying to free up time to be able to spend more doing this podcast and and do more photography shit, like I need I need the time. Like I was telling Trey on the way back from good old what a burger that um this week alone, like I've only gotten a chance to paint for one day of this whole fucking week it's thursday night um that's it i had i was editing and releasing podcasts monday and tuesday and then (laughs) that boy's not gonna make it home tonight you pour a little heavy on that one yeah i'm all right so and so basically uh yesterday was the only day i got to paint and then the day i taped out a helmet but then you know we started doing this other podcast tomorrow i got a dentist appointment I'm going to get to paint for a couple hours and then I got a fucking photo shoot tomorrow night. So it's like, it's, it's hard to get things done paint wise here now when I'm trying to build these other areas of the business. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't fucking know, dude, I'm lost. You'll get there. <laughs> I'm so lost You'll right get now. There. Patience. When he passes out later, let's get his keys and go steal an ambulance. Hell yeah. I'm not going to say anything cause someone's probably going to do it. <laughs> We're just going to places and putting it in the lock. <laughs> Nope. We're just hitting the button. Yeah, they have buttons on it? I'm not going to. No They're comment. probably just unlocked. 
You probably just go in any. I mean, you, I, no comment to any of yeah, that. There you go. Nothing. There you go. We yeah, what it, that, that's question. probably a good idea. Like, why would you put locks on it? What if like you accidentally lock your keys in it while you're going to save somebody? Okay, and then you so, can't get back in. Or is that am I? We hitting something here? You're kind of hitting something there. But that's okay. the same with cop cars so, too. You can always yeah, steal a cop car. They're always running on them too, right? Yeah, well, you're not going to go fucking far. Um, so, our ambulances have a kill switch inside. So if you try to take off with it, and we have it locked with the ignition locked, you will kill it. But for the most part, we leave the keys on them running because mm. it's just so hot and everything like that. Oh yeah, yeah, and then we have secret buttons around the ambulance that locks it and unlocks it when we get back up, especially oh, where cool. I work at. Not too good. It's called the hood. Sure, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Be very careful of what you say next, Trey. Yeah, <laughs> who's stealing all these ambulances? <laughs> yeah, ambulances. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I got my phone call with Montucky tomorrow. Uh, we're talking about that a little bit. Yeah, That's so uh, it could be good or it could be bad. I hopefully it'll be good. I, I think it'll be good. They they said they want to do something, but I told yeah. them it was like, look, <laughs> hey, Jace, we stop talking shit, please, and then just hang up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we listened to your podcast last time, and uh, one of your uh, guests uh, just they they dropped words that we just can't be associated with. <laughs> <laughs> now, hopefully, all I, all I would like to them. To, to provide for us, and I'm, I don't know if they sell it or not, but if they could give us, like, a keg a month, that would solve so many problems for me. That would be cool. You know, I'll buy a kegerator. I'll put it somewhere maybe upstairs over here, and then it just it be, be easier. It could be everyone, both of ours, but we'll keep it at my house. Can, yeah. can everyone just have, like, their own personal Steiner? You know what I mean? Is that would be badass. Stein? Like, yeah. I mean, the more they lean into it, the better for them. I mean, 100%. Like, yeah. not to say that Montucky doesn't exist without the Fast Life and what no. we've done. They, they've they been around. I yeah. mean, Kyle had it way before we ever did. Uh, I think it was just at bike night, too. Yeah. yeah. So it's not that, but it's just, like, their their cans, their their cold sacks, they're playful. It's kind of like we all are. Yeah. And so it just was a perfect fit with the podcast and the story of how we found it was pretty awesome. Their, their merch is pretty cool too. Their merch is fun. Mark Carter um, and his wife, they've been buying a lot of it. I'm like, dang, that is yeah. actually pretty sick. Yeah, I feel like because Mark Collier listens to the podcast, we helped facilitate an uprise in their stock as Mark <laughs> Collier <laughs> bought half of the fucking state's worth of Montucky uh, merch, inventory. beer, and inventory. <laughs> They're but, better uh, like chill out, guys. We don't have much more. But no, I mean, I don't know what their ideas are, but I have I have some ideas of what would be nice. But uh, a long like a year and a half ago, they, we reached out or Sax reached out for me and got me a phone call with one of the owners, and we talked for a minute. But mm. he quickly passed me off to somebody, and they were like, "Yeah, if you want some beer, just you know, put in an order and then buy it." <laughs> well, it became it was cheaper and less of a hassle to just buy it. So it's like, yeah, their their place that they distribute out of is like way north Dallas, like a, a, a north of the airport, like DFW. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you want to just, you know, email and we'll set it up and then we can give you like essentially $90 worth of it, which I'm not complaining about. It's free, right? But at the yeah. same time, like my time is more valuable than going and spending a whole yeah. fucking day going to pick up $90 worth of beer when that's only going to last us one podcast. Yeah. Like, I can just go to H-E-B, and I'll get it, and, then, you know, usually when the homies come through, they'll bring their own shit, too, and so we're not completely going, you know, I don't need it yeah. that bad, but. They should stock a fridge for you, with a keg, or there should be a. A Red Bull fridge. A stock Yeah, fridge. why don't they have, like, a Montucky yeah, they have mini, all Montucky, dude, be like, fridge right there, dope. just stacked full or of. Like, actually, hey, Jace, like we just came out with a Montucky kegerator. Do you want one? Or no. some a cool fridge like the one you have down there, and. Maybe paint, maybe some quick pro quo where you paint you paint it, make it badass, and then say, "See, Jace has to paint you again. Keep this thing filled up." Everybody's like, "You know what you could do? You could paint something." I was like, "How is that me getting something from them? <laughs> I gotta it's go you work now." Yeah. Yeah. I bet you paint. Like everybody thinks, cans. like I just want to paint shit. <laughs> like, hey, get that fridge, and anytime they act up, we just pack that bitch full of Lone Star or Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, Budweiser. <laughs> Yeah, there you I've go. I've been drinking that flight stuff a lot too. Yeah, the, that you flight's good. Yeah, Montucky, yeah. don't get it twisted. You're a side bitch for me. <laughs> a thousand percent. God, you are not damn. the main bitch. <laughs> hey, remember that phone call we're talking about? Main bitch. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I hope something comes of it. It'd be nice. Uh, that's the hardest part about like getting sponsors or doing more of those brand deals is 
it's easier when you have a publicist do stuff like that because the publicist can go in and say, yeah, so the Fast Life, Jace does this, and she she or he could talk about me in a way that it's awkward to talk about yourself to somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm Jace with the Fast Life Garage podcast, all these different things. I do this, 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 and this. It just feels like this dick-stroking thing that I'm doing, and it feels weird. It feels awkward when you do that to, to brands. You know what I mean? But when you – or even like – like, I need to make a, a, a what they call a media deck to give the sponsors, and that's even hard for me to do because it's like you just feel like you're filling out a dating profile app, and but you're trying to date companies. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You just need a LinkedIn. You'll be fine. Yeah, something... I mean... Just get a professional LinkedIn. Would, I don't know how to do any of that shit. I don't even... I don't, I'm not speaking your age right now. <laughs> LinkedIn? What is that? It's uh, pretty much like your online, just your business and your resume and what you do and stuff like that kind of professional. I'm gonna go with uh, Joy Diaz on that one. I don't fuck with Lincoln Den. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need more I'm young people in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get me on that tick of talk thing? I don't do tick or talk. I don't do TikTok. Y'all are missing out. Some creepy shit. Dude. I don't know. I wa- I follow this one Instagram pic page called cringe cringe with the q or something like that and it's just all the cringy tiktoks there you go and i'll be up at like 3 a.m watching that shit at work i'm like that's oh my, my god this is so Cal, weird Cal man. the worst of the worst oh, I get the the, weird motherfuckers. dude the people that are on the internet just oh, they crack me <laughs> up right man. oh my god and, and it makes me realize my like, man i'm not doing too bad in life right now because this is some weird shit yeah yeah there's a uh, Kyle. you may know you may help me out with this I believe it's Bill Burr. Doesn't he have a bit about uh, people, or is it? It might be Tom Segura, but people on cruise ships that basically, as far as like depopulating the world, or at least just giving Mother Nature a little break, is the kind of people that are on cruise ships. We should just start sinking them while they're out there, just not letting those <laughs> yeah, people come yeah. back and yeah. continue to breed. So the point on that is, you round up. Uh, the weirdos on TikToks, like the, the shit you send me. What the fuck are we going to do? Put all those people on a dude. Something constructive. Bro, that's so, something 30 productive. minutes on the... Oh, yeah. What am I going to do? Make a fucking <laughs> job that's, resume on the shit at work? That's how you nah, end up... Bitch. Round up all those people. Oh. It's Clash of Clans. Then it comes to TikToks. <laughs> a little bit of Instagram. That's an hour right there. Uh, Someone that, shit on the floor at our job that's, yesterday. That's what happens when you, you, know, you send all those people. That's how Australia and like New Zealand came about. You know that, right? Yeah, it's all prisoners. All prisoners, gays, homosexuals, and stuff like that. Oof, oof. I'm stepping away from the mic. I'm just saying. Can, all, like, I'm your, just saying. Continue with your ranch, right? That's, that's what the you British did, and that's family. how Australia and New Zealand came about. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying. That's how. Sounds like you got some, Sounds like you got a problem with that. No, I yeah. don't. I don't get a problem with that. <laughs> no, what we're talking about. <laughs> Oi! Sounds like he's being a cunt! <laughs> <laughs> well... I don't know what you are talking about, but I do want to say this: that uh, Dre said we should move, we should send all the gays to Australia, New Zealand. No, that's how <laughs> it got we started. This. That's, that's what how it got said. started. He said we should make that's a new Australia. They were saying they're like we should send all these people on like a weird <laughs> cruise ship, and, and I'm like, that's how Australia and New Zealand got started because that's what the British did. And then they sent all the prisoners there. Yeah, all the prisoners there. And now we got some badass fucking people over there in Australia. <laughs> don't try to cover up now. <laughs> don't try to back up now, baby. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Hayden's girlfriend's from Australia. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, I do want to say thank you to all you listeners, all, all the people that follow the page that reached out and commented on that deal and made it so overwhelming for anybody else. Yeah, that, that was, was fucking it. badass. Yeah, yeah, that was. If, if you did it, if you'd comment and pat yourself on the shoulder, because that shit was overwhelmingly cool. I mean, straight up, honestly, like, because we drink it on here doesn't mean shit. It's the fact that everybody else started drinking it that made it something. So all you guys out there that drink it and uh, look for it and ask for it and post about it, it, it gives legitimacy to the podcast, so thank you guys for that shit for real. Or I think I should be awesome looking at the everyone. camera instead yeah. of the TV. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's all the real <laughs> well, see y'all. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Balls in your court, Montucky. Come correct. <laughs> um, I think I want a Tahoe. We're probably... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You get a you get and a, a gas fucking, card. You get an HHR instead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> HHR. <laughs> that is the, that'd be sick. Fucking, I'd ride the Chevy PT Cruiser. 
pulling like a little trailer behind it. Fuck yeah, yeah. A, little, a little stringer, uh, stinger trailers, uh, Dude. you know, motorcycle trailers wrapped in Montucky. If cool. they leaned in, if they leaned into the motorcycle world, dude, they, they could be the pit vipers of beer for the mo- motorcycle world. Straight yeah. up, I Don't think they they're just already pit vipers. Dude, here's the thing though, they already, yeah, they have their own yeah. pit viper. Um, for the <clears> for us growing up, so I don't want to wear pit vipers. I just get some regular. Well, I just feel like we're waves. such small. I mean, they got a whole. They're like in the ski fucking yeah. shit, which I'm sure is a fucking huge industry. We're just not. You ever met somebody with skis? <clears throat> no, but <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. I think we're on the wrong side. How much beer? I hear about it. I hear about it. Where he's like, "Oh, Jamal's going to Breckenridge." Like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, why is it skiing bigger in the inner city? <laughs> 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 like, there is, I don't know. I feel like motorcycles pretty niche, though. Like, they they got the market on that shit. I mean, as soon as you have their merch is fucking ski shit. Yeah, yeah. So we were saying we can make our own beer. <sighs> I mean, they did it. How hard could it be? <laughs> 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 shit. Well, they give eight percent back to local causes. I say fuck them. Zero percent back to local causes. Eight percent back to local shops. Yeah, eight percent back to independently owned motorcycle shops. That'd be better. I'm an eight percent ABV. It'll get you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be yeah. fucking fat bitches in no time. <laughs> <laughs> you might even find a motherfucker or two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. But the heat here has been redu- retarded, man. I'm over it. So we had our, we, you know, for, for those of you out there, we call this thing the T-Bar crew because essentially it's, it's kind of us in this room that are kind of taking, a, taking over the bike night situation here in Dallas and trying to revamp it and put a little bit more legitimacy behind it in similar fashion to the way the HTX Dyna crew has built such a badass uh, situation down there in Houston and even the DFW Dyna crew up here on the, on the west side of town, how they've done their shit. So we just kind of wanted to, uh, you know, do the same. Expand. Um, yeah. Growth. And, you know, we, we have been talking about doing this for a while. And when we got back from our trip, we were trying to kick it off. We were at Reno's. Uh, Reno's has been the spot for the last year and a half. To be honest with you guys, Deep Ellum has been going through the motions in the last year or so. How You're down there a lot. You're down there quite a bit. How do you feel about – you're down there a lot because you're working in Crowdus now at night at yeah. the bar. So sit this one out, Trey. I got it. Um, <laughs> Serious, sir? No, the uh, the <laughs> Deep Ellum whatever association down there, they are, it's no bullshit. It's, it's a big eyesore in the city of Dallas, uh, the crime, and especially the violent crime down there. So, I mean, the police are out in full force. Not that they're like ticky-tacky shit, but any bars that have fights and stuff like that, like they're coming in, they're closing shit, they're pulling – Pulling leases and you got to fucking go. Uh, yeah, they're trying to raise the standard down there. I don't know if I'd say they're trying to gentrify it or anything like that, but they are trying to get the places that consistently have problems the fuck out of there and replace them with. Ultimately, it's going to be nicer stuff. Like you know, I mean, like the new spot that's going to have fights at it. Well, <laughs> you, I mean, you say that. I mean, right, crowd is not that it's perfect, but I mean, there's dress codes, there's policies in place where. I'm saying that not hating on the fact that they fight in those places. The people that want to go to a bar are going to do what the fuck they're going to do anyways. How yeah. does how does six you shoot some people in the head? Well, I can tell you just, just from working the door, most of the fucking shitheads down there, they're not going in bars, right? Like it's and there's a there's a very fucking definitive difference of the people that you know are up to no fucking good. Maybe not right then, maybe not right now, but you know, they hang around there long enough. It's called profiling. These, hey, and it's, there's something fucking to it. And uh, there's, you, you can tell the people that are down there just having a good time or whatever. And like I said, you, there's, so I don't know, but they are, they are going through changes. And as far as that goes, we ran out of, I don't know, I'm not talking shit on Reno's, but it just wasn't a desirable place, man. It yeah. it never had the luster that our original spot Anvil had. Just the location, you can't you couldn't duplicate it. Anvil was on a a main thoroughfare that was I don't want to say a high time uh, in Deep Ellum, but sh- everything was good. There were no yeah. problems. That's what scooters were the biggest fucking issue for a while. Yeah, everything was fucking <laughs> sick about Deep Ellum down then. 
And um, yeah, that's just a more perfect, of us. Like I said, we had street traffic. There was always random people coming in the bar. The motorcycles were part of it. It was just a whole fucking vibe. And we, we couldn't recreate it at Reno's. It's just location. It's tucked off different. It's a totally different bar. There's no almost no female presence as far as outside random women walking by, even normal people walking by. Uh, the chicks, wives, girlfriends that we bring, nobody was comfortable there. It's a dirty, dark metal bar. And that's cool. A lot of people fucking love it. Uh, I love Reno's and you do, always you do. will. And, and I'm if not you talk shit about, about my mistress again, I'll fuck you up. How I'm about just that? saying it's it's not what we needed, and it, it yeah. had run its course, and that's that's no they, shame on them. They were there. hospitable though. There was yeah, when we needed sure. them. So yeah, there's really... no fallout. There's no love yeah. loss. It just it was time for a change. Well, for, to be honest with you, like the bike night that we started at Anvil, and how it it kind of evolved into Reno's, we kind of had the longest running bike night in Deep Ellum ever, right? But we don't. We never really had much of a of a label or a representation to where we had a resume to where we could take it to the, you know, no matter what, like, Hey, look, this is the kind of crowd and the kind of people that we bring at our bike night to establishments. You know what I mean? We're, 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 we're coming here to drink and eat your food and hang out and have a good time. We don't, we're not fighting. We're not, you know, we're not causing any ruckus. We're just here to do our own thing, which is drinking and eating and hanging out. And, now that, you know, the whole idea with the page was hopefully to, uh, the T-Bar Tuesday page was hopefully to t- kind of create something that we we can show anywhere we want to go. Like, hey, look, we want to have an event here. This is our, this is our kind of our resume, our, our, yeah. our vibe, our, the kind of shit we're putting out. And, you know, Dolly's been a great bartender for us. Uh, we met her while she was, or Kyle's known her for a while because of the metal scene, but she used to come and hang out at, at uh, Anvil with us a lot. And then once we found out she was bartending at Reno, it was like it was an easy switch whenever Amber went out of business through the pandemic. Yeah. So, uh, like it, like Kyle said, Reno's really helped us out a lot and uh, whatnot. But yeah, the, none of our old ladies ever wanted to come up there, um, which sometimes that's not a bad thing. But other times it's like, man, I wish you were a part of this a little bit more you sometimes. You didn't have a place that they at least feel welcome to. If you yeah, don't want to yeah. go, go fuck yourself. That was what but. was cool about Anvil is like when you'd walk out of the bar and we're all talking about bikes down there, but all the all the wives and girlfriends were over there in their own world doing their own thing. So yeah. it's like they were still around. You know yeah. what I mean? It was a decent bar. They felt comfortable. Yeah. yeah. They just didn't feel – I mean, this is straight from horse. They didn't feel comfortable mm-hmm. at Reno, so they didn't like it. it. It is what it is. So, Well, the new spot, uh, you know, we did our first bike night this week. Uh I'll be honest with you, the the pre bike night, like we all, like you reached out to a lot of homies, said, "Hey, we we need to get some bikes out here tonight to see how it fits, how it feels." And uh, you reached out to a lot of homies and made it happen. And and I think I was telling people at bike night, it's like that's what it used to feel like at Reno's. I mean, not Reno's, but at Anvil. It used to feel like that when we first all started meeting each other. We'd be like, "Hey, what are y'all doing? It's Monday, dude. Let's fucking hang out." And you know, next thing you know, we're at Bryan Street having some pizzas. The mob percent. over there was fucking wild. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it was cool. – cool. that's what I missed. That's what I miss about our scene because we don't really have that. I mean, we have homies that's showing up, but we don't have that, like – How many Hang times do we actually ride together in Dallas? Almost never. That was the first time was, I ever – Speaking of all that, the place that I worked on that and I sat down and it took four or five hours uh, reaching, you know, sitting with a bar napkin writing down who, you know, who am I going through thinking of who would be whatever – um, the place I did at this dive bar off Greenville. If y'all want to run something back like that every now and then, where it's kind of an invite only thing, twelve, fifteen, whatever it showed up. I like that. That's fun. This fucking bar that I went to, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Milo's, Milo something, but you can just look up M I L O S. Do you know what I'm talking about on Greenville, uh, dude? I it's think sick. I've heard of it. It's a I lot bigger than you would think. It's it's got Is a it cross street from uh, it's uh, close to the Zona, but it's like a half a block down from the Zona. I want to say on the on the right on the same side. I have no idea. <clears throat> Dude, it's I'm not sure. Like I said, so I found this little hidden uh, gym dive bar. Pool tables, college vibe, bunch of sports shit on the walls, uh, the fucking cool staff. Uh, maybe not the best parking for a bite night thing, but we could sh- for sure show up 12, just 15 a, deep like we did the other night. Yeah, go watch Homies Do some shit like, yeah. like we ended up at Brian, but. I like that vibe, man. That was fun. It, that That's the kind of. You know, that's the kind of. That's what I used to love about. that. That's what I miss about local riding, riding around locally. But. You know, finding the, new shit, finding new shit, or just whatever. But the other thing is, like, we all ride performance motorcycles, and people always got to go perform on them and shit. It's like, dude, we're on a 
busted ass street. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why, like, when we started doing the bike nights a long time ago in Anvil, I remember when we first started it, I think one time we were like, you know what, let's go somewhere else from here. And that was a shit show. Everybody's trying to do burnouts and willies. And it's like, it's not. Hey, quit talking hey. to Jaden like that. No, no. <laughs> okay, maybe I had a day. <laughs> hey, oh, wait. Unknown's not here. Sorry, man. Like, nice try out, but fuck off. Like, yeah, be cool. Everybody's I mean, like hauling ass, ass doing shit. It's like, asshole. hey, look, <laughs> just, just line them up. Let's just get there safe. Yeah. And that, you know, I don't want to tell anybody else how to ride, but that's just the one thing about it. It's like, that's how people go down. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of, like, amped up dudes ready to fucking go rip to the next spot. Especially if you've never ridden together. Yeah. And, you, 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 know. you don't know the guy. You're like, hey, oh, I see a bike. Well, I know guy. how me and the homies ride, right. but a lot of the guys come to bike night. I don't know how they yeah, ride. Yeah, exactly. You might get you that know? one dude that's never kind of pushed his bike that far before, and he's like, oh, shit, locks up his brakes and dumps it into you. Fuck that. Every city is a Nürburgring. Every one of them. Ride as fast <laughs> as you want and turn as hard as you want. Well, that's Every how it is ride with Jetty. Yeah, I know shit. Like, we were in California fucking riding like goddamn idiots. I'm like, dude, I can't ride with Jetty. He he can afford to pay his tickets and pay his fines. Like, I got to, you know, put him on a payment plan and shit. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to do that. I've ridden to Daytona with him once like that. And it's just like, fucking A. Dude, we were in fucking California. Like, yeah. going back from Born Free, it's like, stoplights, like, red lights meant stop signs. Is essentially what it meant for Jetty. <laughs> I, I honestly invoke that right right now with the heat, the way it is. Yeah. Like I'm might as well be in California. I'm filtering all the way up to the fucking front at stoplights if I'm more Dude, than like yeah. three cars back. Yeah. Just from the heat, man. Sorry. It's, it's and honestly, not, I haven't had a lot of people like honking or being cunts about it. Um, but I am. I'm treating stoplights literally. I mean, being safe, both feet down, looking. And if it's clear, I'm fucking going through. I'm not. You know? It's too hot, man. It's, it's just yeah, too hot. Fuck sitting yeah. around on the bike. Even, even at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, it's still 100 degrees. It's yeah. just too hot. Dude, man. I've had some real fun night rides lately, leaving Ooh. the bar 3, 3. I bet it feels good, like uh, in the 70s or 80s. Oh, yeah. You, you know, I get sweaty, mop, you know, cleaning the bar at the end. So you get out, you're, you're you know, got a, got a good sweat going on, jump on, fucking just blast up 75, Tom four Cruise. or five exits. Yeah, Tom it was well, not even driving like a, you know, wild, just 80, 90, just kind of cruising. The roads are empty and. There's, no, there's nothing you better than come, that. Oh, they're so I good. Missed. Dallas, you know, we talked about earlier, like, riding in Texas, riding in Dallas, fuck it. But, dude, night riding through the city when the cars are gone and it's cooled down, fucking it's one so of the nice. best things in the yeah. world. I got a little later start to the new bike night Tuesday than I wanted to. Um, so I was catching, a, you know, not quite sundown, but almost there, that good golden hour. Yeah. And I ended up going, like, a little different route. Obviously, I'm not going to the same spot, so I took a different route. And ended up going by the Omni, which if you don't know, that's the hotel in Dallas. It's now part of our skyline. They do messages and pictures and stuff. But it's cool to drive by it because they have this historic piece. It's called the Pegasus, uh, this thing that used to be on top of one of the tallest buildings in downtown years ago. It's been dwarfed, you know, now. Well, they had that original one outside the Omni, and it spins around. It lights. It's real cool. Yeah. But going down, it's all on Young Street, which, like, turns into Canton, which then dumps into Exposition. But you go through that, a little bit past that is Dallas City Hall, which... If you've never seen it, feel free to Google it. Um, it's, it's pretty iconic. The uh, it's iconic. It was featured in RoboCop, uh, the original RoboCop. They made it. Filmed it in Dallas. They said it was da- Detroit, but they filmed it in Dallas and used a lot of locations. Chucked a guy out the glass. Have you? Yeah, and it's so it's, but it's still it's just architecturally it's fucking badass it's crazy. to ride by, and, and I just enjoyed the fuck out of my ride to bike night as much as I like to brag. I'm one mile down, you know, one turn and I'm there. It was cool having to take a little bit, get a little bit of a ride. Like, I'm two miles now for bike night. Yeah, so yeah. It was nice, just that extra mile. And Sounds if better you look up, than 108-degree uh, weather. Riding from it was so hot as a but it was, it was fun. <laughs> if you look up a Dallas City Hall from the 70s and 80s, those, you know those big pools in the front? They used to do pool parties there. Yeah, I've seen that. What? Yeah. That's cool. Can we to get do? that back? Do a big old pool party in the pool out front no, of Dallas People Hall. protest out in front yeah. of that place. Well, so when it comes to bike nights, I mean, all of us have been riding bikes. We've been bikers before we met each other. I don't work on my stuff. What, what, if you could like the bike nights that you went to in the past compared to what we kind of have, like, what would you say is the difference between other ones and now, if that makes sense? Like, well, what's, I don't know. I, I guess being in, you know, just, Almost from the very beginning of where it's gone to like now, 
the comfortability and going from this is something I found about, had to work up the courage to go alone, became friends, literally made a very serious commitment on on uh, consistency on going to where now you know part of the part of the actual planning and that kind of stuff on the the reiteration of it as we kind of revamp it like you said but being actual part of that I don't know what do you, I mean it's I'm invested this is it's a part of me it means a lot to me the uh, I'm very proud of what we've done with it I'm proud of the uh, the bite nights that it's inspired not that we created or anything but there are people that have reached out and said dude I love what y'all are doing we're starting ours and I love seeing the guys with three bikes at first and then it grows and grows and <clears throat> seeing what we've helped inspire or whatever push um not even inspire but just showing people you can do it dude you yeah. can do it we're in what the third almost fourth biggest city in the country so don't ever look at us like oh man i got 25 bikes 30 bikes 40 bikes like oh don't feel like you're four or five six bikes don't feel like you're failing or anything like that depending on where you are that's a fucking success if you get anybody that you don't already know and you give them something to do, and you form a relationship with them, you fucking won. You won the bike night. Thing. Yeah. And the consistency is the part of it. So I'm invested. Like I said, it's it's part of it. I've got some of my, you know, the best friends of my life now all originated to this. I continue to meet new people. I love the people I meet. I said it the other day. It's a you know, new spot, but same great-ass fucking people. And I just love having it there for... The guy that just fucking buys a Dyna today, that's just fucking like, oh my God, that finds us. I love the fact that there's something there for them to go to. And I like that there's something there for the guys, people like Jones that just have a, a plate full of life right now, but he still knows he has it when he needs to. The guys, yeah. you know, on the other side of town in Fort Worth, you know, the Ryan Coves, knowing that they can come out whenever, just that it's it's something for anybody that wants to get away on Tuesday, you don't have to be the star of the show, but if you want to be around like-minded people and have a good fucking time, exactly, that's yeah. what it's there for. So. so, you know, over the years, I've been a part of other bike nights that, you know, the first bike night I ever kind of started or hosted was when we used to do it at uh, this wing bar in Dallas called Pluckers, right? Yeah. And we used to do it in Arlington, and uh, we'd only do it once a month, and we would get like four, five, six, seven hundred bikes out there. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, even though I didn't know all these people, I couldn't know all those people. It just was like kind of like this, like I felt like I was at the the cool happening thing, right? So I, I get that there's a lot of bike nights. I, I know on the East Coast they have like Quaker State. I think it's real bigger in like a yeah. They used to have one in Plano. Yeah, well, I used yeah. to go to that one a lot too. So Quaker State, you, I think they host a lot of bike nights in like Florida. And they, you know, those guys that we, we were at uh, hanging out with um, Craig Tarpon Turbo down there. He had some homies come out. <laughs> Tap on turbo. Uh, no, just tarp on. This is, I have to. He says, he, like, tarpon. I he's like shaking his fist right now. Yeah, it's tarp. I say tarp on just so I make sure I hit my syllables. How about you spell it different? Um, but anyway, like, they were talking about their bike night down there, and I was like, oh shit, you got a bike night too? And they're like, yeah, like, we go to Quaker State, and there's like 700 people. I was like, Damn, yep. that's not like. The oatmeal place? I was like, look, I get that. That's probably that cool good. to go to. <laughs> <laughs> if we had something like that, I'm sure we would check it out every once in a while. But. To me, like you, Hold you on. did you just make a Quaker oatmeal joke on that? You fucking hack! <laughs> Why, yo, look, you got it too slow. <laughs> That's your own world over there in his headphones. So nice. like, you Jesus, know what? I got a good dude. joke for this I'm one. Sorry. Everybody, listen. I'm Quaker sorry. State for that. <laughs> We're gonna edit Kyle out of this. Fuck <laughs> these motherfuckers. <laughs> <audio. laughs> Continue. So, like, I I don't want people to think that like or put like this. There is something cool to be had at going to a large bike night. There is a good vibe there. But what I'm talking about is the vibe of getting to know everybody there. Something a little bit more, I hate to use the word intimate around bikers, but it's a little bit more intimate. It's a little bit more like you have a little bit more of a say of this existing by you being there. Yeah. And I feel like a smaller event, you can get into more, you get to know each other better as opposed to being – on a big bike night, like a four or a hundred, if there's a hundred people at your bike night, you're going to come up there with your click, right? And you're pretty much going to stick with your click the whole time. Yeah. Maybe you'll talk to a couple other people you know, but you're kind of, <laughs> that's like some ca high school cafeteria shit. You're going to yeah. quickly go to your little corners and set it out. So to me, like, yes, those are good and there's a place for that. But what you really want is a bike night that's small enough to where you can get to know everybody there. 
And from that bike night, the goal is not just to do that. The goal is to use this bike night and be like, hey, man, what, what, what's going on this weekend? Y'all, yeah. dude, y'all want to go to, y'all want to go do the hill country? We'll just go grab a hotel one night somewhere down there and we'll go ride and go do some shit or, hey, man, everybody, we're all going to Jane's house this weekend for the pool party. Do you want to do that? Like, use it as a, as a tool to make friends and then go do other shit that are more biker and related. It doesn't even have to be start off big like overnight trips. It can be, hey, do you want to go to the brewery 45 minutes out of here? Just on, you know, just on the outside, whatever the fuck it is you have yeah. going on. But yeah, exactly what you're saying. It's about the bike night facilitates the relationships, which those facilitate the rides, the trips, yeah, and the fucking best friends that you don't know you have yet. That it, you can't do. I don't know, but yes, you're exactly right. It's it's you can't just show up and that's it. You if you well if you want it, I guess you can. But if you really want it, you're gonna. I'm just saying it, it, where the it's, trips start. It's gonna be a lot harder to uh, walk into that five or two hundred or one hundred person bike night. And and meet people, yeah. you know, unless, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, I essentially, if you go to smaller things or if you host smaller things, you create smaller things and everybody's a little bit more vulnerable and trying to like meet each other. So that's a little bit easier way to kind of make a crowd. Plus, most of the people that are going to come to your bike night might be people that are into the style of bike that you ride yeah, or at right. least what you want to do on bikes. Like there's a little bit more of a niche to it, not just this broad, like we're all bikers and we ride bikes. You know, I think maybe. Yeah. 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 I don't know, dude. I'm fucking over motorcycles. I'm ready to get a jet ski. Never do it. I don't know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a boat kind of guy. Oh, you will be. I can uh, tell right now. I can see through you like a piece of paper. Captain Trey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna start a you're gonna start a t shirt club, like a t shirt. You know like, what? Maybe I'll fucking will. Now I'm gonna sell all my <laughs> shit. Now I'm gonna be a boat guy, and now I'm gonna start a t shirt club for no fucking reason. So I'm be at these gonna be like the, the outcast culture of the boat world. Yeah. Do they have that? Was it Salt Life or some shit like that? Hell yeah. Trades me going to Ray Hubbard yeah. over to fucking yeah, Hooters I'm be every selling day. my fake Yeti coolers and be out there with a Cody. I got yeah <laughs> what else I got I got something stupid like, like playing that. golf on Saturdays and yeah go- and I'm gonna be selling on big inflatable fucking ping pong and in, in the lake you know selling that off and shit look uh, I I'm not I would never say that it's not a good time going to the lake and getting drunk and having a good time I'm not a boat owner guy but if you yeah. ask me to go out on your boat with you yeah I'll go with you yeah I just don't like dealing with boat maintenance that's that's not I, my it thing. just like I feel like people that I don't know that's too generalized of a statement. I don't know. I I'm just not into boats enough to where I could afford to own a boat and want to keep up in that world. You know what I'm saying? It's such a, oh, a it's such a niche luxury. Yeah. You it's know what I mean? And uh like when you're in Norcom, we we're staying up in Disco Bay, like it's much part of the culture. Like all right. the dudes up there like all the houses are on the water. Like everybody has a boat. Like, yeah. When I think of Dallas, it's almost like a car. Down, and there's the channels boats. to get to them too. Yeah, though. yeah. There's shit. There's a lot more shit to do yeah. on the water here. It's like, you know, you got guys like Justin out there getting BWIs and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on that. It's man. a very big financial commitment if you want to make it any kind of just yeah, not your life. You do that. Ass. It'd be different it. if, like, there was a bunch of, like, yeah. at least when you're riding your bike, you can go to the bar, and there's other cars on the road so you can get home when you're a little drunk. <laughs> there, there is. There is. <laughs> Instead of you're the one boat going all yeah, over. Like, crooked as fuck. Hey. Like, hauling on ass. Like, there is, there's <laughs> boat culture as far as, like, people to slip. There's people that have, you know, they are in a boat slip, and they rarely take their boats out, if ever. Like, the slip is a place to hang out at. Do you think? Um, like, towns like Rockwall, I mean, any lake town – it's rife with people like that. Yeah. And um Do you think yeah. there's like a performance bolt culture like this? Oh, dude, like they're like, no, everything. fuck those single engine guys, they suck. Oh yeah. And they're like, you gotta have four engines. You ever been to Havasu? No, I haven't. That's what that's that. That's what I'm sure I'm, yeah. I see a lot of it. I'm like, God damn, that's those are some expensive boats. And those are a lot of girls on that boat that so probably taking advantage of you. But hey. Hey, it is what it is. You're rich. We're just down right now. Bikers are down. <laughs> Boats are up. Yeah, <laughs> it's a season. Get a thing. boater sit or get get a boater side by side. That's where the hoes. Do, do you ever think like some of the hell yeah brothers look at us and like fuck those dudes? You know yeah, what? Most of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it. You ever been to Strokers on like a Saturday? Yeah, yeah, they I definitely have. do a lot yeah. of. 
I just, I'm just curious if it just. No, <laughs> Donnie said, said it's called one. a drag boat tray. <laughs> <laughs> we send Thanks. those. To, no way, dude. We send those guys to fucking Thanks, Australia. Oh, I appreciate your input. <laughs> Danny no. Dixon has a performance boat. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You just started a beef with him. You tell me. I don't. I literally don't know who that is. My dad used to work on. Is that the Dixon dude? <laughs> I guess guy. so. Is it the guy that owns yeah. Dixon? Yeah. Oh, it's I a know. legit thing. Like, I don't wear Dixon, Todd. I'm sorry. Yeah, we stopped wearing that shit last year. My dad used to be a outboard mechanic, and he used to work for an offshore uh, race team in, in Dubai. Like a sheik had an offshore offshore racing team. Like we moved our whole family over there for like two months. That was in 1990 when Saddam Hussein started moving in, so we we came back, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, it's a fucking big industry. I mean, it's. Are we into boat races growing up and shit? Like, shit's cool as fuck. There's some badass yeah. fucking boats out there, but I just, we never owned our own boat because it's fucking like a lot of maintenance. Yeah. So even even being man. that en- engulfed in it, it was like, my dad was always doing boat shit, but we never had a boat. So. <laughs> Your dad was like, "Fuck that! I'll make money yeah, exactly. It's like put my own money into it. It's like working yeah. on motorcycles. You know, some guys don't want to fucking even ride anymore. Like." They're yeah, just so tired yeah, of looking that. at that shit. Man, I I feel like the, the boat thing uh, for a lot of people, it if you have a family and you can't do the type of motorcycling that we all kind of promote, then I understand, like, having these other things that the family can be involved in. Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, we're just, you know, without trying to, like, separate or say we're different or whatever, it's just like, a, you know, I'm not – honestly, I haven't been on a boat. The last time I was on a boat was when we went to Craig's deal uh, last year when when we went to this couple's thing at Craig. Craig's, and uh, it was a horrible experience. <laughs> I think so. that was when you and I our invitations got lost in the mail. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, trust yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> all it was was Craig crying because he doesn't know how to do mushrooms like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, See, to God. if we wouldn't have lost our invitations in the mail, we would have fucking made that shit a good fucking time. Oh. Oh, it was it was a good time. Thanks, yeah. Greg. <laughs> but, but here's the deal: I complain about great times and bad times equally. Right. So I'm a natural complainer. That's what I like to do with my life. And <laughs> I spent half the time complaining, but now looking back, I'm like, yeah, I had fun. It was it was a good time. I'm still going to complain about every every aspect of it, but it was fun. There was a point in time where he was just Craig was just on one. Like he literally like we all did mushrooms or no, we stopped. No, the first night we didn't do – fuck, what was it? We were all coming down off the mushroom trip, and Craig just didn't want the fucking thing to end. So he grabs a bag of mushrooms and then Uh-oh. runs and hides and takes all of them. And we're kind of, like, tripping out because Craig is, like – he needs to be – he needs the supervision while he's on mushrooms. I bet he won't do that no more. <sighs> Brittany, uh, Francis Brittany, was, like, trying to comfort him because he was crying kind of. He was cry happy. Like he was crying, but he was happy and he was like howling. It was, it was a weird. No, he kept I, trying to jump back feeling. in the pool because he felt better in the pool than outside the pool. And we were all trying to go to bed and we just didn't want him to drown. We didn't want to wake up and see Craig just floating in the pool. <laughs> it was like a manatee with yeah. tattoos. <laughs> oh, shit. When I, I feel like you probably spent the same amount of money on your Harleys as you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I don't discredit the fact that like if if you can live that boat life and it's not a, a, a hit in your pocket, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, do you, man? Like have fun and live yeah, your life. There's something wrong with it. You know, but you know, the way my bank account is set up and the way my life is set up, like I just don't have the time to have such a an expensive hobby that way. And what? I don't have the time to like even Maybe once a year somebody has a boat and they invite us out, I could be a part of it. But I, I can't do that every weekend. I got too much shit going on. Yeah. The, rewind it back. I said jet ski. I'm getting in the jet. I'm on that PWC <laughs> budget, not a bad. boat budget. Personal hey, you're taking your boat out? I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fucking meet you. Tell me where you're going. I just. And we need I, a friend oh, with the tune. Oh, that's Jane coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's just standing up on a sit down seat. Yeah. <laughs> It's like coming, uh, it's coming in like fucking uh, it's like, coming to like Kenny up. Powered. By the way, fucking my Kenny Powers him. It's still in Italy. What the fuck? I forgot about that. I <laughs> said, <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's, lost, it's lost in the war of Ukraine. It not, dude. That's the one. It's in Ukraine right now. Oh, Some Russian dude's wearing it. 
I'm at the hit scouts. Hey man, uh, it's been a year that helmet's been in Italy. What's up? Where's my helmet at? Hit up uh, what's his name? Naruto. Naruto. It's probably in the museum next to the Mona Lisa, just sitting there. <laughs> like, oh my god, some, some, some fucked fucking, up. My goddamn oh, helmets oh, go oh. to Italy before I do. That's what's <laughs> some that's fifteen what's year olds wearing around on their Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I see someone making posts like on Instagram, like it's it's yeah. a suggested <laughs> follow because apparently yeah. Instagram wants me to follow people I don't follow now, yeah. and. Uh, it's just like my helmet on somebody else is living their best life, and I'm yeah, just like, on their the little best life. You're like, ah, okay. Got a w- super hot chick on the back. This is my KP <laughs> now. <laughs> so, yeah, some Italians like, I got the helmet with a uh, Randy Johnson on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> like some MLB fan. <laughs> he smoked that bird. That just, that just made it to Italy. <laughs> oh man. I don't know what I don't know. If you could have any other hobby, what would you probably do? What 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 interests you? Like as far as another hobby that would be like on the level of motorcycle commitment. Can you think of something like that? Dude, I would be an airplane guy. No, airplane guy? Yeah. Just like No, you wouldn't. He works in the airplane world, so <laughs> No, but airplane I would guy. be an airplane guy. You could be. Period. What the fuck does that mean? Like flying them, building them? No, just them, yeah, flying them. Just flying them. Just ha- own one. Should be a pilot. Just own, yeah, just own like a little old Cessna. And <laughs> airplane like, guy yeah, yeah. is not the right term. Just You'd own be a fucking pilot. I just want to be just airplane own. guy. <laughs> How much do you think you're getting a little? When people old say Cessna like, I, I know guys that like, I have my snap on guy. He's an airplane dude. He he uh he's a pilot. He lives on a, like an airstrip like neighborhood thing. Yeah. yeah. And every time I have to go to his house to like you know get some tools or whatever, um, I'm just always like, man. So like, you work on your own plane. And he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like. You got that kind of confidence? Like, I just feel like <laughs> well, there's like a be, 350 Chevy engine in here. It's carbureted or some shit. Like well, you that have to be, the, even if you work on your own stuff, you have to be you certified. Have to have a license. I just, I don't know. Like, that's, that's just FAA, a lot right, of right. fucking, uh, I just think of like a chopper builder, like working on their chopper and leaking yeah. oil. Fucking, let me, I'm, let's yep, go take it up right. in the air real quick. I'm like, looks fuck good. that noise, man. Dude, I've yeah. been in some of those planes uh, going to school. My buddy had his private pilot's license at like 16 or something crazy like that. Or eight. What you're saying is you grew up around rich people. No, no, no. This is we're going to school. And this dude, we, he was like, hey, you want to go fly one day? We all did. <laughs> we went to this old like 1960s Piper Warrior. And he was just doing these fucking like barrel rolls down in the fucking thing. I'm like looking at the wings Fuck and like that. oil canning and shit. I'm like, dude, it's like flying a fucking big dog chopper or something like that. <laughs> like so. <laughs> So, God damn, just dude. imagine being in a plane with like all of us. We've been drinking all night. Dude, that's like, hey, dude, look at this new trick I figured. I was like, dude, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Like, I don't want to be that guy yeah. in the plane. Like, <laughs> I was like, like just off. Dude, just, 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 la- just let me out. Just let me. I just want to get back on the ground. Let me yeah. out. We were like flying, and he's like, like could you imagine flying with fucking Jetty if he was a Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> he just turned the engines off and go, oh, guys, uh-oh, looks like we're going down. Jetty would have like, like a kid asshole. Dude, he'd let it go for a while. Jetty would have a fucking jet. Just, just. Full throttle yeah. jet all the time. How how much do you think the, the top jet. Top Gun now is going to inspire people to want to get in that world? Even though it's like a dying industry, Not I believe. All. You don't Not think? Not at all. No. Like, it's like, I don't know. Everything's so goddamn, like, quick nowadays. Yeah. Movies don't do, do shit for anything anymore, I feel like. It was badass. Top like, b- no, the movie was badass. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I'm just saying, Great as movie. far as, like, inspiration, they're like, ah, eh, whatever. I'm just going to watch that on TikTok. Like, yeah, like yeah. I'm good. We're doomed. I We're doomed. It but takes I, real world shit to see to actually get inspired. I feel like nowadays, I would like to maybe some online, but I don't know. Get off work, drive to the Dallas Executive Airport, hop in my airplane, just go something for like five days, come back. I think that'd be rad. Yeah, yeah but wouldn't the fun be flying? Yeah, but so, you fly around all over and just come back. You know what I mean? Does it cost like to land at airports? Like, hey, yeah, it's like a what rental. Real well, hanger for it a little depends bit. on what, how much how you're per doing night it, but per yeah. stay, yeah. Plus what if fuel. you just act like and you're going to crash every like, time? It's like, hey, dude, I got to land right now. I'm going to go down. Yeah. I'm out of gas. <laughs> I can't I can't not land. Then you land. Like, hey, I'm, it's an Uber. I'm just going to run to fucking Buffalo real quick. I uh, get some food. I'll be right back. I'm going to get up in the air. And then, you know, just hit them with the, I didn't know I couldn't do that kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also make some money off of it. You can drug, drug smuggle a little bit, you know. Okay. Now we're talking. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's dangerous. there's rich fucks that do that as far as the way we may ride to like Loco Coyote for a burger. It's called a hundred dollar hamburger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That place we left eating or we ate at on the well, like the way they, but well, they fly. They 
literally just, you know, it's a hundred dollars yeah. in gas to go fly from here to like some other like city three hours away. But yeah, it's that happens. So yeah, fuck that. If you got the money, you got the money. What would you do? What would your other hobby be outside of the motorcycles? Assassin, like contract killer. <laughs> <laughs> a hobby? Uh, That's your fucking hobby. <laughs> I'd like, like, born, like, I'd like to have that phone where, like, I'm, a, I'm an asset. Like some John Wick. Hey, type all of a sudden, they send me a file, and I'm like, got this guy. <laughs> Did you contact um, the dragon? I don't know. That would, banging uh, dudes. Yeah, <laughs> that would be fucking James. <laughs> he has like a fucking card. And it's just a dragon. You know who to contact. Yeah, you know, um, you want this job done? Dragon. Drag on. Drag on. Yeah. <laughs> it's just James. Like, hey, I'm your guy. Well. Uh, Hobby, I don't know. Hey, that's hard to say. It it is. Is. Equivalent to motorcycles, be, oh yeah, it's, I don't know. Just put the same. Well, yeah, I was trying to think of what I did before doing all this stuff, and it's like you're a headbanger. That's that's <laughs> such an easy thing to do. Like that's just like they still call I'm you guys headbangers. Like going to see a movie. I, I don't know. Like I remember in high school, it was like, oh, those are headbangers over there. Nah, that was they all crazy. had long hair, had nin on their backpack. Had <laughs> <laughs> nin on their backpack. <laughs> Like, I never knew any of these bands growing up because I had to be, a, like, a wigger <laughs> just to make it just to make it not get beat up. So I had to, like, learn, hey, man, you know, I sag, too. So, <laughs> yeah. But then uh, there's always that, that group of headbangers that had, like, the Metallica and the Pantera and all, all the shit I listen to now, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> I got deprived of it as a child by, by bullying, so... I get a basketball player. I shit. guess a little bit more realistic. I would probably try to be, like, nature guy, I guess, like... Hiking, off-roading, oh, okay. shit like, yeah, that's good. like if I had to put something like this, uh, as much as I love the water, and honestly, I would, I wouldn't mind, uh, I wouldn't mind having a, a PWC. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> PWC. Um, yeah, and I, man, turns. I feel like if uh, if we're talking about the same passion, or whatever, for motorcycle, so much of motorcycling for me is the community and the people. I don't know if I was like, I don't know how much of like jet ski. Bike night, you know, jet ski night at the harbor in Rockwall. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many dudes I could get together. Like, that's our, that I would find like-minded to get people that would probably turn into yeah. friends. Whereas I think the outdoor, at least the outdoor, worst case, if I don't meet like-minded people or whatever, I'm experiencing, you know, like, a, was it Zion where he pulled in? The one you got me with the one hitter. <laughs> Or we, we saw the people with the helmets going down like they were just coming back from a climb, and we were yeah. like, we we're like, dude, what if you like that? This was that's what you got off on. You go off in a place like this, and you just go camp for three or four days, like some real survivalist shit. I don't know. At least with that, you would have the connection with nature. You'd probably get something, uh, whatever the fuck, out of it. Something for your yourself, your soul, uh, an intrinsic you know return on your time spent. Yeah. In addition, to you might be able to find some other camping, hiking dudes that you. Really, no, that's actually a fucking good one. I, I don't. Yeah. But that's like, like well, the uh, the the day we were coming down on the big trip, where all the the hike the kayakers with the with the water was yeah, up yeah. and mm-hmm. raining, like just I was like, man, these guys are having yeah. this is like, and the same thing surfing. There's a bunch of stuff, especially weather related, that I can only imagine. You know, we get spoiled because we usually have good weather most of the time. Our weather's good, and then you get the occasional breakup day where you can't do something. I can only, I can only imagine a hobby where you need the weather to be what most people consider bad for it to affect your shit, and you're like, <coughs> let's fucking go, dude! All of a sudden, we got a rainstorm, a swell, yeah, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Let's go ride. Let's let's go fucking ride. It's like if if the weather was shitty all the time, and then all of a sudden it broke, and you had like a spring day, like for eight hours. And you're like, dude, let's go do this. That would be fucking sick. And I think stuff, you know, outdoor activities like that, whether it be, I'm probably too old and best busted up to get into mountain biking. I like bicycling a lot. I don't. I would never be like hardcore dude, but I like riding trails and shit yeah. like that, or dirt biking. If I couldn't be Harley's and street stuff, I'd probably really try to get back into trail riding. Oh, honestly, yeah. I, I didn't think I, that's probably an obvious one. I should. I said thought that. a lot about getting back in dirt bike riding or drag racing, a lot. Dirt bike riding or drag racing. Yeah, that's what I used to do when I was growing up. I feel like drag racing is such a. There, there is a skill to it, but there's also a wallet aspect to oh, it. Dude. So it's like no matter what you yeah, do, that's why you're I, always I, my sponsorship got killed when the recession hit. Oh. Yeah, it was and a good time. It was a good time for those four years that it happened and then recession. So what would you do, Kyle? Uh, got me fucked up, dude. I don't know. I was trying Bang to think of dudes. shit. Bang dudes, <laughs> huh? yeah, I just hey dudes. I, I used to go friends. hiking and stuff though. I used to do trails. That yeah. shit was fun. Um, I, that's why I was trying to think. That's what I did though before. 
finding motorcycles is just like is either that was every now and then maybe two or three times a year I do a big hike trip like a thirty mile trail or whatever but like a lot of concerts and stuff like that and uh, I Are guess you I did the I did travel on you when we when you talk no I'm being respectful um, putting a. Uh, like traveling uh, overseas, that was fun for a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Flying over to like Vietnam and Thailand and shit, but I don't know. It was just kind of like you do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> there isn't th- that. I never found anything that I loved as much as motorcycling, though. Yeah, that's where it's at. That's another good one though, the traveling aspect. Like you know, because I mean, if you think about it, like if you think about what we spend in a year saving up, working on our bike, traveling on our bike, just everything we do on our bike, we put that all into one trip. You could do like so many trips. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, all the time, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's but really the the level of, of, of friendship and, and commitment and a certain group of guys, not everyone could do that. Yeah, you I know? mean, and don't get me wrong. I want this so homies, great. But. You know what I mean? It, if, if, if every freaking person could do this, it wouldn't be as yeah. fun. You know what I mean? If it was as easy, everyone would do it, but it's not easy. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. To have the mental capacity about, hey, man, we're riding 400 miles today. Fuck. All right. We're doing it. But you kind of look over and you look, see your buddy and he's like, fuck, we're doing this. You're like, all right, I'm doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you get there and you shut down a bar and stuff, that's fun. I think not everyone can do that. You cover a lot of ground on a motorcycle traveling. Yeah. As um, opposed to like having like to go somewhere to and walking it everywhere. Kind of a lot. When you're driving, you're just kind of mindless. Yeah. You, know, you got these exactly. zombie like people that just kind of sit there. Just It's easy. You know, on the bike, you're just kind of more aware. Yeah, in, on the motorcycle, you're more you're more tapped into whatever the environment is and all the different aspects. Like you're yeah. using a lot more of your senses uh, but, when you ride. Yeah. So, and then, and then you know when you get to a certain part and you got a lot of homies in the communities there, man. I think that that's really exciting. Yeah, just like hey, you know what? I'm going to Nashville. Like oh shit, I got Mill House there. I got Ben. Yeah, there. I got so and so here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's that's so exciting. You know, you know what sucks when I asked this question? I was thinking of it more of, like, a material possession hobby situation, like a boat or a, a snowmobile or a fucking, oh, dude, you know, shit like that. I was thinking, like, more of that. But, you know, Jaden's brought up the, you know, the, the hiking and that kind of more outdoorsy kind of guy. Yeah. Um, and you brought up traveling, and those are – I never really looked at those as hobbies as much as they really are hobbies. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So – that's I mean, one thing too. I want to do in what gaming and all that people that uh, what Twitch? Oh, I do that shit already. So is it Twitch, right? Yeah. People that Twitch and all that. I mean, that's their hobbies too. Yeah, I, I guess I just don't see it as that because it's just kind of something I just do just for yeah. Because fun, if you think about it, hobby. when I think about all my hobbies, I do them. Yeah, like everything other than motorcycles. Like my second biggest hobby is photography. Right. Um. But that kind of rolls into my business now and rolls into motorcycling. So it's like not really separated, if yeah, you will. I guess, a, I guess a hobby for me is something I pour a lot of money into, but I don't get I spend money back into it. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't get My bike just, doesn't pay me. Oh, yeah, yeah. My the the bike world does, but yeah. like I, I just upgraded. I put it like this. I just went really in debt on credit, a full T-Sport today <laughs> yeah. or last two days in a camera upgrade this week. <laughs> And uh, and another computer upgrade um, that <coughs> I I've got to find a way to physically turn. I've not made one dime. I'm actually I take that back. Uh, Bruce Bruce Brucey, like how you call him Brucey. That's his new nickname. So Brucey's the only person that's ever purchased a photo from me, right? And not not saying like hey, all you other guys out there, you're bad friends or whatever, but. I just never knew how to put it out there to sell it. Right. You know what I mean? And I still don't. But Bruce hit me up. He's like, hey, I want to buy this photo. Can you have it printed and sent to me? And he bought a photo I took of his bike, which was my bike in Deep Ellum. Mm. It's kind of out there on the wall already, but we did a big metal print. It was, yeah. It's fucking sick. It was at his house yeah, when we came. And um, I got to find a way to kind of turn, because that's what I want to do for a living. Like, I want to, I want to wake up. My, my two things I want to do in life are these podcasts and something photography, videography based. You know who kills is that Chopsy, dude. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. I'm just saying. I just see his stuff. I'm like, God damn. What's his Instagram? Chopsy. 
<laughs> Chopsy. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah. Don't oh, be a puss. We're familiar. Yeah. We like Chopsky. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, for the fucking viewers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking to the viewers, me. talking to me. I'm not mad at me. Uh, we love you. You know, just the way he travels and stuff like that. I'm just kind of like. Yeah. Well, he's he's a much more higher end photography than I am. Right. He, uh, yeah. his work is. Uh, That's great. I just, I don't, I don't know how you monetize on that. Is what I'm saying. Well, he's he's monetized in a way that his his so to to do a little but photography dive nerdy mm -hmm. right now. If you look at Michael Lichter's photography, and you look at Chopsky's photography, they're not in the same world at all. Right. But Michael Lichter's photography is. And I'm not saying this in any kind of bad way, but his photography is kind of timeless. It doesn't have the appeal as Chopsky's now. And maybe we only know in time because the way Chopsky edits and shoots photos is more newer school than the traditional concepts of photography. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so we're only going to know how long or how valuable this is going to be as time goes by. You know, when you look at Michael Lichter, you look at shots of him – or shots of, that he got in 79 at Sturgis of, like, camping and shit like that. And you look at it, and you can't tell when that was taken. Like, his photos have become timeless. Right. Same thing with uh, Tim O'Keefe. I think Tim O'Keefe is one of the best photographers out there. He can take a photograph of a woman, and you don't know when it was shot. It's timeless. It's as beautiful. You know, these he makes, you know... Average looking women at best, if if I was like when I say average, they're still beautiful women, but they're not like maximum fucking big titty like Instagram. Oh thoughts, yeah, they're not you know like Victoria's Secret models or anything. He's like that. taking women and make, and bringing out like such a fucking sexiness about them. Yeah, you know, and that's the art of photography. And so that's where, you know, yeah, I can, you know, a lot of us can take a picture and and edit the fuck out of it and make it look kind of trendy. But how do you take timeless photography? That's kind of like the next step when you start shooting photography. Yeah. And uh, Chop, his shit, you know, his what he does, it makes it like he's got a very wild editing style. It's very moody and different than a lot of a lot of uh, older guys, right? But yeah. where he excels is he he gets the shot in a way that like it just fucking hits like. I, one of my favorite shots is like he. I, I guess he was riding on the back of uh, Junkyard Kenny's bike, mm -hmm. and he just got this side shot of Junkyard Kenny's helmet, which was painted by Poland, and he, a, a, him riding as well, and it was so sick. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was posted in this like one of these last Torque magazines or whatever. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It's dope. What's up, everyone? Before hey, Torque went full turd. Yeah. Todd. Dead Roman. Yeah. Smith. It's in here somewhere. But yeah, so no. Choppa, uh, he, he's got a style, man. His shit's dope. Yeah. And he's, uh, pretty he's, cool. he's a really talented dude. And I, uh, he's doing it. He's doing it as big as you can do it right now, to yeah. be honest with you. I met him in uh, Daytona. Daytona? Yeah. Yeah. I could have swore this fucking shot was in here. Anyway. Magazines are stupid. Let's see what's going on here. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was uh, praising your your idea of uh, hobbies because I didn't really even think of it that way. Whenever you brought yours yeah. up, oh yeah, yeah, I thought that was cool. No, that's a good idea. That I mean, just I'm traveling on bikes. I'm pretty praiseworthy, so good for you. Praiseworthy. <laughs> I know I got this fucking thing because I fucking wrote something for it. Yeah, this shot. Oh, yeah, that is a good shot. That shot right there is yeah. my favorite. Here. You got it? Oh, yeah, that's dope. Just, I don't know, I love that shot. I mean, it's it's a perspective. Is that their last magazine? No, people? this is the second to the last. Oh, okay. One of three. One of three. Or two of three. Mm -hmm. But, uh... We need some more. What else you got, guys? Topics? Uh, upcoming campouts. 
upcoming. Yeah. The only one that's coming up that's important is uh, down south. We also <laughs> got the Lone Star, Rennie's. Got Rennie's camp out coming out. The only one that's coming up that's important is down. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, so Rennie's is coming rude. up. So yeah. Rude. So yeah, I'll be going to Rennie's again. <laughs> you went last year. How was it? It was great. It was a fun time. It was just like a small little kind of last minute, I feel like. I mean, granted, he advertised it, but I feel like it was still pretty last minute considering. Yeah. Uh, but still a really good turnout. And uh, some of the you know San Antonio, I, Austin homies came out. You know, it yeah. was pretty cool to see it. And the place is dope. It's got a, like a steakhouse slash bar on site. That part sounds good. You know good, what I mean? So you, you go there, you eat dinner. You close the bar down at midnight, and then you go back to the campsite and just fucking get hammered. I'm, get I'm definitely coming this year. for Yeah, I missed it last year. But the other one I want to talk about is uh, I haven't done it yet, and I don't think any of us did, but I kind of want to do it, is that uh, run to Terra Lingua that, like, Adam's putting on. Yeah. From uh, yeah. Houston uh, FXR, dude. FXR, the HTX. It, yeah. Like, I want to – we were talking about that at Bike Night, weren't we? Or yeah. Some, some, yeah. Something the other day. About how, like, I would love to go down there, but you were talking about how, like, doing it a weekend seems like such a a, a, a tough thing to go all Unless the way you to. Can, I mean, if you can make it and you don't mind, go for it. I think you should. What is it, a um, nine-hour trip out here? Out from here? Yeah, it's about there. eight and a half. Yeah. Um, Through Texas? Yeah. Well, a lot of it's on 20. I mean, I guess it depends on which way you decide to you get out Paso, there. But, El Paso, shoot down south. Um, if, you can, if, you can knock, if you can take off a day ahead or afterwards... You got a little yeah, more time. I feel like it's more enjoyable. But honestly, if you don't mind going down there in a day, hanging out for a day, and come back in a day, do it too. I would almost rather. There's so much shit I want to explore down there that I'd almost turn it rather turn it in personally to like a leave Wednesday, come home, be home Monday thing. Didn't right. You? I think that'd be the best way to do Didn't it. Didn't you just go down there? <laughs> yeah, I went to Marfa. Yeah, but we just drove down there. Yeah. Did we you went do out anything for, besides just check out the white girl stuff, like the little Target shop that's there? <clears throat> can't say that. <laughs> the white girl stuff that just no, that's down all they there. Did. They went and took a picture in front of the stupid Prada store. Yeah, it was, or, it was yeah, a waste was of it? weekend. Target was a Prada. Waste of fossil uh, fuels. <laughs> <laughs> Those dinosaurs did not waste of fucking die for your Prada. Hey, I, I had a good time. It was a cool yeah. little town. It was yeah. just a reason to go down there and see that area. I was, and the only one we were we were between Marfa, Terralingua, and a few other places. But uh, it was just the only one that really had uh, spent, hotels at the time. So Yeah, I spent some time in uh, – I think I spent like a week in there for a high school trip in uh, Fort Davis. Yeah, that's just north of there. About <laughs> yeah, 20 and there's a, uh, the McDonald Observatory. Yeah, we wanted, we, I there? wanted to try and go there that – Dude, the star days, party that they put closed. on is, is legit because they yeah. got two 40-ton telescopes there that you right. can go check out. And they got a dark matter telescope yeah. there for you like to go look at. And some of the stuff they find there – Oh, dude, it's a little, it's a little creepy. And then uh, at night, they'll open up everything up, and then they'll set up like all these professional telescopes, and you can go like look through them and stuff like that, so you can see the moon, Saturn, yeah. Jupiter. And stuff Tele- like that. It's Tele- pretty, it's pretty legit. Telescope party, guys. This is, this is what he's talking about. Don't looking at space. Hey, yeah, I'm sure space Jay would have a <laughs> wallop of a good time doing something else. Yeah. Uh. Hey guys, my fantasy team's doing great this year. I don't play fantasy. Yeah, sports. whatever, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't. I don't. You just keep up with the sports and don't play fantasy, so it's even gay. Okay. What are y'all? What's the whole fucking premise of this stupid conversation? <laughs> I don't know. You jumped in and talked shit on it. I know. That's yeah, what happened. That's cool. what I, hey, that's what I did. It's cool. <laughs> what now up? we're just talking about that, that area of Texas. Yeah, I was just talking about like kind of like little things to do out there. And uh, Punch of Villa used to run around there, so there's a lot of history. Yeah, are you interested now, Jaden? You fucking history yeah. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Harley versus Indian shit. I've had to yeah. paint Poncho V a couple of times for uh, a certain demographic of people. Mm. <laughs> Just to find out that he rode Indians. That he what? Rode Indians. He rode? The motorcycles? On their backs? Oh, that's right. I forgot about it. You told me about that. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. Just Big Bend. That's Traders. what evolved to. Hmm? Big Bend area talk. Yeah. Well, we were talking about running Terra Lingua. Yeah, that's one that I, everybody should make. Everybody that I know right. that went personally last year had a great fucking time. Yeah. Um, I still see just the random posts where I can tell somebody's in their feels. And it's one of the it, – there's honestly – I don't know what their overall turnout is, was, but I feel like I know 12 to 14 dudes that went – and it seems like maybe six to eight of them, it may have been the best trip that they've ever fucking taken on a motorcycle. The way that I see 
just the random repost about it and thinking of it and it shows up in a photo widget or whatever and yeah. there um, it's it seems like it was a smashing success that's one um that i really did hate that i had to miss last year and you know god willing Dude, even i even, plan on going this year i do want to go this year that's one um but man like i kind of you know I, i'm sure anybody that's hosting an event they it's just a natural thing that you want it to get bigger right but as a as a goer of it, I kind of want it to stay small and intimate like that. I want it to stay small and like personable where, you know, everybody can kick it <laughs> at uh, a situation. I want, we've been talking, uh, I don't know how, I want to say that I've mentioned or, or uh, Borrelia has mentioned to me a time. I want to do like some kind of hotel kick it thing in like Colorado somewhere. Like yeah. old motel like book out the whole fucking place in advance kind of situation. And we all just go there and it's like a good hub for like three days of riding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a day to get there. Cause we can get there in a day. And most people that aren't, you know, completely far East coast can get there in a day, go there, spend three days in one spot or out of hub, hub in one spot where you're going out and doing different rides, different shit, coming back and then coming home. Like, I've always wanted to like try to figure out new ways to do smaller but very impactful trips to where it's not completely, you know, two weeks gone or 12 days gone or 14. 14 is two weeks, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, those are the those are the ones I'm <clears> – <throat> that, that's kind of on my list of the things that I want to get back to the most is the, the three-day weekends yeah. the, with maybe leaving, uh, you know, Friday night, Right after work, having your shit packed on the bike, whatever, and being able to jump. As soon as you're free from work responsibilities, being able to jump on the bike. So you've got, you know, all night that night to at least get a, a jump start where you're going. If not, getting up balls out early Saturday. And then, like I said, maybe taking a Monday. And that doesn't necessarily always have to be with the, the fucking guys. I've talked about it before. That's Those are the kind of solo trips I miss. Um, I miss the day solo trips, too. But those are also the kind of things that you can do <clears throat> if you're in the situation where you have a partner, a, you know, wife, girlfriend, whatever. Um, those are the kind of things that you can, you know, especially if she's down, that you can do that kind of broken bow type shit, you know, stuff. Like That's a that. fucking good time too, man. It's yeah, but we've also got there's a tons of tons of places uh, south of us. Like there's so much of Central Texas is really nice. That's not. The hill country and the hill country may have some of the you know real more, more postcard views and stuff, but there's a lot of central Texas like don't sleep on it. You know, as you're going through like Temple and Colleen, it's not much right there on the interstate, but it also doesn't take much to get off of that and find some really cool places. So, um, yeah, the two three day like I said weekend trips, you know, long long Saturday trips. That's what I want to get back to. We need to do that. We need to stop talking because we've been talking about this for years. Yep. Let's. We need to just do some shit. Remember, we, we like I know local coyote was not necessarily the situation. Like I've, I know we've talked about it so many times on the podcast, but like we just get a little ruined by some of the trips that we take that we don't pay no mind to this smaller like Texas based trips or even like a like you know landed up there said like a West Texas three day run to do a Quanter Parker Trail that'd be. That'd be badass. Sick, or do some dude. Bonnie Bonnie and Clyde shit. Go out to fucking Shreveport like we did at the goddamn Polar Ride. The Polar Ride was such a ex- success the first year. A lot of people slept on it the, the this year. Yeah. Um, that I feel like those are the kind of things that really bring people together. But uh, Oklahoma City is a good fucking time, dude. We had a blast up there. And everybody that chose not to go to Oklahoma City because it was a little bit further than – it's like y'all missed out. That shit was a blast. Yes. Oklahoma City has Same a distance, fucking like. gang of good ass, solid ass dudes up there that are down to fucking ride and good party. Bars too. Well, on top of like in, in the same spirit as, as some of this, uh, maybe not necessarily even as big as the three day thing. You and I come back from nitty gritty to Trumper City last or the last time we went. Yeah, where we took the side roads like three Texas. Like we stopped that little. We we found this like it's not a town, dude. It's I wouldn't even call it a community. There's, it's. <laughs> It was like a little volunteer fire department and like a house, and then it was something else. But it was my mother's maiden name, like on this sign, like somewhere like little nowhere, Texas. And fucked it up. Went back around, took a picture with the bike in front of it. Just dumb shit. But yeah. that was a fucking, you know, stopping at the place for the burgers. Like, yeah. 
those are some of the best rides uh, I've done it coming back from Houston events. That's some of the, you know, people sleep on the Houston events. It's not just about supporting them and whatever. Yeah. Some of the best part of that is even if you have to blast down there, if you can if you can take your time at least one of the ways there, it's worth it. Go if you don't have to take the interstate. If you've got the time to just dick around, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. It's you do. All the so stations fun. a fucking blast. If you want to, if you need a town to party Dude, in, I've lived there. I've lived there. Tell me, let's go. Any fucking time. That's that's what I've been sleeping on hard for a long time. And I've got a good friend that lives down there, so like house yeah, a couple too. Yeah, yeah that is has his shit together. He's on a he's not into motorcycling, but dude, that he's the, in the drinking. Uh, oh, party. Dude, yeah, he's a partner. He would love to have us, and that's uh, That'd he. Help kind of facilitate the me the the first time I had sex when I lost my virginity. <laughs> he was it kind of happened because of him. He had a car, and uh, he was like, he'd had sex a bunch of times. I can't believe I'm telling this story, but it's fucking cool as shit. Um, he was like, hey dude, he called me. He was like, uh, my mom's out of town or something. I've got the car. He was like, I got a good one for you guys. He's like, do you want to? He's like, you got anybody? Like. Whatever it takes, I got you. And I was like, getting you laid tonight, kind of kind like, of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I made a call. To this chick I was talking so dumb, dude. And yeah, went and picked her up from like the football game. Brought her, came back to the house, and just in the worst. Consent? The wor- oh, a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. Condom, condom. Yeah, nervous, Con- but just like condom. the worst. Like, ugh, like what? Uh, do y'all do y'all remember? First off, two two part question: <laughs> How old were you when you lost Virginia, and what song was playing? There's a good, uh, there's a good chance it was something by No Limit, like somebody on the No Limit roster. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, Those songs are only like two minutes long. <laughs> well, it would just, it would have been a CD. Um, and honestly, I don't, I, I don't it. know. Like it just like, they're old. And I I don't, yeah, I have no idea, honestly. Um, I was like, and as far as age, I don't know, fifteen, yeah. maybe fourteen. Yeah, I was. 15. 15? Yeah, I think so. I read some like you know I follow like these like on Instagram like random facts kind of thing and it said that the average male loses their virginity at 16 or 15 years old yeah. and the average fucking female nerds. is 17 hey yeah. fucking nerds i was dating an old chick then too yeah. So yeah that makes sense what about you kyle what was this do you remember the song don't don't tell me you had sex for the first time in your whole life to air like there no. has to be some kind of I, man i can't promise no, it was, I in, my, it was in my truck going. i had a bench seat truck old single oh, that cab sounds truck. I mean, dude, those days when you're young, you'll yeah. fucking whatever kind of, whatever, whatever. Like, if you had like, I don't a, think I had tote. any tent. I didn't have any tent on that truck either. It was just oh, we get it. Like you just, you know, you got there Why in that? West Texas, Why? and ain't nobody looking for you. Do you know uh, you're younger Texas. than I am? Do you know? Do you know what she's up to? Like, have you kept track? Like, are we all uh, Facebook friends or anything like that? I think we're Facebook friends. I think Ooh. she's married. Okay, but I want to say she's pregnant now. But we, yeah, but when you look back, but they're still like, back in yeah, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I don't. I've, I made the mistake of looking mine up one time on Facebook and just. I don't. I don't know. I just kind of. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while. Just I'm not. I don't like to. I guess when like you broke up and you're like, what? What's she doing? Oh no, yeah, I'm yeah. still. I want to stop her. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is weird. Well, there's That's a weird. difference just in that. Fuck it, let go. Dude. There's a difference in that, and every now and then she's gone. I wonder what old girl's up to. It well, just, okay, for just instance. Just running through to quick, see, see the most recent you're, you profile picture. You 38, right? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, for... Hey, take it easy. Take <laughs> it easy. For, for, like, essentially me and his age group, mm-hmm. uh, when we left high school, people went out into the ether. Like, there was no idea what people did in life. Right. And then all of a sudden, like, in 2004, MySpace comes along. It's kind of like that American Pie where... The well, Facebook popped up, but like it was that. only college. No, MySpace was in 2004. Facebook was 2008. Yeah. 2010. No, uh, Facebook was absolutely, like, 2004, 2005 at the absolute latest. Because it, it was a thing when I was in College Station, and I was there. Well, yeah, it was only in college at 2000. Well, yeah, but it was a thing. It was like but five it was, or six, but MySpace was already out. But, yeah, you had to have a college account, MySpace, but it was a, very much a thing in the... The, it was fucking fire for college kids, like people yeah. that were, which was our age, like our peers that were actually still in college, they all had it by like their sophomore, junior year-ish, and the ones that didn't have, or if you went to college, like that's the dumbest thing. If you paid to go to college, but your college wasn't cool enough to have a, to like be allowed on Facebook, um, yeah, it was very much a what the fuck. 
Yeah. And then, yeah, when it, once it went public, that might have been a couple years later, but it was absolutely a fucking thing on, like, 2004-2005. So, the reason I say it is because, like, for, you know, from I graduated in 01, and from 01 to 04, like, there's people I had no fucking clue what they did in their life. I had no idea. And that was the wildest thing, like, just having that, that was... Essentially, I was, like, one of the last generations to ever, like, have that feeling of knowing, right. like, when you, you know, it, it ruined the idea of a high school reunion. Okay. You know what I mean? Because a high school reunion was something, like, where you might have kept in touch with a couple people that you went to high school with, but then you go to the reunion and so-and-so and everybody came, like, oh, shit, so what'd you do with your life? But then you started seeing, like, everybody's life is on social media. Yeah. So you see it and there's no, like... There's no real big desire to go to this thing because yeah. you feel like you see all these people I, all the time still. I guess my, my tenure is coming up soon in 20, yeah. 2024. I have some people on Facebook, but they're, like, they're kind of like my personal like close friends. And then like the rest of them I just kind of didn't give a fuck about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you don't do anything for me. You don't. We don't talk every day. Then I really don't care. So in a way, I guess I'm excited for the tenure, but I just don't keep up with people like that on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Or anything really. Our generation is one of the last. We're in kind of. I look at it as a sweet spot. Whereas, I look. We kind of got the best of both worlds. Meaning, we grew up drinking out of the water hose, being sent outside to play all day. Um, you yeah, know, come back that. for lunch and come back for dinner. Like, uh, you could ride bikes. Ever. Like we were, the almost the last of like our pair. Like the you know, you fell down, brush it off. You know, like. The kind of tough, just eighties, nineties. Didn't spins. want the Sunday to end. Yeah, kind of thing, yeah. and it was cool, you know, just that 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 vibe, the play outside, the non technology kids. But we also came up in the time where we did get video games, like maybe not the very earliest ones, but dude, we got some pretty sweet ones. So we had that. It only got more as you got more of an adult. Uh, we were kind of the last generation to go through high school without cell phones and social media. It happened right the fuck after us. Um, but yet we were young enough to still be able to take part in it and that kind of stuff. We were young enough to be able to go on blind dates and just meet people old school ways and through friends. But yet we we're also of the age where we could take advantage of dating apps and the internet and stuff like that. And- so man, I look at it as we're we're kind of this, kind of this catch Pop. yeah this catch genera- generation like I said there's very there's I'd have to look at there's a paper or something that's been written about it where catch generation is a good one where yeah where we like I said kind we really do weight, have but. you know there's stuff I can fuck with some dude that was born in the seventies and we have a similar growing up about you know things were obviously a little bit more wild in his day or whatever but as far as riding your bike around town and just so many similarities in that where I. would I cannot relate to kids that were born in like the mid nineties on how they grew up because by the time they played outside, it was just a, di- you know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh so I look at it as we're, I look at it as extremely lucky because I can, I can kind of, I, everything I can do, you, think you do, it, but you probably maybe not be able to do what I do. You think it's once a, uh... <laughs> here's a hot take. Get boys up. <laughs> do you think it's how you had to find porn defines how you are in life? Oh shit! Run that back for me one more time. For sure, two thousand four. I was a sophomore in college, becoming a my yeah yeah became my incoming freshman scouting tool. <laughs> so no, uh, what I'm saying is like no rape culture in college whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know what people are talking about. The way that we had to find and 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 I guess air quotes enjoy porn that dictates a difference in the way we are as people, right? Like we all we all enjoy it the same way now. But when we were kids, it was different than like, you know, my my brother, for an example, right? You know, he never had to go, you know, he never walked through a woods and found that random tote full of fucking nudie magazines. That's another example, <laughs> perfect yeah. example of my analogy. Where the last, like, one of the last ones we got, you found that Playboy buried under the gravel, underneath the slide at the playground or, you know, in the yeah. woods. There's like a string hanging out. You got to pull. Or, or your friend's dad had a Playboy. And yeah. just, dude, all you needed was one magazine. You know what I mean? Like, we knew that. But, yeah, we also have the ability of mobile phone or whatever where there's some kids that grew up on the I, – I can't imagine that, dude. I look at shit now. I'm just like – Maybe it's me getting older, but I'm like, dude, what is the agenda they're pushing with all this step? And I'm not trying to make a joke or anything, but just like, 
Like, there's got to be something. Like, I've never, it's never been maybe the stepmom thing, but even then, that's kind of weird. She fucks your dad, right? Like, why, why would you want to fuck? That's gross. What is the fucking agenda? Why is there so much step porn? But I'm I'm in my 30s by the time this is going on. So yeah. I'm able to go, dude, what the fuck's going on? Imagine if you're fucking 13, 14, early 20s. Like, you're still developing. And it, I don't, god damn, dude. I hate to sound like, oh, man, you know, what are they going to do? But fuck, what happens when this generation, get, you know, just like, I don't know. Because it's weird. It freaks I me found, the fuck out, right? I found all my porn drawn on the bathroom stalls at Walmart. Like, with dick pics? Oh, I was talking shit. Why are you at Walmart be looking at? It's supposed to be funnier than it was. My <laughs> this guy's in his own world. Dude, there was like one, like, there was one videotape that was in our house that was a, a porn. Yeah. I still remember it today. Yeah. Because there's a couple spots. I was like, that's my spot. I think <laughs> for my generation, I mean, I'm still a millennial. I'm a late millennial. Um, what year? I was born in 96. Okay. Yeah, you're last year. Yeah. I'm first year. You're because Jess was born in '95. Yeah. And '82 is the first year of millennials. Yeah. So yeah. I'm a, I'm a, like late at the end, but I do remember still like riding bikes, you know, broken. Dude, I've been everything. jerking off longer than you've been alive. You remember like, <laughs> like, you remember, like making ramps, like yes, with like, a couple yeah, yeah, spare yeah. tires yeah, and yeah, yeah. a particle board. But I also just... remember when this this shit this shit came into like. A big effect. Yeah. And that was kind of so, like late middle school, early high school. Yeah, without pulling the curtain back too much, what was your first exposure to pornography? Like, for real, was it a, ma- like I had a older brothers. magazine? I had older brothers. So, so they passed you down like a mag Two or older brothers. Uh, Maybe one, but I remember was like a I one opened up our out. desktop, our, our, our computer. Like See, that's we, the thing. It's we like we're sharing yeah, a computer. computer have computer you ever had shop? to jerk off to a magazine? Yeah, I think so. Dude, that's I, I don't know. I miss those too days. Long answer on yeah, that. I miss those days. I had to think about. It. I mean, it's just not. It was a simpler time. Yeah. that's for sure. You, you had to use time. your imagination, dude. Yeah. You had to be creative. You had to be like jerking oh. off to magazines. Now it's just hipster shit. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like listening to a record player. <laughs> yeah. We get it. <laughs> like, you use videos, dude. We, oh, yeah. Man, that's a fucking good one. There, he finally <laughs> redeemed himself with the joke. <laughs> yeah, my jokes have been hot. You guys just suck. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had he's warming up. He's warming up. I had my old brothers to kind of you know. Yeah. Show the ways and stuff like that, and kind of, I guess I uh, hang out with a lot of older people too, is because I have older brothers and stuff. Just kind of, I don't know. It it was it was. I definitely remember when phones were, I, the thing, and Facebook was the thing, and yeah. MySpace was the thing, and, but I got only into MySpace because I was racing motocross, and my sponsorships wanted me to have MySpace. Mm. And that was the only reason I had one. They're like, hey, we need you to make a MySpace. And I was like, what's this? And Went to a spot all that. We get it. You're rich. <laughs> I was just saying, I'm not rich at all, but <laughs> that dude. was that was an interesting life. So you know what the worst part was as a kid, trying to jerk off to real sex on HBO was the worst because it was never like sex. I it just was like girls going wild. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah that was cool, but that was just like tits. <laughs> but no, like real sex was like some fucking taxi cab confessions type bullshit. Like, yeah, it was like it was never. It was not what you were looking yeah. for at that age. Nah, I'm look. Hey, I just need to see a titty, dude. Right. You know. Okay. It's all I need. So it was like it was like it was like porn with like a real backstory. No, like, no, no. It was like it was more like fetish type stuff. Like yeah, people we're talking okay. about. Yeah, people in their thirties that are trying to keep. Yeah, it was some, and, and a form of murder porn, like South Park. You know. <laughs> I've never anyway. talked to South Park uh, either, but I want to hear it. Oh, <laughs> I want to hear about it. <laughs> Jesus. Well, uh, I've, I'm on record for saying it on the podcast. I used to fucking jerk off the Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> Hell yeah. Because it was that or Baywatch. They were came on like right after each other when I was a kid. I wish I could have grown up with like Pamela Anderson. Oh, I dude. I, I Barbed wire. Fucking. I never got to see the sex tape like when I was a kid. But uh, definitely. But Tommy and yeah. Pam. You know that they were the first sex tape thing. Did out you there. Did you watch the? I want to see it. What's uh, it on? Hulu. It's on Hulu. I don't have Hulu. Oh, uh, Jenny, Jenny I'm gonna have to slide. Jenny McCarthy was the she, shit. I'm gonna have to slide for me. My, my Hulu. Mine was Hulu. Jenny McCarthy, Carmen Electra, Electra, oh, and yeah. uh, she's the only fans now, right? Uh, who? Uh, Carmen Electra. It was a big thing. So a couple months ago, I uh, I had a thing for Christina Aguilera, like in the TRL days. 
she had a video that just drove me insane and uh, in a good way. And then um, there's some, oh, I think, Man- I think Mandy Moore had one. This is before she went like, I think she's like born again Christian or something. Mm-hmm. Before she went that route, there was, um, <gasps> yeah, yeah, she used, to, she used to get it going for me. That used to be a point of, uh-oh, <laughs> let's get this You know what's weird? Quick. Think about it like this. Girls on that level, when we were younger in the 90s, there was only a few of them. And now, like, you have your Kim Kardashians and shit like that. That's but then they, there's so they many famous. girls on, like, on the on, on just my or Instagram and all this shit, right? Yeah. Where it's like, there was not like this, like, you had a Carmen Electra, you had a fucking Jenny McCarthy or well, a Pamela look, Anderson. Look, look, way back before that, Marilyn... Uh, Marilyn Monroe? Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, I almost said Marilyn Monroe. Farrah Fawcett. In the TRL days, you still didn't have... It may have been in the early days of the internet, some of it, but you didn't have access to... You know, you had Maxim Magazine and stuff like that, but you didn't have access to just this... The way Instagram makes it seem sometimes just that there's just... The world is filled with all these just absolutely perfect chicks or whatever the fuck. You didn't have all that, so there was something about the two of them that did it for me in that time where, like I said, whatever po- whatever spot they would come in, they would pop up in in the, in the top ten. Yeah. And sometimes I, I would get, I would go two, three. <laughs> I couldn't help it, man. It was just that age where, <laughs> yeah. And I've always skewed older when it comes Look, to like I got my, a lot of cum. So. <laughs> oh, my God. It needs to go somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I've always I'm skewed. a cum factory. <laughs> I've, I've always skewed older, like in my attraction to women, it, it's always been – towards older and those were like 15 16 17 year old days and those chicks came across as like mid 20s so another like weird thing older like just the all this the, the what's stuff that? that i still think about like 50 year olds now like what's that imagine one, when she one part me. porn star that, that's all the one porn star that i think she's recently not she retired but she was like the milk lisa, Mil- ann. lisa ann i got the jerk off to her when she was young <laughs> Straight up, dude. Like I remember seeing video, like VHS tips tapes of her in VHS there. VHS tits, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And then next yeah. thing you know, like she's retiring. Like I've seen the life cycle of porn stars. <laughs> I've lived through it. I've well, jerked off through it. Here you go. I think she's actually been one of the without without being like one of those like oh like talk about them like I'm. Where are we like hanging I'm out? Like, hey, where are we hanging but out? She, with- she has transitioned into like podcasts, and I think Who's she's that? yeah, yeah, Lisa, Lisa. Ann. And actually, you uh, know what? I say that I think she's made a recent dip back into porn, though. Like I, we're gonna, she I'm not going to talk about some of the other stuff. But I'm not going to say who we were talking to for a while. I'm not going to say who we were talking to, but while we were in California doing podcasts, remember one of our guests was talking about how mm-hmm. they know Tito Ortiz mm-hmm. and how off the rails Jenna, oh yeah, yeah McCarthy yeah. or Jenna Jameson went. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's <laughs> good conversation. I wish we could have got on the you podcast. You don't said too much. Yeah. <laughs> nah, no, but we did all these SoCal podcasts. How could they know who? They don't know. All they're going to do is listen to it and wait for the question. <laughs> they, we never talked about it on the podcast. I think it was afterwards. <laughs> I brought We're up. we about to find out. I brought up him on the podcast, and then we had an extra discussion once the mic's turned off. Do do y'all know the Texas Thighs mm-hmm. chick? Uh-uh. The Dell Street. I know of. I know. I think of what you're. Okay. It's like an Instagram, like thirst trap kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a pretty. She's like a real life mom or something. Yeah. yeah so that shit kind of grosses, like the like the thirst trap. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, I don't know, so. yeah. So uh, fuck off. So uh, I was doing military drill one weekend. It was just me because I'm the NCOIC, NCO is in charge, and uh, I'm closing out this building and like these kids. It's it's like this silver. Civil Air Force Patrol, it's like little kids like get to do Air Force shit, but they're not part of the Air Force. Yeah. And this one mom comes up to me. She's like, hey, can I use the restroom? Like, I just need to use the restroom. I was like, yeah, just hurry up and use it real quick. She's looking at me. I'm looking at her, and I'm like, do I know you? <laughs> like, she looks at me like all weird, like, don't say it. Do not say it. I'm like, man, you look familiar. I was like, have we met? Before? She was like, no. I was like, oh, okay. And then, like, after she left, I was like, damn it. I know that chick. And I was like, oh, my God. This chick does OnlyFans, and her kid's fucking here doing the fucking camp. I was like, damn, dude. You almost had a chance for her to uh, piss on your face. <laughs> no, and I was like, damn. I was like, I bet she was like, do not say this shit out loud in front of everyone. I'm, a, You know dude, what That's I mean? where you like, negotiate a, but, fuck, a fuck a fan scenario. No. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to out her. 
So you have a bathroom? I was like, yeah. I was like, damn. You have a bathroom? Yeah, it's right here in my mouth. I was like, this is crazy. Oh man! It was like the only small, but I was like, the only local, only fans, porn star, chick that matters is Throatzilla. <laughs> she lives here in Dallas. Yeah, she used to suck all the football players' dicks. She's one that out <laughs> like Cowboys. Yeah. yeah well, there's who was it that she outed? L- Lyle Collins. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he plays here anymore. But yeah, she she famously did uh, service him, and he never paid her, so she like yeah. put him on blast. And I, yeah, I watched her. Was, I watched her Instagram stories since then, and it's just her sucking dick off camera. Yeah, but I think <laughs> it's just I sounds of her <laughs> sucking dick. <laughs> And she sucks with a ski mask on. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, we know it's you. Uh, it's uh, a yeah. yeah, throatzilla. If you want to look that up on <laughs> All Instagram, one word. yeah, it's out there. And it actually that may be like some Twitter. She may have actually like a Twitter account because Twitter's the Wild Wild West. Oh, that was on Instagram. Like, okay, no, well, no, I was saying off. Like she was off dude. camera. I think she. Uh, it was in the dark. You I, just saw like a head bob, and that when was she outed <laughs> when she outed Lyle Collins about not only it was not only for not paying her. But I think she had outed him for like love and having his booty licked. Like I think he yeah, had, uh, yeah, yeah. So she uh, she went full scorched earth <laughs> yeah. for, like, for like three hundred bucks or four hundred bucks <laughs> or something. Like Jesus Christ, dude, you're an NFL player. Like, oh, you deserve every bad thing that happens to you. you just yeah, this fucking lady. Wow. Her name is Throatzilla for the love of Christ. <laughs> yeah, right? What do you expect? When you get an Airbnb, she has a service on there. Like, hey, if you want to, you been coming to Dallas, check out this service. It's Throatzilla. Throatzilla. <laughs> I didn't know. I've never uh, ordered an Airbnb before, and I just did last night for this little vacation me and wife are doing. And after we fucking booked it all, there was, like, all these, like, local services yeah. for hiking and all this shit. Guidance, dude. You yeah. Could, you could buy a guide. Yeah, you guide, all guide. kinds of shit. Dragging the guide. Oh, for like a... Oh, you're RB coming to Dallas? Sure. You want somebody to show you around and show you what to <laughs> yeah, do? Yeah, dude. Sounds like it could be dangerous. How about my motorcycle, dude? I'll take you, I'll show you around all the cool that spots. Dude. I got my Duke sucking in that bar bathroom right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe dumb shit. My name yeah, is... we'll do the Deep Bell Trail of Tears. <laughs> 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 every, every time I came in public. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it was by yourself. <laughs> yeah, so this is Trees. <laughs> This, so the special thing about trees is I've vomited and thrown up and came in that place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, green room? Yeah. You don't want to know about green room. <laughs> tell me. You got to tip me to tell me about oh, that. Oh, man. Why is it so entertaining to talk about shit like this? It always, I don't know. It always comes back to I feel to like it, every, every quaint zone time. we end up talking about OnlyFans. Comes. That's what it's uh, for. It's a quaint zone. This is a quaint. This is a T bar crew. No, T bar crew. Oh, uh, yeah. T bar Tuesdays at 8 Bells. Show up. 7 ah, p.m. Man. That's a good plug. Except next time, sit with your chest. Yeah, you think Montucky's still interested if they hear this podcast? I don't think, I don't think we've talked about anything know, bad. Man. I doubt they even listen. I doubt, yeah. I doubt yeah, they even listen. They're, they're they're do, woke people, do woke people jerk off? Do you think they're skiing? Yes. Skiing they, podcast? Yes, they're the worst. You know what they jerk off to? Porn where people were. People say the N word. Like they jerk off like the worst shit. Like Hitler porn. It's, it's Cody. <laughs> yeah, Big Wilk. <laughs> they jerk off to porn where it's like some dude dressed up like Hitler and he's having sex with like Holocaust. Like, uh, did you see like, the Bill Burr? Where he's having sex. Don't say. It. You're saying a lot of words that are definitely gonna. What get I'm just saying, like he's, but like woke people, like the ones that that oh I'm so virtuous. They're the fucking worst people. It's like the same dudes that are like oh I hate gays. Don't like the what is it the. Pottsboro, Westboro Baptist Church, like those cocksuckers. Those girls are dudes that are like closet, just they, they are what they hate kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's my whole point on it is the woke people are the fucking worst degenerates ever. Yeah. I, I mean, believe it. Well, they're I'm an living, ally, so. They're living in a fucking, oh, fuck you. You know, <laughs> you're no ally to anybody. <laughs> except a fucking buffet. A Judas. You fat fuck. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> Yo, hey, y'all say you're a Whataburger? I'm on my way. <laughs> say no more, fam. Yeah. You've ever seen the glory hole in these places? What places are you talking about? What are you talking about, Dijon? Uh, but speaking of glory hole, I was watching something on uh, Netflix. It's called Blown Away. It's about, like, glass blowing. Just one of those dumb reality shows, like, metal. You know, there's a thousand of them. It's just about glass stuff. I mean, one of the, equi- one of the pieces of equipment they use in in glass blowing is called a glory hole and just every time they fucking refer to it 
I guess I'm forever 14. I can't, I can't not laugh. Like, they're, like, they're like, I got to get this back in the glory hole. Just I can't. I hear that term. I don't give a fuck what context it is. I'm picturing a hole where somebody's sticking their dick through it and waiting for something to happen on what the other side. What was it like Euro Trip or not Euro Trip, uh, Road Trip? No, what was that? Sex Drive with the glory hole? I'm thinking of a scary movie. Yeah, where it went through his ear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what head. I'm thinking of too. Yeah, yeah. What happened to those kind of comedies like Sex Drive, uh, Scary Movie, fucking Euro Trip? Uh, hell, even American Pie back Dude, in the there day. Was some, offended the people. Comedies? Offended people. Just no, comedies in no, general. It's not, like, it's real not offended comedy. people or anything like that. It's it, You can create that shit on fucking TikTok. You're talking in about a the minute. spoof like, ones, though, right? Like Scary TikTok, Movie was a spoof. Well, Scary um, Movie's a spoof, but I'm, like Euro Trip and, uh, and Sex Drive. Sex Drive. You're talking about stuff like Van Wilder, American Pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wilder, such I'm telling you, it's. It's I, I, I say TikTok. It's podcasting. It's fucking Instagram. It's TikTok. It's released so much more, like so many more funny people than those movies ever did. Not that they weren't funny back then, but it was just like the only way you consume stuff was through a movie. Nowadays, you can keep. There's so many motherfuckers that are funny as fuck. There's, there's something to that. There's something, but you know, the like you know? Amer- the, the um, a quote from American Pie would be everybody would just wear it the fuck out. Then, right, but now you've got viral. You, now you're the kid at school thunder. saying all the fucking American yeah, now fucking it's, you jokes. Got dorks like this saying like city boys and stuff, and uh, you just can't city keep boys. up with it. <laughs> city boys up, city boys up. <laughs> Dragons in the house, bitch. <laughs> I'm named Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> that one is my favorite. That was funny as hell. <laughs> there was a dude. What was the um? Hope they serve beer. So I don't right, know. Kyle's all right. I'm get ready. Kyle's gonna rip me in. Uh, he's gonna kick me in the crotch. The I don't know if I've seen the actual movie. I hope they serve beer in hell. But the book's fucking great. Book is cry. At least when I read it, it was like some parts of it were cry laughing funny. By yourself in your house, you read shut a up, book, you, you fucking <laughs> nerd. I just don't know how many times I've laughed at words. <laughs> yeah, <I've> never. <laughs> Well, if you can read fast enough, and where, where, where it all still makes sense, then it's awesome. I had to restart be, like six times. Yeah. yeah. I, I lost if, the joke. Yeah. If you don't have to, oh, it's a joke. If you don't have to sound it the fuck out, then guess what? It can be really entertaining. Fuck me for reading. Oh, man. You read all those books, you're still retarded. <laughs> Oh, Never man. go full retard. <laughs> all right, all right, we got enough of it. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're saying the R word. Come on, man. Uh, how many we get? <laughs> uh, it's been wild, but there's just even even I don't know. Like, do you do you feel like you notice changes in society faster than it felt like when we were younger? Maybe we were so in, ingrained in so much other things going on that we didn't really notice society changing the way it. I guess it's more obvious now or maybe it just is very obvious does that make sense yeah i i think about that sometimes like with styles and how we like wear clothes now and stuff like that and how society oh. and like shit even the motorcycles you can see the 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 change in when i remember when occ choppers was a big thing and just james and all those choppers and then the big big wheel baggers and then oh, now yeah. you know what i mean of, of how society world, though, but. i know but like I just kind of referred to that and like certain eras and remembering that, but like even just social media, just how fast it changes sometimes, you know, like the reels, the reels that have only been around for a year. Mm, has it been a year? Or is it two years now? It's been two years. It's been two years. Cause Daytona, not this past Daytona, the so Daytona, a year and a half. Don't the mind. Daytona that I wrote down with Jetty and Jones, that was the year they popped out. That was the one where, where to, you know, who I get the credit to, Sit Down Steve was doing one every fucking day, and it set the fucking, like, I was there, set the standard. partying hey. my fucking balls off, and I was Sit watching those Steve. going, dude, I gotta, we're, I gotta, I gotta find these guys, like, they're having the most fun, obviously, um, <laughs> boy. um but yeah, it was, uh, so two years ago, at least I feel like in our scene is when the reels really yeah. took fire, because once... I feel like Steve kicked the fucking door off the hinges with those, and after that, it was game on. And like I said, there's a bunch of motherfuckers that should have never done one, but 
It is what it is. You can't say. So have you have you watched any of like that concrete cowboy stuff? That like uh, I'm a big fan of that actually. Like yeah, the Junker um, Kitty one was yeah pretty legit. So I haven't seen. I've only seen some of the clips of it. So what's your thoughts on like that? So I'm not totally caught up to date. There was a point where I think he might have had four of them out, three of whatever he had out. I watched them like back to back. You know, like I I ran through all of them. I was like, oh fuck, I'm waiting on them. And I know then I think we ran into the trip. So he's had a couple. I know I saw one just the other day where they were. Uh, I think in Nashville. Dude, dude it looked um, like a fucking blast. Like I said, I'm on record. I've always been a big fan of those dudes. Um, I think it's a their, uh, just the writing skill sometimes gets underrated to be able to do all that stuff. Um, I think they don't utilize. <laughs> we've talked about it. If those guys could figure out, to, figure out a way to do what the fuck we do, but you roll with some some people that can get footage like like Jay and uh, or Josh some two light some two lane footage two lane quality footage of those guys on a trip it feeds into the concrete cowboys as far as them traveling and it's a little bit of a behind the scenes and you feel you know it's it's just a more intimate more of a close thing connectability thing than you get from the reels and from any post you can get it's just a little bit, you know, you see them in the morning waking up. You see them in the hotel fucking with the, the – taking a poop in front of each other. The stuff, you know, that we do, <laughs> the stuff that people like. I don't the, do that. The friendship. Oh, no. we, I'm talking about Steve taking a dump in front yeah, of you. Yeah. Man. But the – they – it's selling that aspect of it more, and it's one of those things where I'm about it because it, it fucking works. And what they do on the bikes, and they already – they get sick footage. What they do is insane. But, I mean, like, awesome. Like, it's good. Um and if, dude, if they could just, I feel like, transition that into, like, a traveling tour, which is kind of what it, this seems like it's doing. Traveling tour and not to be without its, uh, oh, we broken primary, you know, not to be without its drama moments or yeah, adversity yeah. moments. But, dude, sit, you know, stuff like, I'm sure they've done a trip to Mexico, but what, like, Juan does with his boys where they blast into Mexico. But they do, well, like I said, a trip what we do. They roll through a. A Missoula, do you think you get it on the right time? And we turn fucking all the heads. So let me ask you this: the gang of bikes, painted bikes. Those dudes come in, a couple of them with the bikes they have, and you blast a couple of wheelies, and you get the right footage. And dude, you go to time where they, 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 whatever it is, they bring those chicks out. Wherever the fuck they are, it seems like they bring out these chicks that don't fuck with, like that don't ever come out around us. So man, well, let me ask you this: like, what we do, our trips. Sorry. Set this one out. Um, <laughs> what we do, we go on these trips. If we had a camera crew with us, do you think that we would lean in more and be a little bit less of who we really are for the camera? And I'm not, I'm not saying this has any kind of jab towards them. I'm just saying, like, introspectively, like, thinking about us as a group and how we are. Because I know damn well if, a, you know, my ego and shit like that, if, like, there was a camera crew out there every night, I'd be out there like, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just like, you know. So, yeah, I think it just like anything. Yeah, go ahead and leave. We, we would get better at, um, <laughs> you know, maybe we would get better at looking cool, getting off the bikes. Maybe we get better at little sayings, walking like cool shit like that. You don't fucking, you're not cool, dude. But ultimately, there's a, um, <laughs> we can't do what they do. You know what I mean? As far yeah. as the bikes and what they do on the bikes, and that comes with a certain swag. Like I said, there's a certain way that I just pictured them getting it, getting that stuff for dude. It would be sick. So I agree that no, no, hundred percent. Like them doing willies and that shit, we can't do that, and I ain't trying to do that. But the party and stuff. But the party and shit, like, I mean, they go hard. We could turn it up a little bit. Oh well, in that aspect, yes, we could sell. We could do the 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 fucking cool drinking montages and. We can dump the. We can make it look fucking wild as fuck. No, I mean for, just like if you know, like some wild shit, like what they're doing, and you know, like I. What I'm saying is this: like what I'm saying is they need. We I feel like a. Collab- He's trying to get drafted right now. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying right. we need to join forces like Voltron. Let us show them some traveling ropes. Let them show us some. Uh, I don't care. About I don't that. know. Yeah. Well, oh, it'd be fun, dude. I'm just wondering because uh, Kyle probably wouldn't make the cut. We have to pull the cool ones. We've been talking about it a lot. It's it's, <laughs> it's you, me, Cody. <laughs> it's uh, it's come up a lot recently, and I, as 
I really want to do a trip where we do have a film crew following us and we are making a real more or less docu series about our travels. And, you know, I, I, uh, there's an aspect to it that if you really capture it, it, it could, it can, um, I think it can be very inspiring for people because I don't feel like we, we would party any harder than any other American out there. Like any other dude out there was, they'll do it too. If they give, if they're given the opportunity, like they don't have to go to work tomorrow, they're on their bike, they're with their, they're in a comfortable space. Like fuck, they're gonna let it hang out. You know what I mean? And call it Boys Gone Wild. <laughs> boys Gone Wild. <laughs> yeah. Boys Gone Wild tour was a good bus. <laughs> Hogs Gone Wild. Go around and show each other's people shut our balls. <laughs> I don't know. Thinking about it. No, I, I, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking at the thrashing picture as always. Oh. Usually, if I if I get distracted looking that way, that's what it is. <laughs> it's just such a happy picture. It's got a diet in it. I love it. He picked up that chick at the bar. I hope so. She uh, has those homegrown titties up there. Take it easy. You know, say that. Yes, they are though. That's some I fucking corn fit titties. There's not a, a camera on it. So at least something's in the mystery. <laughs> we should put one dedicated tam- camera to the thrash picture the, every now and, and then. Every, yeah. But that's camera uh, four. <laughs> no, she'll start wanting royalties or something. Yeah, we get demonetized for sure. But no, I I I, uh, I feel like there would be a put like this with as many different dudes in our crew as we have. Um, the dynamic of like why one dude doesn't want to go out tonight or this dude or whatever. Like, you could definitely make some kind of like video or or, or show out of us right we're none of us are hating each other but you know you can lean into it for the camera aspect like oh i just man i just want to sit in this hot tub tonight and fucking they don't want to go watch netflix these dudes want to fucking party every night i don't want to party and then cut scene over there just fucking raging shotgun and beers you yeah, know that's, that's a dumb shit like a sitcom or whatever like a drama series but i'm saying we could do like i said minus the wheelies and stuff Dude, we could do every wheelies bit. only. We could do Jayden. every bit of a traveling. You say like your your uh, camera crew, as far as a partying, making each stop look like a fucking scene. So that's the thing. Like you know, a lot of these guys are up here are saying right now on the, on the chat there, like they're they're referencing these other YouTubers out there that do stuff, and like I don't want to do anything like that. Like I don't want to do yeah. that. And I think that that's why I've had such a hard time, like, going into that space is I don't want to do that. I don't want our shit to look like anybody else's. I want to I yeah. want to be in, in a natural place where you have other people filming you, not you filming yourself, if that makes sense. No no, no disrespect to anyone. but No disrespect to any dudes of those guys. dudes that they're talking about are dudes that are like, hey, this is how you wash your bike. Hey, man, this is how you ride a Harley Davidson motorcycle. This is how you pick up your bike when you drop it. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Um, how about we do some real shit and, like, if you can't figure it out on your own, then you should be on fucking bikes. But, well, just also, the, I mean. Just, like, traveling and, and, and videos of, of how we get to go out and stuff like that and how different it is. It's yeah. not like everyone's experience, you know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain sometimes because it is. We it can is tell. very different. <laughs> Thank you. Drink more whiskey. Yeah. I'm, about, I'm about to get. I'm about to kill it. Fuck it now. All right. <laughs> Atta boy. There's a no. There's there's a lot of really great YouTube channels out there, and uh, I've always said this is the only thing that I want to do differently is I don't I don't want to make YouTube videos for YouTube. I want to make YouTube videos for people that that want to know what it's really like. Yeah. And that means, like, I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not trying to promote anything. I'm just... I'm not getting a free Indian bike. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Carrie Hart? You talking shit about Carrie Hart? Who? Hey! <laughs> okay. That's my favorite... <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite uh, Trayism this podcast. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who that? Who goes there? <laughs> Who that? <laughs> Who, Who there? <laughs> oh, man. Kyle, you didn't get to hear any of your like uh, recap of of the trip. What what was your favorite part about it, or what was your what stands out? Man, I hate these questions because it's like it's all such a good fucking you trip. Think? But like, it's um, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna say fucking Idaho just because it was such a sleeper. But I mean, everyone's heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Man, I don't know. Um, Did you go out in uh, McCall? Dude, I went everywhere. <laughs> oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, Johnny Cash. Yeah, McCall was dope. McCall was a fun little. I forget who it was. I think it was me, Jaden, and Cody. Chance and, and Chance. Uh, I think Larry came out that night too. Yeah, right? he did actually. Yeah, because that's right. Because we ended up at that uh, behind beside the mill bar after that, which is yeah, just like yeah. some like a circus bar. It was weird. I watched cool Netflix that night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and Franson. Well, Franson was feeling like shit. Yeah, up. he was like shitting himself or something like that. Yeah, and then um, diarrhea is a thing. I think Jacob was out, <laughs> but no, it was um, it was a fun. That was a fun little town. No, that, that one was like. Surprisingly popping that night just for being like yeah, a, a, a weekday and a fucking it's like a Monday night or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a that place was cool though. McCall was cool. Twin Falls was really fun. We had a great time in Twin yeah, Falls. Yeah, y'all all that split. All y'all look yeah, I'm I'm I, I hit them. I Twin Falls and Salt Lake were the Salt two Lake, that yeah. I really like it would have been awesome to see Saxes like uh like integration into Salt Lake City now because he seems I mean from the outside looking in it seems like he's like he's in the end with everybody that's yeah. anybody there I mean he's definitely got the little fast pass going there um, yeah we went to the uh, it's called the garage maybe or something like that I can't remember the name of the bar we went to but it's like the local like kind of like truck yard um, is it on the north side of uh, Salt Lake yeah I think we went to it with the the other guys yeah the first time they said it yeah they, they were there okay um, um Fuck, why am I blanking on their uh, their name? The guys that are up there in Salt Lake, brain, brain farting. Tucker? Yeah, Tucker Speed. Yeah. There you go. See, I guess I don't. I always want to say TVJ, but I know it's I know it's Tucker Speed. But yeah, hung out with the Tucker Speed guys there, and then uh, went to this like honky tonk bar after that, and then and ultimately ended up back at the hotel. But uh, it was a good night. That yeah. was a good fucking. That's a fun town for sure. It is. Wish you had more time, you know. I've never got the party there though. Like, the relationship with Tucker Speed has kind of evolved after that right. time that we went there the first time, and of course with with Sax up there now, it would it would be cool to go see his thing. Yeah, I appreciate Tucker Speed. Oh yeah, yeah, they helped me get a lot of my parts from the bike. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, homeboy has his same blue Dyna or blue uh, saw tails. Me, fucking chrome the fuck out too. Hmm. Whole frame and everything done. Oh. I showed Maybe up. And I was like, "Damn!" I had the wheels. He had the he had the frame. That's what it was. Ooh. He's a stock wheels, but he's like looking for some. I guess. But I went the same bullshit as me with the chromer too. So, you should have uh, pulled out your penises. We much. parked next to each other and docked. <laughs> well, I was gonna say have a no. Have a it's gonna suck. Whatever you say. I know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mister Humility over here. <laughs> okay, keep keep your secrets then. <laughs> Hey, where'd you get that uh, that bottle opener? <clears throat> uh, what does it say on it? From my president. <laughs> what does it say on it? Can you show the camera? Show the audience? Uh, doesn't matter. None of them the are... The late re- none of them John are, Teller gave. None of them are Reaper material anyways. <laughs> uh, no, this is part of our... So so I grabbed it off the thing. I saw it earlier. Uh he gave it the, the, the Jace uh, when we did the podcast. You see my Reaper, my uh, Men of Mayhem? Yeah. Thing? <laughs> yeah, that's the patch I was saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so dope. Dude, like, I, I definitely want to put it on my. Show, it, show the... Hell yeah, it's brothers. There. Hell yeah. I always, I always get a kick of when I see someone at Strokers with that. The son of the Anarchy cut. Yeah, but that's... Are they still the, doing that? That's the real one from the show. Like, those oh, are yeah. the ones, like, on the stuff you see on TV, those are the actual you ones. You see, uh, Seabear was on left. Mayans? Yeah. Uh, Mayans dealing, like, burnouts and shit? <coughs> no way. Yes, yes, wait, Jace. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. You mean you didn't let him talk? <laughs> no, no. I finished Mayans. That shit was good. It got good. Yeah. It really got good. I... I hate to say it, but I really enjoy it. I don't, I don't hate, know why. I don't even I hate to do. say that. It's a fucking good ass show. I think. I think. Uh, God, I'm gonna sound like a fucking nerd. But fuck it. Uh, the character development and individually and like their personal bikes and that the fact that everyone really rides in that show. I like that a lot. You know what I mean? How do you know they really ride? Uh, behind the scene cuts, and then like everyone has their own bikes. Like more of a fan than you. Yeah. 
okay. So <laughs> <He's a just laughs> quit yelling. He's gonna check his knowledge. Yeah. I believe if he says if he says that, that's fine. I I haven't done some like, some dudes in there are legitimately like I haven't done the, the fan dive on and actually whatever, like so. use some of the shops that we know. Okay. So I appreciate. I that. knew one that, dude that to me speaks more volumes. Than I knew like, one of the dudes wore Dixon flannels. Other than that, I didn't know any of them actually rode. So yeah, if you're telling me they do, rode. if you're telling me they do, then that's news to me. But I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. No, most of them actually really ride. And actually, I say own Harleys. I say that because um, the Sons of Anarchy dude don't. I found out some of the Sons of Anarchy dudes like. There was some stuff put out at one point that made it seem like a lot of those guys, like actually ride or whatever, and they don't really. No. Like a handful Most of them were the giving bikes, dudes. and there was some PR stuff, some yeah. events that they did, but none. Of, there's like I said, very few of them that actually took to riding or whatever. So, no. because the show is still going on, it wouldn't surprise me if something was put out that like, oh yeah, these dudes all ride, but really no, no. they they actually have their own personal customized Harleys. Okay. The mines. Oh, okay. We're talking yeah. about the mines, Joe. There, yeah, there's there's no way that some dealership would have given them one that's personally no, customized. No, no, no. They, they they'll they, have just like we heard stories of for three years that they'll do certain stuff. Then guess what? It'll go back and. Well, there's there's a there's a couple people in that show. I don't really know, like the main character. I don't know if he really rides, but uh, I'm uh, not sure. But you know, obviously the president. No, he doesn't ride. That motherfucker's an actor. He does yeah. not ride motorcycles. There's a handful of them that do, and I've I've seen them like, I guess Dirtbag out of like SoCal has a shop that yeah, they've been doing. Yeah, that guy he built the the Coco dude. The Coco dude, yeah, yeah his he, bike. He has like a badass little. Uh, was it not a dime? Obviously, uh, the Robert Patrick, and he has small parts in it, but he's obviously a biker. He's been for years. Yeah. Uh, Booze Fighter owns like Santa Clarita Harley and all that shit. Yeah. Um, I think Co owns. Probably. I yeah. mean, yeah. Most of them do, right? Yeah, my exactly. co-owner people. I'll take away some of the liability. But uh, I don't know, man. Like, that's all. It's entertainment. That's all it is. Like, I think it's cool. Like, you and I walked away to go piss whenever you were talking about Seabear being in there. And if if these networks were smart, and they might be, let's just, uh, I'm not saying that they aren't, but. They would look at our culture, which is easy to figure out because it's on social media. You can check it out. Yeah. And you have guys like on there that, like, ties us into, like, fuck, yeah, we want to support Sea Bear. Yeah. So we'll watch it, even though, like, you know, there's all it's those a, guys that's like, like oh, yeah. this is a fucking, like, this ain't real biker shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Take it back to the beginning of this podcast, right? It's all entertainment. And yeah. anytime motorcycles are on TV, it's going to help all of us out. Yeah. So the more the merrier. I appreciate it. Like I said, I, I, I appreciate that there's still a motorcycle culture and there's guys riding motorcycles. Oh, that shit ain't going to go away whether they do it on TV or not. So, yeah. I mean, it still helps the cause. 8% goes back to charity. That's what the cause is about, dude. 8% <laughs> motorcycle shops. That's I want to know what fucking charities. 8% of this beer is, 80% of this beer is going to my fucking ass and gut. <laughs> <laughs> been fucking bad <laughs> well there there goes your phone call tomorrow we uh um, nah they're gonna fucking maybe dude maybe, montucky maybe came out with a, a premiere version <laughs> of like 2.8 carbs we feel <laughs> we feel better about <laughs> drinking 40 of them <laughs> yeah true <laughs> yeah like <laughs> that's the only time i do maths so i'm trying to count yeah. fucking carbs <laughs> yeah i would love to be a big beer manufacturer <laughs> and put literally the exact same shit in two different cans and label one as like Premier 2.8 carbs, like just in mean, there, the exact same fucking thing. Like maybe change like the f like one flavor molecule or something just so some idiot can't pour them in a glass. Normally it tastes exactly the same, but I would love to just fuck people over and, <laughs> and sell the exact <laughs> same beer, so but yet uh, market it differently. What if you had some gluten-free beer? Sure, I'll charge it. All right. I shouldn't what? say fuck them over because I'm going to charge them the same price, so it's not like they're paying more for it. But uh, They're just going to get fat as fuck yeah. still. <laughs> fuck your diet. Which they're going to get fat as fuck anyway, drinking exactly. beer still. <laughs> we yeah. drink way too many of them. It don't even matter. Well, that's uh, Miller Lite's. I don't know if it's bullshit or not, but Miller Lite's saying uh, they have an ad campaign out right now that they're like, hey, our beer is literally... One gram of something more than Michelob Ultra, like Michelob Ultra. If you look at it, if you look at the line, it is. It's like one of they, the lowest ones. They mark. Well, yeah, but you know, this is only this only has four carbs in it, 
and Michelob Ultra is 2.8. Well, so I'm just telling you what, what Miller Lite's running with. It's because Michelob Ultra markets themselves as this, like, go fucking rollerblade a mile, then drink a beer, and it doesn't go do anything. Rollerblade. You know what I mean? Like, it's some real, like, fucking just... <laughs> he's not... He, he's telling the truth there. Yeah, it's some real, it's like... only for fruit booters. It's some real, like, uh... <laughs> what's the, no, just... For a mile. It's, uh, like, uh... What do you call... Like, yuppies. Yeah, yeah, like, like, yuppies. Like, hey. uptown motherfuckers. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I gotta go hit the fucking Katy Trail for a couple miles and blah, blah. And then they come back and they have an ultra. 30 minutes like, on the treadmill. Yeah, I deserve a beer. Fit dudes, yeah. <laughs> but Miller Lights going, hey, morons. Our shit's literally one gram higher than theirs. It's the same shit. Like, you're being duped, you fucking idiot. You rollerblading motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see Jaden think you're skating one time. Fa- <laughs> fucking, you crossfit and fucking fat. <laughs> We're doing so good. <laughs> Saying PC up in this bitch. Oh, man. PC principal. Well, we need, all right. Do, we need to be able to just fucking let it fly and then go back on the editing and just do the perfectly timed, like, where there's, you get most of it, then you do hit a beep on the end. So you, it, I you feel know like there's a way you, I can uh, hit a, put a beep thing oh, on yeah. the sound bar thing. But, oh, yeah. I need to give him a look and like yeah. raise a, <laughs> raise a flag like ponchos up in this bitch. And for you people not around here, ponchos is a fucking staple in the oh, Texas I'd be culture. I just be hitting it just to make it all Beep. seem like seem like you all have just been cussing the whole <laughs> the whole podcast <laughs> and just through, throwing in a casual conversation. Uh, did you notice that with that Ride Balance podcast? Did you have you listened to any of that that we did? Dude, I was way too drunk. I'm not listening to that one. <laughs> I don't. I honestly, I don't think I listened to any of. Anything that I'm on, I don't go by. I don't ever. One or two where I've made it like halfway through. Um, I One of the recap podcasts. Something with like our friend like Cody and James, something yeah. like that. But I don't. Um, I can't listen to it I either. I generally don't. But when I'm when I'm a guest on somebody else's, every once in a while I'll listen to it for a little bit. But I, there's only like so much I can take from like I can't, I can't stay and listen to myself anymore. But while we were on the trip, whatever happened with uh, – um, Four for the road. Are you going to do their podcast or what? Um, I th- I think they tagged me in something something about the histories thing. Um, so I don't. I just need to reach out to Dave. I guess. I do. When you told me that, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like to me, I just listened to that podcast. It was a two lane life one. The two lane life one from Four for the road. About it, yeah. They all talked about you being on it. Yeah, they did. I did. Yeah, y'all did. Y'all talked about it on that one. I was literally listening to that today. Um, oh shit! I didn't even know we talked. About I need it. to. Um, <laughs> I was uh, drunk. Remind me. <laughs> I need good. to. I kind of what you did for our recap podcast, where you kind of did the uh, the itinerary of where we were. I need to actually kind of sit down and do that for the entire trip, at least my kind of take on it, and <clears throat> just have that ready because, yeah, dude, I could probably fuck, I could go three hours probably with Dave and Punk Rock and whoever else they want to bring on. Like, yeah, and I've actually never met uh, anybody but Dave. I don't. Yeah, believe. Punk Rock's cool. He he lives out of Jacksonville over there. I've met the uh, the mercenary dudes, but I don't think I've met anybody else on the podcast. Um, but yeah, dude, Dave's podcast when he came here, oh, a lot of love people Dave. loved that podcast. It was it was fucking good. He the the story of Dave is like so long. Like this guy, the first time I went to Milwaukee, he hit me up, and he's been following the podcast for a while. Um, he hit me up. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna come down there. Let's go have a let's go eat. Let's go do this." I'm like, dude, let's do a podcast. He's like, no, 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 let's not. So we just hung out. And then I come back again to, you know, st- we stay at his house. I'm like, hey, we're supposed to do a podcast. And we didn't do a podcast. Then he finally comes down here, and we finally get this podcast, and it's fucking fire. He's funny as hell. He puts his life out there in such a fucking way that it's like, it's tragedy in some aspects, but it's like he makes it, like, lighthearted enough where you get to laugh at it a little bit. It's, it was such a great podcast. And forever, you know? just just to reset on that, since we can't pull up uh, like the the screen video to pull it up, or his Instagram is Dave Madison WI, like Wisconsin, all together, no spaces, underscored. Dave Madison WI, fucking badass, and he's on the For the Road podcast, which is four number or, four, the number four F O R underscore the road. Uh, I mean, just look up Dave's, and you'll see a link to the For the Road. But that's who we're talking about. Look him up. He's fucking badass their podcast is great and he's a fucking rider dude he fucking rides all over the country man he's a biker yeah he's a real biker yeah 
like when I think of being a biker, he's a he's a biker I want to be. <laughs> so we talked about something before we were on. I think it might have been when I first got here, talking about personal stuff, and then the stuff which I've said it before. It's not super personal. Uh, on I've said it before on record about our one of the one of my biggest. What I love about our group of friends, one of the things I love the most is that <clears throat> we're not just a bunch of fucking dickheads that drink beer and whatever. Like I honestly feel like our the core group. Mainly the dudes on the trip. Um, there's a few other guys. It's all guys that are that make that. Anyways, I can't speak for everybody. They personally make me want to be better. Like I, I don't, I don't surround myself with fucking losers. You guys all make me want to be better, and everybody I feel like has kind of a different role. And but it's dudes that make me want to be a better father or be a better man, partner, or whatever what? the fuck. Jaden's it is. a dad. No, no like I said, Jaden's no, a secret dad. So the, what the point of that is? Damn, is, daddy. <laughs> Dave is one of those guys that if he lived here, he would be part of this core group. Yeah. No questions asked. I know he would fit in that well because he's one of those guys that I, you know, through his stories, not only is he funny, do I absolutely love hanging out with him. I, I kind of sabotaged. He was driving back through from San Antonio with a trip with his wife, stopped here. We were literally supposed to have two beers, like, by my house uh, yeah. at that Hooters, and I talked to him in the bike night, which ended up, like he fucking left late, and it was. I mean, he he's a he's a gangster, so he did it. But yeah. he, he would did it be for the red, white, and but blue. yeah, he's also one of those guys that, <laughs> as far as if I ever become a father, Dave's the kind of guy that like it would inspire me to be the best version of that I can possibly be. Yeah, just some of the shit he puts his out. His fucking like he's, uh, he's a great. His quote on our man. podcast was like, in Wisconsin, we don't only just eat the ass; we eat the whole person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a uh, Jeffrey Dahmer joke. <laughs> Dude, I love him, man. Uh, that that's probably one of the biggest, like, awesome parts about this podcast is that you find these these gems of humans uh, who become listeners, and then at, through their reaching out and their consistency, you actually get to know who they are as people, and uh, they become. At first, they're like, hey, they're reaching out to you because you have a podcast. But next thing you know, like, you're more interested in who they are because. They inspire you in a sense, and Dave is one of those dudes. You know what I'm saying? His, he's a writer, and that's one thing about him that that, that inspires me the most is his ability to uh, just write, just write down things. Like that's hard to do for me, at least. It's hard because I don't. I'm dyslexic as fuck, and like we were talking about earlier when you were reading, <laughs> I'm like I'm writing shit down. They say I'm scribbling and drawing a penis or some shit. Like I just have a hard time focusing on that kind of stuff, but. I do want to do it. You know what I'm saying? And we talk about doing these grave sites, traveling this country, seeing all these cool things. He's one of those guys that will go ride to go see Hemingway's grave. And then he'll sit down and do some Jax Teller shit on top of the roof and write down his thoughts about the day. <laughs> yeah. And climbs, a, climbs a fire escape and gets to the top. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just in, he's just in a tree. <laughs> just some fucking uh, Air Force Ones hanging down. <laughs> What's up, guys? Just writing my thoughts down. Yeah. Well, you said he's one of the kind of people you meet through the podcast. I would even break that down for for all you regular fucks out there that don't have a podcast. He's one of the guys you meet through motorcycling because yeah. you could have met him. You could have no – you could just be a dude that rides. And you could have went up to Milwaukee for the industry party, and guess what? He'd have been there, and you'd have met him, and you'd have known him. And he's about as open of a dude as far as walk up and, hey, man, what's up? And He's a cool nickname like yours. But, um, yeah, so you don't have to have a podcast. That's one of those things, like, go the fuck out. And he'll be heavy at uh, Hometown Rally. That's part of the reason why I won't miss it because, like, I may even be staying with him. I guess I need to talk to him again. Uh, but it's – it's on that level with me, with him, where he's like, "Come sit at the house," kind of thing. And I'll try to have sex with my wife down, and she wasn't. I won't. It. I won't miss him. Like I won't miss that event just because it's in his backyard. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking that, looking forward to seeing him again. So, go, Dave. Heck yeah, Dave's the shit. Heck yeah. There's a lot of badass people out there, man. Yeah, there's there so is. many. There really there is. Truly there is. is. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, the the other thing is like, there's so many people from different parts of the country that that have perspectives on life that are different than the way we are down here in the south but all applicable they all like really help shape a better version of you yeah. when you listen you talk and you you uh, absorb some of their wisdom and shit like that that might have come from their upbringing or just their region of where they came from it's so i think it's very interesting that 
and mm-hmm. times of like when I'm going through some thoughts and I call certain people, but they don't live here. Like yeah. I call my house or I talk to Scott or Rennie or mm-hmm. Justin or are you name dropping right now? No, no, I'm just saying <laughs> like, like just people dropping. that just live over the country or, you know, just talk mm-hmm. to someone across the country. I'm like, Scott, hey, uh, Wheelow Skilo, formerly from Torque magazine. Um, he's a place of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, no, he's no, um, I think I think it's that is very interesting. Just from being friends, from just being on motorcycles, and then like, hey man, what do you think? Like, hey, I think this and this and this. You're like, that makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just a very interesting spot to be in when you well, meet these kind of people and. My 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 uh, perspective of looking at you in particular and a couple other outliers in your age group in our world of bikers, bikers. We talked about those. Um, Not a real biker. I don't. You know, you uh, you kind of lean more into this older generation thing that we got going on. You know what I mean? And you're doing a lot of shit that we wish we would have done at your age. And so that's kind of like. In a sense, I feel like that's what kind of like really opens up our minds to you is to want you to be around more because like you're doing the shit that we wish we would have started doing at your age. Yeah. Um, to me, like that that ultimately means that like when you get our age, like you're going to be doing some shit that we never even thought of doing. Like you're going to take it to the next level, if you will. It's like you're you you're the torchbearer of our generation. If you and everyone those member wins. If if you say the course. Yeah, so again, you are trying to get married or some stupid shit like that. It's a work. It's a constant. By work. then, uh, you know, I'll probably have an electric road glide or trike. You know, <laughs> he's on divorce number three. <laughs> probably. I mean, I am a fireman, so it's pretty typical. How many calendars have you been in? Huh? How many calendars have you been in? None. We don't do that shit. Really? Because yeah. I feel like they do. Why not? We were at a house the, of the Harley, and they had firemen there. The city, remember, <laughs> like I say, what city? But the city I work in actually has a code, not a code, in the rules that says that we can't do calendars. So we went to House of Harley for the industry party last year, and while we were hanging out, or while we were, uh, they gave you know House of Harley would give us like their conference room to uh, do our podcast in. But that's also where all the firefighters had to switch into their firefighter gear and their G-strings. So, because at the same time, you know, House of Harley is the shit, 100%. Uh-huh. But there's still some hell yeah brother shit going on there. I mean, that's And so they were they were hosting an event for the women, and we were there on Thursday. So this is for the women that they were doing a calendar firefighter thing. So there's a bunch of fucking yoked up little dudes up in there, you know. Uh, women or dudes? Women, no dudes. Okay. To go downstairs for the women to do like some fucking like oh whatever whatever that happens. Bunch of dudes that look like Rob. Yeah, bunch of <laughs> Rob motherfuckers. Like a handsome Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I say that. Don't shoot me next time you see me, Rob. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a. No, but for real, like, uh, the more that you can absorb of this world, like, honestly, man, like, I mean, right now it's our time to shine, so you need to fucking take a back seat. So you need to just... I'm back here. All right. You're a freshman. <laughs> I'm back here. <laughs> <laughs> we're he trying to steal the I, show right now. You've been asking when we're going to get there for about fucking four hours now. Are we there yet? <laughs> but no, I, I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm stoked, man. Like, there really is a bunch of great dudes, like... As much as we, we've been clowning on, on Craig and the Down South camp out from last year, I'm still looking forward to seeing all those East Coast motherfuckers. The the mercenary motorcycle dudes, yeah. fucking Johnny Utah, fucking Terrible Johnny Tina, Utah. all those motherfuckers out there. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. To what? Down, Down South? South? So you're back on? Uh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> like a recruiting ad. I love it. Nah, uh, yeah, we were we were talking about it yesterday. Our He's, bike is night. the uh, is the big trouble fast life. I don't. I haven't talked to trouble. I haven't talked to trouble about that. Um, here's the deal. Craig's got one more chance. Just one more, <laughs> Craig. He's got one, one more. more chance. Craig's got one more chance to make this camp out the shit. 
If not, it's affirmative action. Is, is, would okay. it be affirmative action, right. or would it be a, would it be a, it's a, it's a political You're on probation, thing? Craig? No. Uh, the the first down south campout was epic. It was one know. of the most amazing campouts ever, and everybody that's everybody at the time leaned into it. One of uh, King Tony's first trips he had ever done. Uh, my machinist came out, fucking really started to get get known in that that year, twenty twenty, right? And then, you know, big. That was the first time I like big trouble really came on the scene. You know what I mean? Like I met him through that situation. I, I've known him for a year or so, but that's where we finally like shook hands and became like in person friends. And it was a great time. Uh, you guys came out to that, obviously. Yeah, y'all got y'all experienced it. That first down south camp out was a shit. Last year's was difficult, but I can't say that it was difficult or a hard time because of the camp out itself. We just had a bad luck of weather. That's why I'm staying optimistic for this one. Like maybe it wasn't as enjoyable last year because of the weather. Um and I'm I'm not trying to throw any shade towards the camp out at all because I want it to be successful because it does represent what we're all talking about about traveling and and being out there and doing shit like that but there was just a a a lull vibe to it we made the best of it dude you could put us in anywhere you can put us in a fucking quick trip parking lot it's gonna be a fucking party we're gonna have a good time but you know you ask guys that went to it last year and they're like i'm not coming back but that was their first time they they only know that they don't know what it was the first year or whatever I had such a good time in Jacksonville last year, but I had such an amazing time in uh, Ala- uh, Florida, Bama. So there's like this like struggle between these two areas that are both equally badass experiences to want to have. Almost like the down south campout needs to be like this tour of Florida, right? It's like you leave and on Wednesday night. I so said we just stay in Florida, Bama. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us say that, but it's like Wednesday night you do Florida Bama and you party, yeah. and then you go to fucking Jacksonville and you party, and then Friday uh, Thursday night you go to Jacksonville, and then Friday you go to fucking uh, Scooter Haven. So are you planning on riding this year? Because I know yeah. last year you took the car because you had all the camera equipment didn't quite work out. But last year you also swore I'm fucking done with this. I'm never coming back. I so was. You're riding. You're riding this year. My plan, which is I'm not that. talking shit, because I yeah. had a broken foot, and I was I rode I flew in to uh, yeah, Jacksonville, yeah. and we we all rode together, down, you know, kind of caravan yeah. down there. It was sick. It was. So I fun. saw sit down Steve's dick like six times. One of the fun, so <laughs> honestly, the, one of the <laughs> sit down Steve's been pushing on a lot of content. We had so much fun that night in Jacksonville before we even got to the camp out. That at one point it was a, the I don't know. I think for me personally, if I'm being totally honest, there might have been a little bit since I'm not riding. I wasn't as invested in the actual camp out as I probably could have been, but it was. That's what I'm saying. I want to go back again this year. That's what I'm saying that, that, that there's, there's two aspects this camp out because even though Craig, like really Craig's the one that put the camp out on, you can't deny the, the presence of big trouble and, and his posse of uh, Jacksonville. Right. And so that's why I feel like to make it, the total Florida experience and just get it all out at once is like the Florida Bama thing is for us coming from the West. It's a good spot. It's a good day's ride. You get there and you're in the perfect mindset to get out and have a good time. And then from Florida Bama to Jacksonville is not a hard push. As long as you stay off the fucking highway, I mean, stay off the, uh, the, the coastal roads, just go hit the highway. You can be there pretty quick. It's a good fucking time. Look, Big Trouble is going to make Jacksonville. He's going to treat Jacksonville the way we're talking about treating Dallas for fucking Born Free. We're not going to go to Jacksonville and not have a bad time or no. not not have a good time, yeah. right? He's going to make sure of it. We're, I mean, dude, we had a blast. You know, that fucking barbecue joint, the uh, the barbecue joint. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the barbecue joint. We had a fucking blast in, in Jacksonville. And so it just felt like it that's why I have a hard time like like putting any judgment towards the down south camp out is because 
the first year, we were a part of the entire camping crew. The second year, we kind of had our own thing going on in Jacksonville, and then we kind of met up with the camping people. Well, not e- dude, I would say the first year, not even it wasn't necessarily not even just part of the camping crew. It was part of the inaugural crew that was going. It was meeting up with Arkansas. In that was when Arkansas was strong, though. It was meeting up with Arkansas fell in off. Mississippi and rolling <laughs> fucking heavy into uh, Florabama. It was the party that was Florabama. It was the ride from Florabama to, the, like, the first one fucking went hard. Like, it was badass, man. And the second one... I think the second one we flew in, I had a, or at least I had a different, way different perspective than I had the first one. But I got the same vibe from dudes that there was a lot of guys that rode in like we did on the first one. And they're, they may have been coming from the north or whatever. Their Florabama may have been somewhere other than Florabama. But I got the vibe that a lot of people did the same thing. And that, I guess, Saturday night, the night that some of the guys had all <laughs> dipped out when we got hotels because of the rain and whatever. Yeah. Dude, there was guys doing burn like the burst. I didn't actually really know them that well then. I didn't kind of put two and two together. Dude, they were fucking lit. They were doing burnouts right in front of the bar, like yeah. close to the, like wilder shit than we had done the first year. Um, shots, shirts off. Like, I mean, they were. It did. Lean, they leaned in 100%. Uh, yeah. So that's they, what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to discredit the fact that this, it was a great night. event. It was a great event, 100%. Yeah. I just think that for, like, what happened was a lot of us guys that went originally, we took a new route and maybe weren't as invested as we were the first year. Yeah. And I don't think it's fair because. You're saying we should ride? I, yeah, 100%. I feel like riding there is the most, is, is probably. Houston had a pretty good turnout. Last Houston year, right? always, Houston, Houston and, like, uh, the Cheek and fucking uh, Fisher crew. Yeah. They they show up. They do things. Yeah. They ride. You know, I we've been talking about it a lot. Like um Robert Fisher and his old lady, they fucking put miles down, dude. Charles Fisher. Charles uh, Charles Fisher, I'm tripping. Uh Charles Fisher and uh Robert and Robert Cheek. Cheek yeah. They those guys like they, they, they get out and they put miles down. Justin uh Vegan Justin, that's his new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> those guys they, they fucking do it, man. And um they've been honestly those three dudes and their old ladies have been the central Texas or the Austin San Antonio crew of our world yeah. for the last couple of years. hundred percent. They continue to show up and show out. Yeah. They're all awesome. I yeah. mean, who else do you know other than Rennie outside of that world that that's shown up to anything? I don't know. You got Rennie, Mark T bar Jesus. And then you got Robert cheek, Charles Fisher and Justin, um, Gollop. Then the Houston guys. Cutthroat. Gollop. Gollop, Gollop 100%. Yeah. Chris Gollop Cutthroat. is FXR. Cutthroat. Yeah. It, it's back to the down south camp out. Make no mistakes about it. The riding is not going to be perfect. You're uh, the absolute best case scenario. You're going to have some It's hoodie. like Daytona. You're going to have some hoodie weather, maybe hoodie and a, and a vest. Um, but don't get it twisted. Bring a, bring a rain vest, a rain suit, bring, bring something. You're, it's going to get cold at some point. Um, but it's also, it's early November. If you've got the ability to ride there weather-wise, like roads aren't frozen over, do it because it's, it's the last thing you're going to get. And you're only going somewhere warmer. It gets better the closer you get to Florida. Yeah. But it's just one of those, it's be a man, do it. No, I think, I think the move this year, you know, I, I, you know, put it out there right now. So I know it's going to be hard for people to get the time off, but I think the move is Florida, Bama, Jacksonville, and then down south. God damn. Heard her first. It's the longest ride ever. Fuck it. Let's go to New Orleans. Dude, weekend. If we can get a, for get a, a, weekend. Yeah, want a, good, New Orleans? a good homie yeah. group, yeah. let's do New Orleans nah, first. It's too ghetto down there. Fuck that. What? Let's go to New Orleans. One night. One night. Just one night in New Orleans. Some of us won't leave. This is turning into like a Cody? seven day trip, guys. <laughs> Not seven days. I got days. fucking three days. <laughs> <to make that. laughs> I Kyle, you're about to get COVID, well, baby deal. boy. Dude, here's the I'm deal. Worry about that. I'm down I'm to about stop in New Orleans. We've already, we've already done this. Well, we can make it. That's what I'm saying. You get COVID we can make it home from down south in one day. We've done it. Oh, I want to do I'm New aware. Orleans on a bike. I'm just saying that was one day. Well, I guess there was a one, just that one layover in fucking Florida, <laughs> but goddamn. 
I'm starting yeah. to smell like bitch in here. Uh, <laughs> New Orleans, shit your pants, get dude, up, let let's me go. Your mouth and give you COVID. That's all I'm saying. You'll oh, get it. On, they dude. can't legally. They cannot dock you for time. They have to give you COVID time. Just get COVID, dude. Get dude, COVID. Be a man. Be a man. Get COVID. Ride your bike. I'm not gonna not go. Look, all I'm saying is this: is that uh, sure, Craig's man. our friend. And he's special needs. Should have stopped in your own. <laughs> yes, Rennie. And should've. unfortunately, uh, even though there's a lot of things we would change well, about the down up. south, Daytona and there's nothing I would change about the down south, if that yeah. makes any sense. Me and Rennie wanted to stop in New Orleans, but James like, is like... Is it time me and for Rennie, more conversations? Me and Rennie want to stop in New Orleans when we're going to Daytona. And James is like, no, we're pushing... You know who or, pronounces it like that? Slave owners. Yeah. Same anyway, name. Australians. I'm Spaniard, so you know what happens to that. Anyway, uh, and then we stop in a uh, first stop when we stop in Pensacola. James pulls up next to us in a truck. He's like, "We should have stopped in New Orleans." James, who? I was like, uh, "Speed Demon," James. Never heard of her. Yeah. Come on, France? No, no, no. Uh, I can't remember his last name right now. Houston. I know you're talking about it. Houston, yeah. James. Yeah. Low rider yeah. S, black low rider S. There's the Who thousand. doesn't oh, have that low rider S? <laughs> anyway. I mean, no, be like, more memorable. New Paint it pink, motherfucker. Yeah, we should have stopped in New Orleans. I was like, yeah. I was like, we're He's a good fucking. Dude. New Orleans is fun, Pensacola. but you need some fucking time in New Orleans. I think that's its own trip, personally. I mean, I would go to New Orleans, but yeah. No, the, the thing is the down south has potential, and uh, we're going to squeeze out the potential. New Orleans um, on the back? Orleans on the way there while you're still fresh. So me and me and Jetty did the first time we did Daytona together. We did New Orleans on the way home. Yeah, that's when we did the uh, uh, the podcast with uh, Royalty Racing. I still like New Orleans. It's a I good mean, time. Uh, Don't be wrong. New Orleans is the shit. Daytona too. But yeah. like, you're talking about going now. I've, I've never New, been Orleans, to New Orleans. It's on to my fucking Florida, to really Jacksonville, to goddamn. What is this fucking? All I'm saying is surges? from here. No, I'm saying is here's this. Hear me out. We leave Dallas on Wednesday. We party God. in Florida, Bama. Right? Florida, Bama is Thursday. No, no, no. Yeah, it is. No, no, no. It's not. Not for us. Not, 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 we, not, we in not in this. Not in this. Not for the homies. Are you so, saying with the new, if we did it the, it, the new way? Oh, okay. We go to Florida, Bama. We party in Florida, Bama. And we get Waffle House, so we'll be okay the next day. <laughs> Waffle House. Uh, I love trash. So then, <laughs> <laughs> so then we wake up and we mob. To, uh, and we only do this if Big Trouble actually meets us in, in Florida, Bama. If he doesn't meet us, then this is off the table. I'm just going to turn around and go home. <laughs> <laughs> he, he meets us in Florida, Bama, and we party together. And then we ride with Big Trouble back to Jacksonville. And Mel and all the homies in fucking Jacksonville, oh, they put it on the table. And we have a fucking great time. Thursday night in Jacksonville. We crash, we wake up, we mob together from Jacksonville to fucking uh, uh, Florida, Bama. Florida or, Bama. No, uh, or no, uh, Scooter Haven. Yeah. <laughs> Don't quit now. Oh, fuck yeah. oh, I thought you really fell asleep. <laughs> Kyle will do that on you. Yeah, Kyle will fall asleep on a microphone. So, dude, you're running the cameras. Yeah. I'm good. I'm just saying, I'm like exhausted listening over to there this. Died on this. But then, you know, because you got to give the camp out two nights. You can't, you can't base. Your camp this is more possible if we do a one week trip next year. No, it's possible. <laughs> we just fucking rode to fucking Washington, dude. We can do this. This is easy riding. I, you know what? I gave me that. Time. You want to get the ability to ride to Washington? Time. Was fucking time off, you fucks. Hey, buy it. <laughs> I wish I could, dude. Dude, hey, how, many like Larry, time, how many days dude. you need off? Be like Larry. Go unpaid. I can't. I've Tell tried. Me. Sounds like you need a new job then, dude. Oh, yeah. Let me just go get a new job that pays I think good. Crowdus is hiring. <laughs> hey, vacations don't suck your career, dude, dude. Jane can't even go to bike night. <laughs> hey, take it easy. <laughs> We're not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't go to bike night. I just got to leave at a certain time. <laughs> no, downside has to happen. Like, I'll, Craig's my friend. You know what I mean? As much as... As much as... Uh, I'm trying to find something funny about him that I want to exploit, but as much as Craig is Craig, and that's funny enough as it's, as it is, my life, our life as friends, it 
would it have been the same if we didn't meet Craig in a, at, at the Fast Life a couple of years ago? Like, he's enriched our lives in the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Craig, so. Craig's, Craig's a very good friend to have. I would say one one point of advice to anybody wanting to attend the um, – the down south camp out, especially if you're coming from a long distance, unless your chick is extremely cool, eh, maybe don't maybe don't bring her. Um, yeah, don't bring your chick at all. It yeah, seemed like last right. year that was a common theme with a lot of people who's actually chicks are typically cool. That I don't know, and it just it made it did kind of bring down the vibe. So eh, maybe the down south one. It's a that's not the kind of Florida she wants to go to. If you've got yeah. the one, I want to go to Florida. I, you don't want to go to this one. I'll take you to the other side, White Sands later. That may be if to you have to. That's a makeup trip for you, but don't bring her to this because yeah. she's. There's a few people, you know, Charles Fisher included. Like, there's people whose whose wives literally make things better, or they don't detract from it. At all, there are there are some really really cool wives, girlfriends, whatever. There's a lot of them that that don't have that don't don't earn that badge. There's a lot of them that make things suck. There's a lot of thing, a lot of them that bring bring things down. It's ultimately not your party. You forget you forget that you're you're with us. This is not a you and me vacation. This is a me vacation that you are accompanying me with. So act accordingly, and they don't always do that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think the down south is a is a camp out for old ladies. It's a, it you got to be an old lady where like, look, this ain't about you. Yeah, this is about meeting up with a bunch of dudes, drinking beer, talking shit, uh, eating pot brownies, shit like that. You know yeah, I mean? this is not this is not a desirable part of Florida. This isn't. Oh, we're gonna go see the fucking manatees, or we're gonna go see the dolphins. No. You're gonna see some meth heads, and you're gonna see some racist. <laughs> and so racist. <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're gonna you're gonna see, I don't know, maybe society just a decade or so back. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, this is not shit. This that's a, fun for dudes. Yeah, this is, this is not where you want to be. Trust me. So yeah, just. Uh, I'll take you to. You're gonna be sleeping in a FEMA tent, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, uh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> if you ain't trying to fuck me in a FEMA tent, you ain't going to the down south. Deserve, yeah, if you can't fuck me at my worst, you don't deserve <laughs> me at my best. And unfortunately, my worst is in a FEMA tent at the down south <laughs> camp out in Scooter Haven, Florida. <laughs> uh, a FEMA tent <laughs> draped in old, draped in old fucking <laughs> billboard canvas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, she still says like Corona on that bitch. <laughs> what God damn. Are double cheeseburgers at McDonald's still ninety nine cents, or is this just old as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, there's been stuff about uh, females, you know, girls attending these campouts and uh, safety and this. And oh, that. let's do that right now. While I'm nine guess beers what, deep. Guess what? Down south campout, <laughs> ladies. Yeah, that's probably not the one you want to roll the dice on. Not necessarily for us or the ones attending, but just the staff. I've I've thrown some shots at Adam Sandoval's staff. Guess what? Hey, <laughs> Scooter Haven. I hope you're not listening. <laughs> How many of your staff members need to register? Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the limb. I bet there's not a school within 450 yards of that campground that all these fucks live on. Uh, yeah, maybe like I said, maybe don't come to the Hills Have Eyes Florida version uh, <laughs> of, for, for your. Uh, we're women riders uh, weekend. <laughs> hey, this, is, this else, isn't yeah. a low rider s fucking weekend. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, <laughs> go go to camp out of the quarry. It's the ST and, now. Oof. Get it right. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that bad way, but just go to a, what is, what's the one they just had in Houston? The oh, the Cowdy camp out. Cowdy camp. Okay, yeah. Go to something like that. You you don't want to you don't want to cut your teeth at the down south camp out. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to cut down there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to. You, you don't want to break gum, your gums. Yeah, you in. don't want to cut his teeth. Lose your teeth. <laughs> oh man, you think Craig's gonna like our fucking take on it or what? Craig's gonna be like, shut the fuck up, dickheads, and get down here. <laughs> That's I. I can't quit you. <laughs> yeah. Basically, what's going on? Um. 
No, but I would like to see it step the fuck. Like, I'd like to see somebody set that bus on fire this year. Just really fucking up the ante. Hey, fuck it. That's all you. You dance on it. You, I don't, you I don't, burn it too. I don't play. That's only if I play music out of it. Hey, yo. <laughs> um, y'all last year was it? Last year y'all did the uh, y'all were doing the um, the uh, karaoke oof. there. Yeah, yeah. That shit was good. That was fun. That was really good. It was, oof, was really drunk. I you know what? Ha- we gotta say this. Have we seen tits at the Fast Life camp out? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, we have. Fuck, twice. Yeah. I've got to, I, I've, yeah, I've <laughs> did, got to, did we I, not have? I forgot we awesome? got canceled for that. But here's the deal. I've got a picture. I need to post that. That's a great That's a picture. great photo. And those Jake are some took, nice ass i got to post that. I'll do little um, emojis. So, at the Down South, last year's... Here's what I don't understand. Last year had everything. I'm going to say that for a fast light. Like, as we start to ramp up the next one, I'm going to say that as, like, a hype up post. Dude. <laughs> last year... The down south. I got a picture with boobs from that one boobs. on the stage. Yeah, that the chick that pulled her, and I I didn't touch him or nothing. I uh, I just <laughs> I, I lean, saying boobs. I lean, I lean next to him. I I'm not a big fan of the T word. Tits. Yeah. Titties. You said boobs and tatas. Titties is better, but you said tits boobs. Just sounds, I don't know. Like tits is like the cock word. Boobs for sound like you're twelve. It's vulgar. It's vulgar. <laughs> Said boobs and poop this episode instead of tits and shit. <laughs> I'm trying to be a better man, Kyle. You, you fuck. Like fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel like uh, it's like everything else. That was rude. Sorry. That was. Rude. There's no way. I, I feel like there's no way. I want to see this first. God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just for the record, I'm two buttons down and the belt open. How fat I'm getting. <laughs> I want to. Uh, here's the only thing. Like this been. This been. This is the third year running. My down south experience. I still want to be a full Key West experience. Like, I want to be able to do the down south and then go do the Key West and then come home. Like, a long, it definitely not, like, almost a two-week trip, if you will, or a week and a half or some shit like that. It's the uh, first weekend of November? I don't remember. Um, right? Yeah, look it up. Uh, Memories. I mean. So that's one thing. I'm down to do that. For the, can, uh, where the fuck is Raymond from? This motherfucker's leaning in. Thank you for staying along with us for three hours, he's dude. I believe that's Ramon. I think it's, I think it's Ramon. Yeah, <laughs> Ramon. I believe he's a Dallas guy. Yeah. It's Ramon. Yeah, yeah he was at like, bike he takes night. Big stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was a guy at bike night the other night. Yeah, uh, he's taking pretty pictures cool. too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I started following that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the uh, go to bed, Ramon. No, dude. Lean in, dude. Yeah, stay up. I think he's out of town shit. right now. He's fucking. If yeah, he's still out of town, I think he Georgia. had to go to Georgia or some shit. Yeah, like he's that. probably in Georgia. Fuck yeah, I didn't know that was him. Hell yeah. Yeah. Then My Donnie. Man. You look great. Yeah, Donnie, Donnie yeah. <laughs> Donnie at the down south would be the shit. Straight I just want to see Donnie. I want. I, want I know to, he doesn't drink, but I want Donnie to get no, no, fucking no. plastered. No, no, no. I don't want him to get drunk. I want no. Donnie in every situation biker because Donnie brings mm-hmm. a, Sorry, Donnie. Hey, a layer sure. of like... <laughs> Like, my grandpa. So cool. Relax. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Donnie has good advice. You're out of your fucking element. <laughs> <laughs> you're just kind of sitting there, and it's like that fatherly like advice that you're like, you know what? You're right, Donnie. I'm yeah. Sorry. You know. Well, Donnie also will cut a motherfucker. Yeah, like a motherfucker. Like in a minute that, yeah. too. <laughs> Don, yeah. Like, Don, Donnie's so our as, way better friend than I think a than yeah. A lot Don, of we don't deserve a Donnie. We don't yeah, deserve really Donnie. Like a Donnie. Trust me. Donnie, I, I don't know. Like, if he could, he's another one that if he happened to just live in Dallas instead of Oklahoma City, dude, he'd if he lived in part, Dallas, I'd be living he, with him. He would be part <laughs> of the fucking when he came to that one bike out. night. He was just like a regular dude, just he a is. regular. Just and a regular. honestly, if the if the group ride, if the if it jumped up from eight to any like to nine ten, Donnie would probably have my first vote as 
hey, yeah. cocksucker, you want in on this? Like, and he probably would. Like, he would probably be, honestly, my first. Let's go. Jaden just oh, said, oh, fuck thanks. you, Trey, right to your face. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, I, be more I memorable. forgot that someone FaceTimed me. It was like, hey, bro, you want to do a trip Y'all next remember that from the restaurant? Which uh, one? That one, the... Oh the yeah! Was his thing got got us the gave us the money, and we. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I was like Trey. We've all Johnny, been talking. Or not Johnny Utah. We've uh, all been talking, and we really want you on the next ride. And he was all, oh, oh yeah. We're like, yeah, dude. We just want you to follow in the truck, bring all our camping gear, <laughs> keep all the tags. <laughs> and his face fucking dropped on this fucking face. Up. We <laughs> lost our shit. Do the That's fight. not true. None of that shit happened. Jaden <laughs> was yeah, like, happen. please what join happened. us. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, Jose. Why, why is Jose's fucking party trick like he drinks and then he falls down somewhere? He'd be like that sometimes. Who's would be like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Jose, you see the shooter you got in Kyle? <laughs> He'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> I know Kyle's with you one time. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle helped you, I think, on a, like a bump. Bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Kyle still got your back. Uh, I can't wait. Man, there's just so many fucking rad dudes. Like... Straight up, man. Yeah. Donnie, fucking, uh, you know, Brian up there. Like, everybody, man, like, this fucking scene is awesome, dude. It is awesome. It is awesome. Uh, Can you imagine? I'm not going to say it. That's Can you imagine being a boat team. guy? And yeah. The only people yeah, you know dude. is on, awesome. on one lake? <laughs> well, hey, yeah. Donnie, dude, is awesome with his rad-ass boat. Dude, when you when we stay at Donnie's house with the, uh, the polar ride, like... Donnie, this isn't a dig, Donnie. If all my marriages fail <laughs> and I was single, Donnie like, has Donnie, got the vibe that I want the vibe dude, to he's be. he's got a sick setup. He's got a sick setup. <laughs> he had a Star Wars room or some shit like that. Hell yeah, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Where you just chilling, you're like, yep. My Star Wars room. <laughs> I can't. Hey, Donnie, what was the theme in the room that I slept in? <laughs> I forget because there was something on the wall. I want to say it was Star Wars. But I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely <laughs> love when Donnie stayed over at the firehouse. <laughs> if, if Step Brothers was one guy and he smoked weed, <laughs> Donnie, please, <laughs> please fuck my landlord, please. Oh, there Go you go. Rent. Do that. <laughs> oh, that's what. Yeah, he said something about uh, something like coming down for a bite night. He goes, "Oh, I'll stay a couple of nights at the firehouse." And Clockwork well, he's, going. He's more than welcome, dude. He's something. more than welcome. So then he goes. Oh fuck, Trey! He goes. I know his landlord. I'll fuck her and get him get him evicted. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. She fucking loves me. <laughs> You're welcome anytime, Donnie. Clockwork Orange. I still haven't watched that movie. What? I want to. I've heard Why? It. Yeah, it's, I've yeah. never seen it. You, you haven't know, seen honestly, it. Honestly, my brother so. scared me on it. The what? He scared me on it. Who? Why? My brother. You met him? Yeah, I met your brother at the campout. Why? I don't know. He Be just man, watch it. I, not scared me. He just kind of like turned me off on the movie. Like I wasn't interested. Just Good watch movie. it, dude. Yeah, it's like trip some shrooms. As much as it. you hate, as much as you're like, oh, you haven't seen Pulp Fiction. I mean, okay. come on. Whoa. To so, to play, I understand you trying to get the information from your brother is different than getting it from one of your homies. So as a homie, you should watch, you it. watch okay. it. Okay, yeah. all right, I'll, I'll do it then. I mean, me and your brother are the same age. Watch you're, it. Not yeah. the same. I mean, they're pretty much... I get it. My brother's posting about, like, this abortion bill. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. I do, but I don't. If that makes sense. No, but do you, do you care enough to make a post about it? I don't care enough to post about it because I'm not a fucking politician that's making our laws and rules. You got better shit to do? Who, who am I to, to fucking be like, hey, you know what? This is what you should think. You're whatever. I mean, yeah, I don't care. That's exactly right. No, whores. We're coming for your fucking abortions. Your voting rights are next. Get used to it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. That's your politicians you voted for. I'm joking. Facts. Oh, that's just Jaden Abbott over here. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> that's, that's that's that. That. Thank you. I need this. I got a text that he was like, I need this photo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, I'm watching the thing, the boob one from the camp out. Dude, the, the camp out was fucking Who's that? awesome. Chance. I am so glad. <laughs> it was a nice ass set of titties. He, he, just, <laughs> he, he just bought my room in uh, Sturgis, so I, I'm obliged. I'll send him a picture of my butthole if you ask. Are y'all are y'all mobbing up to Sturgis? We are. We don't know when, you, when you... <laughs> 
When you say mob, you mean like no? Yeah, we're we're, we're I'm, they're I'm, loading I'm, up on a truck and drive. Obviously, Trey, you are invited. <coughs> uh, we are. Yeah, we're putting, the, making we're putting we're putting the bikes in a truck, uh, back of a truck trailer, or something. We're, we're literally smashing them through for the weekend. Like if something the, happens, if something happens, and something goes very different, don't call you. If something happens, and something very different happens, I'll be going. Well, dude. I would love to fucking see it there. That'd be this, that'd be awesome. And I'll probably be ripping the truck up. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're on or the mine and Trey's it, bike, it squeezing the back. <laughs> Bagger and FXR. Oh, well, okay then. Fuck me. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> nah, I can't make it either. I'm. It's so yeah. It's it's, it's probably tough, it's dude. most likely it's we already have a plan and I'm not I'm not going because just for a sole reason I have to do my clinicals and I don't have enough time in between them. Where I'll enjoy it, and I wanted to be there with all my bobos and having a good time. So what is it? Yeah. Bogo B O G O. Bogo G O. Is that what you just said? All your bogos. All buy my bobos. Bobos. Oh. Fuck me, sorry. Buy all my buy one get one freeze. Yeah. No, there's. <laughs> is it, it Bafo? There's some uh, a- acronym. Bomo. I'm no. not. I'm not. What's Bafo cool? stand for? B A F O. Big old fucking. No, I don't think that's ovaries. it. Big old fucking ass. I swear, boffo is like a so like fairly common something. I have no, I hear it used every now and then, and I'm like, that's one I don't know. I never look it up. Who knows what the going vote Daytona boffo next year? Means. Daytona, I, I want to. Dude, our Airbnb was the shit. First off, J- I'm not paying. Jason for will probably say he's going. He's gonna go to California instead. If I can, I will do that instead, hundred percent. And be California and have straight too. FOMO. Maybe. Uh, I I'm talking dude, shit I like I'm going. I nev- that's right before PTO hits for me, and I never can go. Let's Ramon roll. just said it'll pay for your gas. Take it. Yeah, if you pay for my gas, I'll fucking go. <laughs> I uh, the back seats recline and heated. every year Daytona comes around. It's about time. being caught up enough to be able to uh, go. Yeah. Uh, this year the camp out when we get ready to start that up in uh, late uh, April. A lot of things changing this year in the camp. It's going to take a lot more effort from uh, me and the guys to make it what it's going to be this coming year. Mm-hmm. And um, not that I think that Daytona is going to be a, a hinder in that at all, but there's going to be a lot going on between pff, just everything. So I don't know. Like Daytona, I want to be there uh, being a part of all that stuff. But also, like, I just can't party every fucking night balls to the wall. That's so. Fine. That's so fun. The, it, it's, it's, fun. Not, it's not. It's not beneficial. I think for, for me. Daytona for me, I I don't think I would ever really ride there. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Have you ever ridden there? No, it's boring as fuck. Okay, well, I've, I've ridden there the three way times. And back. I've ridden through Daytona three times. I've, I've, I've only been, been to Florida. Daytona once. I've been to Florida multiple times. Yeah, so I think that that I've done that drive yeah, to the East Coast ever? so many times that I just kind of get. You gotta do it on the bike. Yeah, dude, you gotta do it in early March when it sucks and it's like just like the weather going to down south. Guess what? It's not all gonna be great. It's gonna be cold or whatever, but it's part of fucking. Yeah, it wasn't what? cold. Do, I think do it, it just... once. Hey, do it once or twice and then take your trip. That's cool. Look, but don't just never fucking ride. Once. Don't never, don't Look, never ride and go. Here's oh, the oh, thing oh. about trailering, right? I'm so, not a real biker, so I don't ride. Here's the thing about trailering is that like a trailer is gonna become a part of your experience of these events at some point in your life because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it yeah. physically. Well, then again, I didn't have a bagger at the time. I just had an FXR. No, no. Was brand that doesn't make sense. The riding, the riding is, like I said, it, that's what builds a relationship. Every Me, trip Jones you can take on every type of different type of bike is a different experience. You can ride to Daytona 10 well, times if you do it on an, an FXR, a bagger, a Sportster, a fucking chopper. In Trey's defense, it was still set up as the giveaway, but FXR. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Not it was, a good guy. Yeah, not a one to come on. Yeah. No. I'm not knocking yeah. I would have died on the bike. Yeah. I'm I'm not almost not died on the bike just by riding on Daytona. But, dude, you got to ride it at some <laughs> point. He's, he's right about that. Like I said, yeah. at least with a buddy or something. I mean, I don't like know. If I, if I put up a post right now saying I'm trailing Sturgis, I'm going to get dudes that are going to be like, Oh, what's up, man? I thought you never trailered because dudes are fucking queers in real life because they need me to be to biker. affirm who they're trying to be, right? They're not right. understanding. Like, I've already ridden Sturgis eight, nine times. Yeah. Like, I decided this year I want a trailer. I've already done it. I don't need to prove to you shit. Yeah. 
I think that I would rather ride the Sturgis given certain circumstances, but ultimately I promote riding every once in a while. You got to throw your bike on a trailer. Yeah. I wouldn't trade my ride to Daytona as shitty as it may be. No, 100%. I wouldn't better. trade it the way Nobody there. fucking can't sleep at the night before because they're thinking about trailer the next day. The way there with my with my best friend Jones and one of my best friends Jetty, I wouldn't trade that for anything, especially knowing how Jones is, you know, he's, like I said, got a plate full of life here lately. Yeah. And I definitely wouldn't trade. Only Jones got a plate full of dick. I wouldn't trade it the way back where it was <laughs> me and Jones thinking we were going solo, late night, hungover, late start, 30-minute shit by him before we even get out of town. We're at the first gas stop, and just we're we're lingering. We know we're slow. We're wrapping up, and all of a sudden we hear a fucking V twin rolling up, and we do the whole, and it's a big wheel fucking Cody B. Fuck He's you, a, Cody. We couldn't get Cody up. Cody was supposed to come. Fuck you, Cody. But he wouldn't get up. He goes, "Fuck it, I'm fuck it, go without me." And he was going all the way to New Orleans, and he caught us at the first gas stop, and. Rolls up. We go. What are you doing? He goes. Catching y'all, baby. <laughs> and after that, we rode. You should rode past y'all. We, we rode. The, well, no. He just. I mean, like it was such a cool feel. Like Joe, we were literally putting our helmets on, about to get on the bikes and take off. And all of a sudden, we hear the rumble of the bike. We're like, oh shit! Just you know that. Let me double check. Make sure it's not something I know. And it was. And that was the double champ weekend of all weekends. Yeah. He rolls up, and we get gas, and we mob. We stop. We saw Craig. Craig was timing us. We Driving, ended up meeting up with yeah. Craig on the way back, and we ended up run, you know, riding through the night. Jones and I did a 1K in a day, whatever the fuck, uh, to get back home. We rode with Cody up to, like, within 60 miles of New Orleans because he was dipping off and meeting somebody else in New Orleans. I wouldn't trade that shit for anything. As many, yeah. as, as many hours of, like, just, okay, boring, not the most scenic ride. But you got your fucking two dudes with you there. But, oh, wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, it's the whole concept. I mean, you, you rode the surge with us last year, and you understood, or you maybe saw. We did a fucking 1K in a day on the way back. That, I wouldn't trade that for anything. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like, I know you know, like, at some point, if yeah. you have to, trailer. I'm doing I get it. Yeah. But, dude, if you what I'm saying is for day two, if you've never done it, don't just ride it off forever. Like, oh, oh no, that's no. a street no, ride. I'm never going to do it. Ride it at some point with somebody. I think, I think it was just. I think it was a bad time. Like that's Rennie's, when gas like Rennie shot up. That last comment, like Rennie said. Yeah. Rennie, you're fucking there with me. I want to hear. He's it. right in the back. Yeah, the you're drive. in the passenger seat the whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's I was like, over here fucking, like, wait a second, wait a minute. <laughs> we drove all the way back from wait Daytona <laughs> to Daytona and Austin. One fucking day, I was like, dude, I don't. I was like, fuck, I don't know if I were to make it. He's like, we're gonna make it. I was like, fuck. But anyway. I like Randy. No, but, when we when we rode up to uh, Sturgis together last year, um, was, we pulled we we exited. We found we found bars, and they weren't the most ideal bars for our like what I we still wanted had a to fucking do. Blast, but we still had a blast. We yeah. fucking turned the Applebee's into a fucking Trapplebee's, dude. Yeah, and, uh, and we had the, a good the time. Parking lot, we have fun until the, exactly until the until cops, the cops showed, showed up. Yeah, so the most boring parts of the world. Can still be fun oh, if, yeah. you have if you have the, the right, right people. people. Yeah. yeah, it's just. I think it, that motorcycling is about people. It ain't about the roads. As that much was my as people first think trip with y'all too, and that that was that was crazy. That was yeah. such an experience, and I hope everyone. I know not everyone that's gonna get to experience that. But I remember, that was, uh, I remember walking with you back from One Eye Jacks that night, oh, yeah. giving you relationship advice as I'm fighting with my wife, <laughs> <laughs> and you're meeting your your fucking forever wife. Why yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking met her like the next day or something like that. Yeah, you're welcome, Thunder Max. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, yeah, here she is, not too long ago, right in the back of Texas, and. So when y'all get married, is she moving here? Or are you moving there? She's moved here. That's, That's right. Be a man. So, yep. <laughs> yep. Never change. Yeah. I actually got a, uh, and a, I got a CEO job down there in Dallas. So you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You make her move down here. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's gotta be wild, man. Like going up to Sturgis first time. Uh, Especially when I was in the mindset of like city boy, pretty much. Of just I like, still don't understand what this means. <laughs> being single and not letting what, what's some more like new kid lingo like fan what what's some other shit they I said say? it like five or six times. Everyone else said it on there. Well, that's what I think he's just getting at though, is what is it like 
A city right. boy is someone that where you're just doing about your life and you're not letting women control you. That's but bitches get money. Yeah. Exactly. Or fuck but bitches. But maybe. I'm married, I'm about that life. Or a motherfucker named Marcus. <laughs> that's, yeah. the other, yeah. that's the other example. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Like, if, if you say it the other way, it's so much better. But like, we can't, can't say it. Can't. Can't. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, that shit was wild when going to Sturgis and that all that unfolds. And yeah, it's all. It's next month will be a fucking year. How like you go to you you don't bring sand to the beach and you walk away with the fucking fiance. A pale full of sand. Yeah, yeah. pretty fucking wild. Pale full of sand. We, yeah, I, I haven't met her yet. I know she's been here a couple times, but it's always like uh, the wrong time while we have something going on. Yeah, I've been fucked with military and the school shit, so that's it's the only downside. But I'm almost done with everything. I'll be done with everything in October. Military and this shit. So yeah, yeah. I'll be around, so we could do some shit. That's pretty dope, though. Yeah. Yeah, y'all, uh, that's got to be wild, man, like, to go to a place like that and, and meet somebody that... Same age and shit together and stuff. It's, yeah. Mentally in the same place. Yeah, yeah. That was weird. That was yeah. Especially, yeah. City Boys up, right, Jaden? Oh, sure, sure, man. I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm not in the fucking clearance uh, time to say that, but guess what? If, uh... If anybody that connects on that level is still watching at 324, I guess I'll leave a little shit on there. Well, is there a hand signal? City voice up. City boys? <laughs> okay, take it's it a, easy. It's a call? Yeah. Take Dude. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I do love a good call. Shout out to my pter- pterodactyl boys in, in uh, Harris County. I can't wait till those dudes actually come up and do a podcast. <laughs> that A proper and- pterodactyl boys podcast would be good. And I haven't. It's on me, though. I haven't reached out to them and asked, but it's kind of like I'm worried if I ask them to come up here and do a podcast, they'd be uh, busy. Okay, well, I guess oh. I know we've talked about this, but I didn't realize that was the case. I'm literally sending a message to Aaron, Jimmy, and Dave, like, tomorrow. And go, hey, so, Jimmy, Dave, it's Jimmy, Dave, and Dylan. <laughs> No, there, there's, dude, that's, you know, this this whole path I'm on with this podcast. I mean, hanging out, first giddy up, those dudes, we started this whole pterodactyl boys club. And uh, it's just been like a cat call ever since every Texas event. You hear, you hear that, and you know what's up. You fucking re, revamp back to, you know, uh, default, and you get ready to party with some fucking dudes. And uh, those dudes down in Houston, like, HTX Dino Crew obviously doing some badass shit, but these dudes are OG Houston. They've been doing this shit. They go to fucking, you know, they, they remember Giddy Up and go there every year and uh, and pay homage to a so good time. That was the last Giddy Up, right, when we went, where it was you, me, in the car with Jesse and his girlfriend, right? Wasn't that Giddy Up? And we did. That was probably Texas Hills that y'all went. Oh, that was Giddy Up. It was yeah, giddy up, and I yes, swear that was the one we walked around. And we, that was the walked, last giddy up. We walked around in the dark, and we we found them right the pterodactyl. Yeah, so that was the one I remember. I think Jones asked you. Jones asked somebody. He was like, "Hey man, you want to go for a walk?" And they're like, "No, I'm good." I swear, I think it was you. And then we we took off. We're like, "Hey man, we're going for a walk," and you're like, "All right, cool." And Jones is like, "What the fuck, dude?" And we ended up doing the lap where we found them. We found a bunch of people. We partied with them. They were just on the other side of the bathroom from us. Yeah, yeah. No, this is. Oh yeah, they were on the other side of the bathroom because they were all hanging out. That's when all they did. They all shaved their beards in the Fu Fu Manchus. Oh yeah. That weekend, and that's when the uh, I think Evan brought out his. uh, I want to say it was Evan. It could have been another dude, but he had a fucking gold wing out there that was all t-barred out. (laughs) Yeah, that's. I can't wait to get old. Yeah, yeah, the flag, yeah, yeah, the yeah. pterodactyl on it yeah. and everything. Yeah. Can't oh. wait to get old and have a CBO TV T bar Harley or Goldwing. The the goal is not to get old. The goal is to get to a point where you still feel relevant. It's cool as fuck, no matter what you ride. That's mm-hmm. that's ultimate like dad bod shit. You know what I'm saying? Speaking <laughs> Archie of Archie Farron on the Goldwing. Everybody's like, oh, why are you putting kickstand blocks on your bike? But it's like at the real talk. It's like, hey. 
Who gives a fuck what you put on your bike? Everybody's still stoked when you fucking pull up, yeah. no matter what you rode it's in about today. Your, it's about your person. Not FXR your Mike can ride any. Fu- he can drive his fucking Dodge Magnum. What is it? What does he ride? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the Magnum. Yeah, is a Magnum. Is that what it's called? Yeah, those station wagons. He can pull up in a Magnum, and people are stoked that he's there. It doesn't fucking matter if he rode an yeah, FXR, yeah. a chopper, a fucking go wing there. If you think he's a, FXR fucking Mike. You think it's all about yeah. a bike here? I don't know what the fuck yeah. he is now. Oh, Josh, motorcycle dork, almost yeah. done with this fucking go wing fucking Dyna. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gonna be sick. fucking rad, dude. It's sick. You see we the, saw the you frame. See the two in one TV or the two in one fucking thunderheader he's got on right dude, now. We were so we got the double. So when we were there, when you were there yeah. at Steve's, and he came out and hung out with us, we got to hear his story. But when me and uh, Jaden stayed at TBJ's house, the frame and everything was there getting welded up. Yeah. So we got to saw. We got to see like what was going on behind the scenes. And yeah. He, I'm he stoked posted about a picture that, of it. He posted a picture of it recently. Yeah. It looks fucking rad. Yeah. It, it's a tight crunch because he's got like two weeks to get it done to get there. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I love that shit, though. He'll do it. He'll, I love yeah. it. He's a gangster. And they just had the West, four. West Coast. Oh, four four and a one. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> four and a one. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking stoked, man. This world is badass. Yeah. We appreciate all of you. Everything, dude. Everywhere we go, man. Like, I guess I, I I struggle because like I get wrapped up into like niche based things. Like, oh, this is going on and this is going on and this is not happening. This is happening. But ultimately, when I when I step back and I look at everything, everything's fucking rad. Yeah. It really is. Like, yeah. everywhere you look, East Coast, West Coast, North South, there's fucking rad dudes everywhere, and everybody's happy to be riding bikes. Minnesota. I should be happy to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm what just about, saying. Like, I would never know fucking anyone in Minnesota until this past camp out. Who do you yeah. know in Minnesota now? Brandon Pryor. Prior performance. performance. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jaden's like, no, he's, no, yeah, he's, he's, he's a real one for sure. But I'm just saying, Tony, like, Tony like, loves saying, "Hold my fucking yeah, beer." Yeah. 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 Tony Tony loves. Arkansas. Love. Boy. <laughs> like, I, I would have never known anyone from fucking Arkansas. So we were going to do, uh, me and Jaden, I had asked Jaden to come here earlier to do, I wanted to do two podcasts before y'all showed up. Yeah. Stupid idea. <laughs> because good we luck. did one really Long good yeah. three-hour podcast. But the other podcast I wanted to do was, uh, and we're going to do this for Patreon, but it's going to be, Jaden's going to be the, he's going to be the host. Oh, okay. And so I'm going to be the fucking guest. And essentially, we're going to talk about. Wait a second. Is this just a trick for Jace to talk about himself? <laughs> it's ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Jeopardy <Guilty>. Jace <laughs> What is Jace Hudson He was on that LFG podcast He's like I like this shit Yeah let's, let's, let's talk about me motherfuckers <laughs> That motherfucker over there is rad as fuck dude <laughs> You see him over there You see him <laughs> He's over there <laughs> no. Um no, it you know, here's the here's the It's actually it's genius. Like I'm I'm excited as fuck about it. They pay you to say that? <laughs> no, no. It sounds like Kanye West. <laughs> I am a genius. <laughs> when you hear it, it really is it's it's cool. So every every podcast oh, since day one. He's paying you a helmet? <laughs> it's fucking nice of you. Every podcast uh we've done, the whole like backstory of it. I mean a lot of people listen yeah. to the podcast over the years and it, it, you have to listen to a lot of podcasts to get like tidbits of of like the backside of the podcast because that's I, I feel like it's interesting if, if Rogan did a podcast talking about just the back end of like him starting it and what it was like bringing certain guests on, I would be interested in that. Yeah, right. But if Rogan just had to be the only person on it talking, it'd be different. But Jaden is a great person on the podcast, so I'm like, hey, dude, what if, what if we talk about, we go do this podcast, and um, we're gonna start it like when we bought the shit to do it to episode twenty, and I'm gonna tell you, oh, dude, so when so and so came to town, this is what was going on. Me and Jesse were like trying to figure out how to do it. Like I, I remember every little nuance. Of these little of the podcasts that we did, where we had to go, the the things. 
I mean, the first 20 episodes, we had Simpson Helmets, Homer Sands, fucking uh, uh, Lindahl Breaks, uh, Fab 20... Eight. Yeah, Jay. Uh, Dixon Flannel was like number five or six or some shit like that. Um, Joe Kidd, fucking uh, Mark. So many people. Like the first 20 episodes of the Fast Side podcast are heavy hitters, right? And I remember every fucking detail of how it happened. But if I do a podcast, if I do a Patreon where we're just talking about that, where like I'm just the only person in the room talking about it, it's weird. But when I say, look, this is what we're doing. Let's talk about it. But as you listen to me telling you the story, also bring up, like, be the host. Be the guy. Like, so what is this? What is that? And it allows me to elaborate on these different areas in a way that might make it more interesting and carry it on through an episode as opposed to me like, we did this, and then we did that, and then this with Judge C was being a cunt, and we did this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I've already listened to all those way back in the day. He remembers every details. I don't. I'll honestly, I'll have to go back and do some, do some real listening on those. But I'm excited to do it because, like I said, I've listened to them all a lot and to see, I don't know, just to see how everything's grown. It's already been mentioned on, on the one we did earlier. But just to see, I'm excited to go back and listen to them now, just to, to note the things that are different and the. I don't know. I think it's going to be great. The thing that sucks about, or that doesn't suck, but the thing about this is that so many people sure, might be listening to this podcast right now uh, newer, and they haven't listened to the original ones. It's hard yeah. to listen to original ones, though. Right, geez, right. right? You got to go to the website or, or, or YouTube. You, you can't catch it on Spotify or Apple. And they're not the best episodes. I mean, they're not the audio quality, uh, the quality of, like, my uh interviewing skills isn't there not that they are now but you know it was worse then but it was also when like podcasts were still becoming well known yeah and so to me it's like uh there's a whole like i could tell you i could spend 30 minutes telling you stories about the first dixon flannel podcast because i remember every aspect of that i remember the whole fucking weekend you know what i mean I, i remember that whole week because that was the first time I ever took Jesse to California. Yeah. Like, hey, dude, you got to check this out. Let's go. You know what I mean? And uh, there's just a lot of those type of things that, like, eventually I'm going to forget. But it's still fresh enough in my mind that I can make an episode out of it and put it on the Patreon. So we just did a three-hour podcast today talking about our back half trip after we left you guys in Boise. Yeah. Um. And I'm going to put it out probably tomorrow, definitely tomorrow or Saturday at Tops, in hopes that people check it out because that paywall shit, man, it sucks. But, you know, when you're trying to make a business out of something that's free, you got to find ways to make it to where people want to pay for something. Otherwise, you know, like I said, 10,000 downloads uh, an episode, 300 Patreon supporters. (laughs) <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. So thank you for the you 10,000 people that listen to this podcast. And thank you extra for the 300 people that actually support it to keep it going. you the real MVPs. Heard that. Guilt trip. <laughs> this fucking idiot on his phone. Hey, bitch, I'm already started. Third best painter. <laughs> Fuck you, man. True story. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit. I love it. Fifth best mechanic. All My right. wrench skills, remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This dude can't wrench. You don't know how to wrench on a bike. You'll see anything really funny or... Dude, we got to stop soon. <laughs> 337. What's, yeah. What do you want to pull the ripcord? Is there a difference in 337 and 345? 345 is okay. I just got to put... We got to put ads on it, so... Well, you got to put ads on it now? Uh, I still do now, but I, we don't have 15 minutes of ads, so it's all good. Um, man, I wish I had something super funny or, or prolific a story. Yeah, I don't think I do. Do you have anything, Kyle? Not really. I've been trying to think of stuff. It's just kind of been a lull after the trip, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, our whole fucking vibe after we got back to the trip has been like, how do we, how do we top that? How do we? 
Well, How do we like, peak performance again after doing it's such It's mainly a just recovering from that and then just getting it back in the rhythm of starting stuff. And it'll it'll happen once we start getting these <laughs> shows and this new bike night kicks off and all that stuff. It'll be... You farted. I heard it. We all heard oh, it. Oh, what, I was, what are you laughing for? I was pushing. <laughs> I was pushing like that. Yeah, yeah. we, we can tell, dude. We can tell. <laughs> I snorted a little bit. <laughs> no, Monday, right. Monday night was, was fucking sick. Well, bike nights are gonna they're, they're gonna continue to get sicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys aren't following the uh, T Bar Tuesdays uh, Instagram page, that it's us. Do it. Who you see in this fucking studio it's right us. now? We're the people that are putting the content out and uh, making it happen. And um, the goal is just to make a great bike night that people can uh, feel comfortable about coming, feel comfortable about coming out to, checking it out. And hopefully uh, taking more time out of their days, their life, and uh, being a part of other things that we start kicking off. Yeah. Other That's... parties, events. Uh, you start showing up to bike night regularly. Like, hey, man, you're fucking rad as shit. Like, dude, this weekend we're doing something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how you get the invites. And like I said, the, the kind of the Monday pre-party was, <clears throat> it was like, hey, we're going to go here and check out, you know, check out the thing. That's We'd like man. to get some content shoot some stuff well fuck we got three you know <laughs> there's three of us we got three bikes so it was uh it was rad oh, well let's reach reach out to a few people and we all want to have dinner and yeah you didn't want to put it on Bent. instagram you don't want to make it a big thing Bent. but moto and was in yeah yeah uh and emma ben and emma were yeah. here that was cool you got a rad ass shot of me i look really You're handsome welcome. that was uh okay dude we get it we get it dude you're handsome you're on tinder <laughs> No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, that sounds like someone who's guilty. Uh, no. Do you but, go from drinking Corona Premieres and you put a, a Dos Equis in it? It's like going from Bud Light to Bud Heavy, straight up. It's thick. Thick. Two C's. Thick. Three C's. A lot of C's. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm fucking... Uh, I'm excited to be home, dude. I, this is the first time I've I'm not. Like, fuck this shit, dude. I'm ready to go on the road again. <laughs> I've, I've, as far as being home, what? What are you? What are you fucking looking at? You fucking. Uh, what's you know, the he troll balls? Like, is this sounds, sounds like a city boy. Treasure trolls. The yeah, the uh, tre- uh, treasure. Trey. That's exactly what I'm thinking. What of, but we can't like? say shit. What else I'm like? City. Boy, if, if newfound tra- city boy here. If if fucking, troll, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go fucking do shit. <laughs> if it, fuck if you, if dude. A sh- is a treasure troll. <laughs> <Okay>. City <laughs> boy dragon. <laughs> no, I'm, I said that from the fucking beginning of the day. Uh, from the as soon as we got back, I swear to God, if I could, have, if it was like, <laughs> if going home was uh, like a video, like a video <laughs> game where all of a sudden everything like re-upped all your ammo, all your money, all your shit, like just do 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 recharged. I swear to God, I'd, I'd have left the next fucking morning if I could have and just done it again. Like I a agree. Month, <laughs> a month on the road, like it's it's amazing. If I had infinite money, dude. You think I, would, dude? It's, I wouldn't even know you, dude. <laughs> no, it's, not even, it's not even infinite money. I'd be hanging out with. Klaus Schwab and the no, fucking New World Order. Damn Brazilian. <laughs> Brazilian. <laughs> Those dudes are crazy. Your stupid mullet tricks don't work on the rich and famous. Yeah. Dude, Queens. they I wouldn't see, have a mullet. I have some. What, I have a what, fucking. For what you are, you cheap Ozark trash. Bro, I would have a bowl cut. I'm not impressed with your fucking. I'd have some, like, fucking Diane or weird bowl cut shit going on because I'd be a fucking space person. I'd be hanging out with Elon Musk. Yeah. I'd have Stranger Things haircut. I look like be, that fucking dude from Fifth Element with the fucking clear fucking what's, what's plastic on the side of my head. I mean, that's like this hey, you could be like, uh, you could be at fucking orgies for like repopulating Mars be, or some shit I'd like that. I'd probably be fucking animals. Ah! <laughs> 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 it, it wouldn't even be, it would be so, you, you, that's, Humans, that's peasant shit. Here's the get. Here's We're the guys. If you are, want to find your the most entertainment you can for motorcycling, then the Fast Life Podcast is the one. Um, you guys, uh, you know, this is where you can find the best information about motorcycles, motorcycle content. You can also find out about what's the best place to jerk off, and uh, you know, where you're making, your making your Mars local, babies and check your local dentist office. For that sleeper of a jerk-off spot. 
<laughs> just just pretend like you're waiting on an appointment. They usually have clean That's right. bathrooms. So you and jerked off in a dentist's office in uh So in I don't Coos even Beach. remember I don't even remember telling that story, but somebody did and all of a sudden I realized there's that's probably against the law, like on no, some not. level. Ah, you no, say no one's looking at you. Maybe not in uh, Oregon. But. Just say you're high You don't on think mattress. I thought about that when I was waiting in the hospital with Lauren <laughs> overnight? Every bathroom was a single stall bathroom, and I was like, "I, I, I want to do this just for the just for the story." The story. <laughs> but I was, all, I was thinking that too. I was like, "Man, yeah, it's like some sort of ethical code, like am I fucking come and visit bitch with black lights and shit?" Yeah, but black lights don't, they don't show you uh, DNA strands. They can't trace it back to you. Just saying. They got they have the technology. No, if we could do a podcast about It'd probably the, be right next to a bunch of the other wildest cars. places we've ever jerked off. I thought I've done some fucking wild jerk off spots, but hmm. when I talk to people, I'm like, oh shit, like I need to step up my fucking game, dude. Like y'all people are you out ever there jerked doing off going down the road, like driving. <laughs> like, like yeah. Like yeah. off the tollway or yeah. something. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> basic basic roadhead for yourself. You try without with pulling your, your dick out. Your it's hard. Jesus. Long trip. You're just dude. covering your pants? No, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're not trying to get a fuck. You're not trying to catch a charge from a trucker. <laughs> fuck that trucker, dude. Fuck Craig. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with you, Dragon. I got you. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, there's, well, I'm not. Dude, there was I'm a point in time, like <laughs> Jaden was a, talking about once. I'm a this tri- jerking I'm a off my, with the air on a bike. This I'm, I'm yeah. a trisexual, baby. I will try anything <laughs> sexual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh shit. Too shake. I don't know, it was always weird. Fuck it, it's not oh. weird, dude. It feels good to come. That's human age. Oh, it's the best. We're, You're we're, barely, on a we're barely smarter than monkeys. So the fact that it's that we oh oh like no, that's it's not wild. It's it's fucking nature. <laughs> it's surprising oh. that, it's surprising <laughs> that we're able to build shit like the Brooklyn Bridge that we were talking about earlier. It's surprising it's surprising that, that we're was able also to, this podcast. that we're able to keep our fucking uh <laughs> Our genital, our hands off our genitals long enough to actually do stuff like go to space <laughs> and build fucking bridges and and uh, incels, fly dude. in airplanes. All like, incels. That's all Jesus Christ. Jet skis. Huh? <clears throat> and jet skis. What does that have to do with anything? You just said it. Uh, <laughs> driving boats and jet skis. Someone you don't, don't know about me. I'm kind of retarded. No, I'm just saying I don't consider that like the high level activity as far as like so jerking off is building. better than flying and and i mean brogan had a bit about that he said i've been in a fucking f1 fighter jet doing g's and it's amazing jerking off is better mm. he's not wrong he's not wrong <laughs> or he said coming is better uh, essentially okay. but coming's great yeah but yeah i mean coming period but no matter how you get to it whether yeah. it's a fucking voluptuous a uh, thought on Instagram or fucking your hand in a goddamn Walgreens bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same feeling, dude. See, I, I feel like that's a. I feel like that's kind of a bad. There's no difference between coming. Coming is the same yeah, feeling. Nah, coming. don't come in a drugstore. No. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Look at who's giving fucking advice there's, on there's where to that. fucking nut. There's something weird about that, <laughs> man. Is there there's, something weird yeah. about that? Yeah. What about jerking off well, in the living room while your friends are on the store. patio? <laughs> What's <going on>? And <laughs> rubbing kinda, your cum hey, rag sounds on hot the homies. You, sounds kind of hot if you want to know me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask me. No, don't do it in the drugstore. Your grandma shit's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's a little too public. It's a fucking place. Well, the drugstore bathroom is kind of a sacred place. Like, yes, yeah. you want to is it? Dude? You wanna is say, it? You want to say that? That's for... the fucking line. <laughs> I don't know. Like, What's it's... so sacred about it? Hey, I'm not going to condemn you if you told me, "Hey, dude, I had to <laughs> fucking had to pull over in Walgreens." Dude, I'm sure Zach. Like, I'd be like, like "Okay, dude, kind of weird. Like, I'm not going to be mad at you about it, but I wouldn't." Priests, I would, I would... priests come out of fucking church. Well, priests Ooh. also fuck little boys. I did so. jerk off in a church. Let's once. leave them out of this. Hell yeah. yeah. It was an empty church, but so what's so sacred about a fucking? It was in New Orleans. Store? We were helping Ooh. out for Katrina. I don't and know. And we stayed at church that night in a church. I that did. That's a good one. Ooh, I did. I feel like that's a family feud. Like jerk off in a church. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> I don't know. If I'm, I don't know if I've done that. Well, ding 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 ding. That's a whole other story for another. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, it had to be done. I mean, hey. you'd be like, <laughs> Steve, I fuck some chick on a bike. 
while riding it. Yeah. Why well, you put them out there like that? I mean, it's, a, it's out it's there. It's on Pornhub, It's on right? Pornhub. <laughs> it, there is <laughs> I mean, no hiding it. Uh, yeah. So it's on it, Instagram as long as they, they'll leave it there. Yeah, fuck. I've we got to wrap it up. Instagram. All right. All right. So there you go, guys. Uh, places you can't jerk off is Walgreens. Walgreens, sacred. Thank you, guys. A oh, church will be good, <laughs> said Jaden. <laughs> At least there you can pray for forgiveness immediately <laughs> after. I didn't. <laughs> Walgreens, you're just gonna probably leave a little too fast. You're, you're like you said. Somebody's grandma is gonna sit down in that, and you don't want that. Dude, I'm. A, I used to work at Walgreens, going to A and P school. I'm. You're lucky I didn't jerk off in a Walgreens. You know what they need? To, <laughs> you know what they need at Walgreens bathrooms? A glory hole, <laughs> like from the Minute Clinic. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> you know, sometimes they have that room next door. Time to get your shot. <laughs> your HIV shot. <laughs> All right, hey, take it easy, dude. Take it easy. All right, that's it, right? Cut it off. All right. See you crackers later.